won the toss and they have decided to bat first. And uh, we will give you the side in just a minute, but just to tell you that going out into the middle, uh, Candace Laborde and Vicky Daniel, who are the match officials today, and Barbados taking the field. Good morning, Shakira. How are you? Good morning. I'm fine. It's a new place for me. The first time I'm not taking part in the regional tournament since I started playing cricket. But it's good to be sitting up here and watching the two teams get ready to compete in this year's competition. A new look Barbados side, of course, without Haley Matthews, who is over in India playing for the Mumbai Indians. And also, obviously, without me, uh, captain the T20 tournament last year. So it is going to be a challenge for this Barbados side. They're missing lots of experience, but it is an opportunity for the youngsters to step up and a good chance also for Jamaica to start off the tournament with a bang. We'll tell you that Jamaica, they have left out Jessica Garcia and uh, Selena White. And so they're playing Steph Stephanie Taylor. Rashada Williams, Abigail Bryce, Natasha McLean, Kate Wilmot, Vanessa Watts, Kenesha Ferron, Nisha Ann Waysom, Jonel Diaz, Chanel Henry, Nicole Campbell, and Shadian Nation. And Barbados, this side is Casey Knight, Alia Aline, Shanika Bruce, Asabi Callender, Zalia Campbell, Shamilia Connell, Nayjani Cumberbatch, Erin Dean, Kelia Elliott. Dean is in fact out along with Campbell. And then Kelia Elliott, Alison Gordon, Trishan Holder, Keshawna Knight, and Alicia Scantlebury. The last time these two teams met, Barbados had a handsome victory. Yeah, they did. And they were led expertly by Kaishona Knight, who ended up with most runs in the tournament last year. She scored 100 against Jamaica. She did. It was a very big 100. And Barbados will be hoping that if they have to chase a big total, she will be able to come to the party today. She did, in fact, lead Barbados to a mammoth, 318 for eight. Rashad Williams will be taking strike. And uh, the opening bowler for Barbados will be Alison Gordon. And so we are just about set to get on the way in a competition which for the first time we'll see prize money. You have left Shakira when the prize money has now gone to 20,000 US for the winners. Yeah, I've had many questions about that. <laughs> <laughs> Some think it's pretty odd that I chose to leave the game as soon as prize money has been introduced. But we are happy that now the ladies are being well rewarded for their efforts. And so there's lots more to play for this year and going forward. So it will be the first ball very soon. Umpire at Square Leg looking at the colleague, making sure all is well. And uh, the clock is not yet at 10 o'clock in the morning. They'll want to get going at 10. So prize money, 20,000 US for the winner. 10,000 US dollars for the second place team. The T20 Blaze will also see cash in abundance. 10,000 US dollars for the winner. 5,000 for the runner up. So two slips. There's a player down the third man. There's a, a point, an extra cover, and mid off in the offside. As the clock rolls over to 10 o'clock, and we see the first ball which is defended back to the bowler and no run. Yeah, Barbados chirpy in the field already. Yeah, you expect that when Kaisia Knight is behind the stumps. She's obviously captaining her first year. You will expect lots of chirping from her. She'll be asking her players to stay behind the bowlers. It's a good start by Alison Gordon though. She depends heavily on that line and length. And she'll be hoping she can get the ball to swing away from the right handed batter. Shortest run up, bowls this one wider, slow, angled the way down to third man, and Jamaica on the way. One run for no loss. You have to wonder if perhaps Jamaica won the toss and elected to bat because of what happened last year. 
Barbados did back first in that encounter where they scored that mom of Toto you were referring to earlier. Well, Jamaica responded and didn't have much of a response. My memory serves me right. It was 139. Yeah, unfortunately for Jamaica in that game, Stephanie Taylor, the captain, was carrying an injury as well. So I she was not able to bat. I gave them too much. It was 113 for nine. Here is Gordon. Takes the pace off the delivery again. Plays it out to extra cover. And they can't score. So Barbados are the defending champions. And uh, you did say that they're a little bit lighter on experience this year. But I dare say that does not make them any worse. Still a very strong team. Yeah, of course. They're boosted by the experience of Kaisi and Knight, Kaishon and Knight, Alia Alin, and Shamilia Kono, who have all played for West Indies. Here's a delivery which is short, played into the offside. And they'll have a single as extra cover has to chase back. And uh, so that's the second run. Bit of a, a little naughty overthrow, but doesn't result in any extra runs. Jamaica on the way. They're two without loss. Rashada Williams comes back into strike. And she has won. Ferron has won. Here is Gordon to bowl. Delivery, which is defended on the onside. Good delivery. Brings mid on up to field and no runs. Yes, the lane. Captain Casey and Knight will be asking Alison Gordon to bowl. Just target those stumps as often as you can. And whatever movement she can get, perhaps, can result in a wicket for the Barbados team early. Here comes Gordon once more. Wider. She's playing at it, missing it. The shouts go up, but the umpire is unmoved. End of over number one. Jamaica winning the toss and batting first are two for no loss. Tell you what I found out as well is that in this year's competition, there will be bonus points. Team scoring 200 and up will get one bonus point. And if you get to 220, you get a second bonus point. The team chasing will not be left out because if they score at four runs per over, they secure a bonus point. 4.4 runs and over. They secure a second bonus point. And uh, so good encouraging initiatives. And he is hoping that we see bigger scores this year coming out of this competition. Yeah, we saw the introduction of these bonus points last year, at the end of last year, in the men's Super 50. And you understand exactly what West Indies is trying to do. They're trying to get to the standard of world cricket, global cricket, and very often you see teams scoring 300 or more. They're only asking teams to score 200. So you can only hope that the pitches will assist the batters in being able to score those runs. But they're asking for more intent from the batters. It is white ball cricket after all. From the far end, we'll see Shamelia Connell, who will be coming up to bowl to Ferron. And delivery is a good one on the stumps. It's Fend it back down on the onside and they won't score. So we are at Warner Park. The other games being played at St. Paul's and at Connery. Leewards against Guyana at St. Paul's. Leewards won the toss and they are fielding. Here is Connell, a delivery which is tempting outside the line of the off stump. Left alone, goes through for the keeper to take. And uh, there is no run on the offside. There is a fielder down at third man. But the others are, you can say, saving one. And this is good cricket by Barbados. Not letting the batters off the hook early. As Connell fr from the Lozak Road end comes up and bowls a delivery, which is a good one. Left alone again. And bouncing the pitches look good so far. Yeah, it looks to be true. And it was out there before the game started. And it seems to be a very good surface. Quite hard as well. And perhaps that may be another part of the reason that the Jamaica team decided to bat first. But a good start by the Barbados team. Good control being shown by the batters. Interesting though that there isn't a fine leg in place for Shamilia Connell. And we know sometimes she likes to test the batters out with a short delivery. Balls again outside the off stump. And there is a 
batsman, bats lady trying to play it into the offside. And uh, we look at it again on the replay. Yes, she did drag it down from the under edge, but went safely behind. And so Connell will want to finish the over good. Comes up once again and bowls to Ferron, who is playing it into the offside. Knocked down by the field at extra cover, who recovers nicely. And there is no chance of a run, so a good over so far. And most importantly, she'll be hoping she can close the over out. It's been a really good start. Five dots. Perhaps only one loose delivery if we are being very harsh. Ferron was unable to capitalize. As Connell comes up to bowl to Ferron, short, left alone nicely. And uh, so it brings up the end of a maiden first for the, the inning. And uh, Jamaica women winning the toss and batting first. They are two for no loss. Seem to have some spectators watching. It's good to see. And hopefully we can see some more spectators trickling, especially over the weekend as we play more games here at the Warner Park Stadium. There is a tourist ship in, of course, down at Port Zante. And it's pretty close to us. Just a nice little, perhaps, seven or eight minute stroll from Warner Park. The ferries from Nevis, from Charlestown, come into Basti as well. And that's how he came over this morning. Here is Gordon, and it's choked down to mid off, and they won't score. And so. I'm sure that there is great following of this defending champions team in Barbados. And of course, in Jamaica as well, they'll be tuned in. Gordon, and for this delivery, it's chopped down into the offside. But good movement by the fielder there at cover point. And uh, she recovers nicely. And they still can't score. It's two for no loss. It's in the third over. Yeah, it's been a really good start by the Barbados bowlers and their fielders. We saw Alison Gordon diving around the previous over to st stop a single. So it's a good start by this Barbados team. We did mention it's a fairly young team. Gordon to bowl to Rashada Williams, who is leaving it alone outside the off stump. And uh, the keeper Knight has come right up to the stumps now to keep the bats, bats lady honest. Yeah, she's very capable behind the stumps, Casey and Knight. Some argue she's one of the better wicket keepers we have in the Caribbean. She too just announced her retirement from the international game, but she's carrying on for Barbados. Gordon to bowl to Williams, who is getting a delivery, loose one first for the innings, and swings it down back with a square for four. Just a little bit short and tracking down the leg side. And Rashad Williams sees the opportunity to swing it down to the onside square of the wicket and picked up four runs to take the score. Onto six for no loss, Jamaica. Yeah, I think she just slightly erred in, li in line there, Alison Gardner. Just got too straight on that occasion. And Rashida Williams seizes the opportunity, an opportunity to free her arms. And it's the first boundary of the innings. Gordon to bowl to Williams again, and she's driving into the offside. Good looking shot. They should have one chasing back for the second, and they'll get there comfortably. And so two more runs to Williams to take her on to seven. And the score moves on to eight for no loss. Rashida Williams now starting to get a move on. She's seven from nine deliveries now. The last two deliveries she's faced resulted in six runs. Last delivery of the over. And the Gordon is bowling to Rashad Williams. And she's defending nicely, plays it away into the offside to extra cover. End of over number three, eight for no loss. If you look at our Jamaica team, you notice Chanel Henry is back in this squad. She was injured last season. Very good all rounder for that Jamaica side. And she's slated to bat at six, Chanel Henry. And they'll be hoping that she can do the job with both bat and ball. And she can make a big difference to this Jamaica side. Nice shot of the tour ship in the harbor. And of course, St. Kitts has played host to the icon of the seas. Largest 
of the cruise ships out there in the ocean today. So Ferron will take strike. And uh, here is Connell from the Lozak Road end. And she bowls very good line outside the off stump. And she's getting across his Ferron, leaving it alone, goes through for night to take. And uh, the score remains an eight for no loss. And we must note that the wind is blowing quite strongly from the right to left of screen. And that will be assisting Shamiria Connell. She'll be hoping she can take an edge and present an opportunity to the two slips waiting. Here is Connell once more, again in the channel outside the off stump, and she's leaving it alone, Farron. And this score remains an eight for no loss. So we told you about the prize money, but we should also tell you that the player of the match will collect $250. Player with the most runs will get a thousand. Most wickets will get a thousand. As Connell bowls the delivery, which is outside the off stump, tempting the cut shot. It goes through for the keeper to take. Eight for no loss. Most dismissals, one thousand dollars. And so there is quite a bit of money at stake. We remind you that. 20,000 US dollars to the winner of this competition. And then in the blaze, another 10,000 US dollars at stake. Connell from the Lozak Road end. And she bowls a beautiful delivery. Just touch it, touches down, and then seem to just hold its line as uh, the O's Ferran looking for a delivery coming back into her. What a peach of a delivery there, Shakira. Yeah, that's beautiful from Connell. She's getting that ball to angle in and then shape away very late as well. And that's the reason it's causing problems for Kanisha Ferron. She does well not to edge that. Here comes Connell once more. Delivery which is wide. Signal and called by the umpire. And so that's the first extra conceded by Barbados so far. Score moves on to nine. Yeah, and Barbados will be hoping that they don't put too many extras into that column. They've had a problem with bowling wides previously. Connell once more comes up to bowl the delivery, which is down the leg side, called and signaled wide. And as players nowadays do, they all went up when it went down the leg side, perhaps <laughs> trying to confuse the umpire. And the umpire said, no, it's not out caught. It didn't touch anything. It's <laughs> down the leg side. And I'm going to penalize you by calling wide. And that she did. Yeah, the players all up the mules. And they thought it perhaps clipped the pad. At first, there was an appeal. But then they thought it clipped the pad. Looks to be a good decision by your umpire, Candice Labour. It didn't seem to touch anything. So second wide in this over. Connell was the delivery which is short. She's trying to cut it as far and it's too close to her and it goes through for the keeper to take no runs. Some other very, very good news is that from the 1st of October 2024, six players for each of these teams will be contracted. It's fantastic news. Yeah, you have to. And then by 2027, up to 10 players per territory can be contracted. So the ladies have incentives. Here's the delivery, which is drawing Ferron forward, and that's a bit of a loose shot. And again, she's called down. It's the end of the over, though. And uh, so Connell has been asking some questions. Jamaica winning the toss and batting. They're 10 for no loss. You must commend Cricket West Indies and Reaper for the agreements they've made. By 2027 as well, the ladies will be making the same thing that our male players do. So lots of incentives, not just to keep playing, but also to get into the, involved into the sport. So all the parents out there listening, bring your young girls. If they're interested in playing cricket, bring them along. It is a real career choice. And as we not not only the, the salaries and Shakira, but the travel. I'm yeah. a traveling person. I used to be an airport manager. I love to travel. <laughs> and you get to see all these places for free. 
Yeah, you do. I keep telling people they probably never would have visited Australia, at least not so many times, if it wasn't playing cricket. Alison Gordon bowls the delivery to Rashada Williams, who is defending on the onside, goes down to mid on, and they don't score. So you get paid for doing something that you love, and you get to see the world. It's nothing better than that. Here is Gordon once more to bowl to Williams, and she's punching firmly, but that's good work by Gordon and the follow through, and just knocks it down for mid on to recover. And the start of this over, Kaisi and Knight deciding to take that second slip out. So now there's just one slip in waiting. The field difference second slip has gone to cover a Sabi calendar. Gordon to Williams. It's pitched wide. Uh, not wide enough to be called wide. And uh, just inside that red marker line, which indicates a wide. And the only signal from the umpire is that three deliveries have been bowled so far. Gordon, once again from the media center end, bowls to Williams, who is back, trying to play it into the onside. Loud shout, yes, she's gone. Played right across it, it looked dead to me from here. Yeah, it seems to be carrying on to at least crash into that leg stump. So it seems to be a good decision from the umpire. And it's really good bowling from Alison Gordon once more. She continues to target those stumps. And she gets the ball to shape in and caught on the back foot. Perhaps just clipping leg. But nonetheless, the decision goes to the Barbados team. And they get their first wicket. And it's the dangerous Rashida Williams gone for seven from 12 deliveries. Jamaica losing their first wicket at 10. Yeah, she played right across it. And uh, in, in today's world, at least, that would have been umpire's call. So the first wicket has gone down for Jamaica. They are 10 for 1. We're in the fifth over. And Alison Gordon has picked up a wicket. And she has been tight so far. Yeah, she's only gone for eight runs, Alison Gordon. Just the one boundary clip through the leg side in her previous over. But she's pretty much gone stump to stump the entire and in so far, she hasn't gotten the movement she would have been expecting. But remember last year, the first game, Alison Gordon bowled in at this ground. She got five wickets. That was against Trinidad, and she started very well for the Barbados team. She's gotten her first. That brings Shadeen Nation to the crease, wearing number eight. She's full of experience. She's played for West Indies, a number of years for the West Indies team, and of course for this Jamaica team. And she'll have a job to do. And uh, the captain has immediately placed the second slip in. So that's good thinking. New batter at the crease. Let's have two close catchers. As yeah. Gordon goes in now to bowl to Nation. And she's driving in the air over the head of the field at mid on. And they have crossed for one, coming back for a second as it's pulled back just beneath our position here. And so she'll get two runs to get off the map nation. Yeah, good team work on the boundary from Trishan Holder and Nijani Kamabash. Just chasing that one. But definitely what should not what Shadi Nation was looking to do. She gets off the mark with a double. But she was almost giving an opportunity to the Barbados fielders. And they almost had two consecutive wickets. As you look at the out once again. Delivery from Nation, which is played into the offside, finds extra cover. And uh, there is no run. End of the over. Wicket in the over. Two runs in the over as well. Jamaica winning the toss and batting first. They are 12 for the loss of one. Our cameraman is being kept busy, looking at a, a yacht in the background. Perhaps that's the one that Shakira sailed in on. <laughs> the one Shakira <laughs> hopes to sail on soon. <laughs> Lovely scenes there on the water. And I envy whoever is getting to enjoy that yacht right now. Enough space on, on the deck for a helicopter. We have not seen <laughs> it. Perhaps have gone sightseeing down to Brimstone Hill. Or maybe across to Nevis. Connell. Bowling from the Lozak Road end. 
And Jamaica winning the toss and batting their 12 for the loss of one. Losing the wicket of Rashad Williams. And Changing fuel once again. Now there is a deep fine leg in place and just one slip. Delivery turned into the onside. Brings the fine leg to backward square and they'll get a single. So she's on two now. Ferron from 15 deliveries brings Nation to take strike from uh, Connell, who is bowling from the Lozak Road end. You just wonder why the change of plan by Shamilia Connell. She was beating Ferron on the outside edge previously, and she decided to employ that deep fine leg, which meant she wanted to bowl straighter. Just think she needed to remain patient and continue bowling that all stamp line. She bowls now to Nation, and she's back on that off stump line, and it's left alone to go through for the keeper. You see, she's brought back the fielder to second slip, so now she has two slips in waiting, seven fielders on the offside, just two on the leg side. She's keeping things quiet when she's bowling third and fourth stump. No need to experiment and get straighter. Here is Connell now to bowl to Nation. And she's getting a good delivery. A bit of pace behind that one as well. And good bounce on the way through to the keeper who took it about waist height. Yeah, and this will be a challenge for the Jamaica batters. There's such a difference in the pace when you think of Shamilia Connell and Alison Gordon. Gordon is relying on just hitting a good lane and length. Shamilia Connell is a lot faster. So you have to adjust every over. She's at the top of a mark. Nation is not ready. Settles now. And has Connell coming up to bowl to her. And she's getting a good delivery. Squirted away down to the fielder at backward point. And there is no chance of a run. 13 for one. We're in over number six. Yeah, just one run scored off the bat from Shamilia Connell's bowling. And she's bowl. 16 balls, it is 16 legal deliveries, two wides, and that first run scored off this over. So she's been very good. Balls again short, and here is Nation attempting a cut shot, plays over it. It goes through for the keeper to take, and the score remains on 13 for one. One delivery left in this over. And so Barbados, they have started the game well. They have kept it tight. Connell. One delivery left in a third over. And comes running up now to bowl to Nation, who is leaving this one alone outside the off stump, end of the over. And at the end of over number six, it's 13 for one. Yeah, good start by the Barbados opening bowlers, Alison Garden. Three overs, ten runs, one wicket. Shamilia Connell, no wickets in that column as yet, but three overs for just three runs. So very miserly from the Barbados opening bowlers. They started well, of course, asked to fuel first. They didn't seem too disappointed when Jamaica captain Stephanie Taylor opted to bat first. Barbados team is a team that loves to bowl first. The bowling is normally very good, so they like to bowl first and know how much they're going to chase. 17 dot balls by Connell. And the, the one run from the bat was when she changed her line, got straight, and was worked away into the onside. So that is something for her to consider. Gordon will continue from the media center end. And she will be bowling her fourth over. And it will be the first time Kenesha Ferron is at this end for a long time. And she's getting a deli delivery, which is pitch wide, teasingly so. And she leaves it alone. It goes through for the keeper to take. And uh, there is no chance of a run. Like a steady bowling by Alison Gordon. Again, just one slip and waiting. So she has more protection on the ring on that offside. She goes closer to the stumps this time, and it's defended back down the track. Nicely shadowed by the bowler and a follow through. Goes through for mid off the field, and the score remains on 13 for 1. It's scheduled for 50. And we remind you that the team batting first, that they can pick up a bonus batting point when they reach 200. Here is Gordon once more. 
to bowl to Ferron outside the off stump, brushes the pads on the way through. Loud appeal goes up, but no chance of that coming back in to interfere with the stumps. And the umpire rightly says, not out. Yeah, perhaps Barbados Fielders just trying to get in the head, into the head of Kanisha Ferron, hoping that she'll continue to play a shot. Gordon is one for ten, and she's in her fourth over. Goes past the umpire, again gets in close to the stumps, but this time delivers a wide. And it's well outside the tram line, called and signaled. And so the score will move to 14 for one. Yeah, third extra of the inning so far by the Barbados women's team. Just a bit too wide on that occasion, Alison Garden. Every time she's targeted the stumps, she seemed to ask lots of questions and cause trouble. Here is a delivery which is down the leg side. She tried to turn it into the onside. Ferron missed it completely and uh, it went through for wide. And so the score will move on to 15. Two wides in the over so far. And again, we see consecutive wides bowlers. We saw it from Shamilia Connell initially when she overcompensated and went too straight after bowling and also a wide. A brilliant fielding by the fielder slip to get around behind the way, keeper and dive and stop that. Gordon and uh, Ferron is getting a foot delivery and played straight to the field at mid wicket and uh, she's all caught. Um, it was low and there's, there's uh, the, bat the batter standing her ground but it looked clean from here. Yeah, because Shana Knight seemed to get her fingers under that at sharp mid wicket and Kanisha Ferron would be very disappointed if she got out from that delivery. It was slow and very full, a low full toss. We can't see it on screen yet. It looks to be a very good catch by Kaishana Knight, one of the senior players. And that's exactly what you want as a team. You want your fielders to back up the bowlers. It wasn't a good delivery by Alison Garden, but excellent fielding by Kaishana Knight if it is determined that she's out. Kanisha Ferron still waiting for the umpire's decision. And the umpire's rule not out. We're, we're going to look at that a couple more times. The, the, the catch was taken, the appeal went up, and uh, the batter stood her ground. The umpires consulted and came back, didn't raise the finger, and so it means that that will stand as not out. Yeah, we have one more look at that. It was a lawful toss, swung through the leg side by Kanisha Ferron. We're not seeing the point at which the ball went into the hand, so we apologize for that. Uh, but we'll tell you that it's 15 for one. Ferron lives. She has a chance to continue and make an impact in this game, Kenisha Ferron. And the Barbados team will have to get over that and understand that the umpire's decision is final. It was close. It wouldn't have been an easy decision for the umpires to make. But Ferron continues to bat. And Gordon bowls to Ferron now, and this delivery she's playing into the offside finds cover, and uh, they won't score. It's the end of the over. End of it, it's 15 for one. Seven overs completed, and uh, Jamaica won the toss and decided to bat. It's uh, one ball short, actually. You know, the fielders were changing. But it's one ball remaining in this over. So just five deliveries, legal deliveries bowl. Of course, we had the two wides bowl earlier. So one delivery left in this, the seventh over. Lots of activity. The One of the fi substitute fielders came on the field for Jamaica as well, perhaps with a message. We didn't see a, a change of glove or anything. Here is Gordon, and for this delivery, it's wide, called and signal wide. So three wides in the over, and it's 16 for the loss of one. Still one delivery left. Yeah, this one has been a quite a long over. It's been eight deliveries ball, just five of them legal deliveries. Three wides ball by Alison Gordon. She'll be hoping she can at least close out the over. Very humid conditions here at Warner Park. Delivery, which is played into the offside, finds cover. No chance of a run. End of the over this time. 
at the end of which an over which included three whites. It's 16 for one. Gordon is one for 13 from four. Shamilia uh, Connell is none for three from her three overs, 16 for one. And after Shakira, you'll hear Troy Mills. Sixteen for one, the Jamaica team after winning the toss and electing to back, they've lost the wicket of Rashida Williams. Good morning, Shakira. How are you? Good morning. I am fine. How are you? I'm blessed, highly favored, and giving thanks. Heart still popping a bit from the the appeal. <laughs> out, not out. Yeah, eventually a judge not out by the umpires. Indeed. It was a close one. And it's Connell continuing from the Lozak Road end. And this one sneaks through the covers. Will it race to the boundary? Yes, it gets there ahead of the chasing fielder. A lovely looking shot by Nation. Four runs. And that takes the score on to 20. Yeah, it was all timing and balance by Shadi Nation. Not a terrible delivery. But really good timing, balance, and placement with Shadi Nation. One must note she's just returned from Australia, playing club cricket in Australia. Where you, you back on rules in Australia, don't you? <laughs> yeah, definitely. And that one, forcing her on the back foot, but she plays it defensively down the field. And that's the mid on coming in, preventing a single. The score remains on 20 for the loss of one. Yeah, just two boundaries hit by the Jamaica side so far. So it's been pretty steady bowling by the Barbados team. And here comes Connell again. No harm done. Going through to the keeper. The score still kept on 20. Lovely sunshine here at Warner Park. And these two teams, we expect a very good com a match from them. Yeah, it's normally very competitive when these two sides meet. And uh, that one, rehearsing the shot is Nation. Not getting anything from it. Going out to the cover region, the score remains on 20. And the reason it's normally very competitive when these sides meet is because of the number of West Indies players that are in these sides, or at least players who have represented West Indies quite recently. Connell again, coming forward defensively is Nation. Textbook style. It's the end of the over. 20 for the loss of one. Rashida, she's on 7 from 14 ball. Forgive me, that's Karen. Rashida made seven from 14 balls. And how is it feeling not to be a part of this tournament this year for the first time in how many years? A very long time. <laughs> yeah, a very, very long time. I think I started playing in this tournament in 2003. It was. And this is the first time I'm not playing. So it's a very strange feeling. But I'm enjoying sitting here in the AC <laughs> and not being <laughs> on the field sweating in the sun. And you're doing a wonderful job so far. I must commend you highly for making that transition. Thank you. I appreciate it. And speaking of transitioning and changing, we see a change in bowling. We see Aliyah Ali being introduced into the attack, replacing Alison Gordon, who is responsible for that wicket. We did see a few ways in Alison Gordon's last over. So you wonder if she was just starting to tire. And here's it a little wide and... Playing square, will she get a boundary? Yes, she does. Going back on the back foot and playing square, backward of point. Picking up her first boundary. A little loose, that first ball. Yeah, a real warm-up delivery by Aliyah Aline. And no chance for the field on the boundary. Shanika Bruce running around at deep third. But a chance given for Kanisha Farron to free her arm. She was two of 21 deliveries prior to that delivery. And she gladly accepted it. 
Some bowlers, they first ball, pick up a wicket. Others like that strategy, having a loosener as it were. And this one up. Allowing that one to go through the keeper. Perhaps expecting it to bounce a little higher. There was a little bit of bounce in it, but no harm done. Yeah, and it will be an adjustment for the batters once more. Aliyah Allen is a lot quicker than Alison Gordon. And you see that from those first two deliveries, the way the first one flew off the bat, and then that one, the way it carried through to the keeper, Kaisi and Knight, who has gone back for Aliyah Allen. And uh, bringing that one forward, playing it square on the offside. Not being able to beat the, per the fielder there at point. Fixing her hairstyle on her way back is Alia Alin. Ensuring that they don't, the hair doesn't swing in the eyes. She wants to have a clear view of the batter. Comes in again from the C.A. Paul Southwell media end. Short outside the off stump. Allowing that one to go through. Umpire perhaps maybe contemplating whether it was a wide or not. It wasn't. Signaling that's four balls for the over. Yeah, she's bowled a much better line since that first warm-up delivery earlier, Annie. She's been a lot closer to the batter, and she's now beginning to ask questions of Kanisha Farron. Here she is again, and swinging outside the off stump. And is she bowled? Here she is. A very naughty shot, as it were, rehearsing what she probably should have played on that occasion. Perhaps that one taking the inner edge, the under edge. Yes, yeah, taking the inside half of the bat and going on to the stumps, crashing into the stumps, and it's a second wicket for the Barbados team. And that delivery just seeming to come back in slightly with the win. And it's gone on to the middle stump. And it's the first wicket for Aaliyah Allen, the second for the Barbados team. Jamaica losing the second wicket at 24 in the ninth over. And it's Kanisha Farron who has to go for just six runs. And uh, Barbados wouldn't mind how the wickets come once they're coming. And perhaps should have pushed that left leg across. She sort of backed to the onside. Yeah, she seemed to be caught in two minds, Kanisha Farron. Initially, it seemed as though she was trying to slap that one through the offside. But when it started to come back to her, she went with a horizontal bat, trying to hit it leg side at the last minute. Perhaps she would have been advised to just punch that delivery. We did see a few times she wanted to cash in on anything that seemed slightly wide. And that one clearly was not wide enough. And she loses her wicket. Barbados will be elated with that. It does and bring Stephanie Taylor, Captain Stephanie Taylor, to the crease. It's not what she would have expected after winning the toss and electing to bat. She, I'm sure she doesn't want to be out here so early, but she's very capable. She's been a leading by her in the Caribbean for a very long time. A legend of the game, many call her, and this is an, op an opportunity for her to make a statement. Quite an experienced peer here at the wicket for Jamaica. A lot would be riding on them. 24 for 2 after 8.5, winning the toss on what is said to be a batting track. Definitely not the position you would want to be in. One slip. There's a whitish third man. And here's Aline again. Bringing Taylor forward, calling for a single. Being sent back. Ultimately, and that would have been suicidal. It's now the end of the over, and they're also going to talk about it. They wouldn't want to run out here because a lot is riding on the back of these two. Yeah, they definitely wouldn't want to run out. These are the two most experienced batters on this Jamaica side. But one thing we know about Shadeen Nation is that she loves to run. She's always looking to turn the strike over. So they have to be cautious with their calling. And it's the end of the over. Nine overs have been bowled. It's a 50 over of here. 24 for two. Stephanie Taylor, she's faced just the one ball yet to get off the mark. Shadeen Nation, she has six from 13. Lovely sunshine here at Warner Park. A gentle bree breeze blowing from east to west. And the batters are speaking. 
some field adjustments happening. Yes. Three outside the circle. Yeah, yeah, fortunately for Barbados team, they've noticed it before the delivery was bowled because that would have been a certain no ball. There's still one more over before the end of this power play. Alison Garden brought into the circle. A short third. So two fielders in waiting on the deep on the leg side. Perhaps a short delivery coming. Connell again and pulling. Getting one from that. Perhaps not timing as well as she would have liked to. But a single nonetheless. And it takes Jamaica 25 for two after 9.1 overs. Yeah, a change of plan here by the Barbados side. Shamelia Connell and Kaisi Knight in particular. They've employed two fielders in the deep on the left side. Both of them square of the wicket, deep fine leg, and deep backwards square. And they're waiting for a mistime hook. And as I say that, it's a change again. Third man is going back, and deep square is being called into the circle. She is going to stay at short square leg. The reason for this is perhaps many will know how Stephanie Taylor struggles when the ball is on her pads early in the innings. She just tends to plant that front foot too early to the offside. And here is she allowing that one to go through, which is wide, signaled by umpire Laborde. And Connell, this is her third wide, if I'm not mistaken. And her captain will want her to tighten up on that. Actually, it's a no, no ball, it's a free hit. Umpire Lobar changing the signal to a no ball. Yeah, I think that one was called because of fielding restrictions. It seems as though someone was caught outside the circle at the point of delivery. And we were just speaking about that, and it's necessary, it's important, critically important for some fielder to, to manage that, not necessarily the captain or the, the keeper, ideally them, but because they'll be tied up. And here is Connell again. That one shot, pulling, in control, get in the single, keeping it on the ground. And uh, perhaps the knowledge, as you mentioned just now, Shakira, coming into play and being mindful that they brought in the deep square. She was able to roll the whistle and keep it down, picking up a single, 27 for two. Yeah, it was a free hit nonetheless, so it wouldn't have mattered if she had been caught, Stephanie Taylor. But well bowled by Shamila Connell, keeping that down to one. And again, a similar appeal, and there's a loud appeal for caught behind. Umpire Laborde unmoved, and they're running a single in the meantime. While the Barbados, actually they're going to get two. While the Barbadians appealing and a little frustrated not getting the appeal. Perhaps thinking the ball was dead. Definitely the Jamaicans having a different view. Getting through. Two from it. And uh, yeah, it's <laughs> and now Knight speaking to umpire. The ball trying to understand what is happening or what happened. And yeah. the doubt she's explaining, hey, if there's an appeal, the ball isn't dead. Yeah, the Barbados team just needs to keep their emotions in check here. They are frustrated by the umpire's decisions, but they have to keep their feelings in check. At the end of the day, the umpires are in charge of the game, and their decision is final. They obviously thought that there was something off the bat of Shadeen Nation, and they were all convinced that she was out. Uh, you see the plan, and they thought the plan had come true. It had worked. Deciding not to with the umpire, and they have to keep their emotions in check and carry on. And the frustration perhaps showing by, by Connell. A bounce as it were, and not only a bounce, but wide, which is called and signaled. And good awareness, though, by the Jamaica batter, Stephanie Taylor, alert to the fact that it was not a dead ball and coming around for two runs. And that's why they're two of the most experienced players in the West Indies team. Yeah, the experience showing on that occasion. Once you're out there on the field, you have to be concentrating, whether you're bowling, batting, the striker, the non-striker. And then it's some field adjustments being made again. 
Nation back in to strike. So two fielders on the deep now on the offside. S deep cover and deep third. Short fine leg coming around from square leg. So three on the leg side still. Slip still in waiting. Six on the offside. Canel intonation. Stands tall as short as she is pushing that one into the offside. Picking up one through the covers. Looking for a second one. But being restricted to one. 31 for two. 9.4 overs. Jamaica winning the toss and batting. Yeah, two early, early wickets lost by the Jamaica team. Lost their first wicket at 10. That over Shader Williams, a judge LBW, to the bowling of Alison Gordon. And the second was Kanisha Ferron, played on from the bowling of Aliyah Ali. And he's gone again, cautiously playing forward his nation, the bowler fields. No harm done at all. And Kesia Knight still not happy. And she will have to be very careful about that. Because the match referees and finding, finding for behaviors, you wouldn't want to be sending the wrong signal. Yeah, another time that she's also the leader on the field. She is the appointed captain. And here's Nation playing it, not controlling it, squeezing a single nonetheless. And it's the end of the over. And I know the batters will have a little talk about it. A little excitement here in this match. A beautiful attempt of a catch earlier, not given out by the umpire. And of course, without the luxury of a replay, it would be as the umpires would have seen it. Yeah, and that's the reason for the frustration from the Barbados side. They feel as though a couple of decisions have gone against them. But as I mentioned, they have to keep their emotions in check. There's still a lot left in this game. Indeed. And it's Aline who will continue from the C.A. Paul Southwell end, or the northern end. And the Barbados players, they'll have to lift their spirits and they'll have to work again. They don't want to get frustrated. frustrated. They don't want to lose focus, don't want to lose concentration. Because that ultimately will affect their performances. Yeah, and they were... Same thing to Wolf first. They lost the toss, asked the Wolf first, and they're in a very good position. 32 for 2, the Jamaica side, after winning the toss. So Barbados, if you look at the scorecard, you would think Barbados is on top. So as much as you would be frustrated, they have to find a way to carry on and find a way to get through these two batters and into that middle to lower order. Perhaps that, that is where their, their frustration would be lying because they know if they get rid of one of these two experienced players, things will be looking a little more in their favor. A little more. We have, to, <laughs> we have to be careful with that. There's still <laughs> Natasha McLean and Chanel Henry to come. At this stage, end of the power play, 32 for 2. I think they're, they're in good standings. 3.2 runs and over. Yeah, of course they are. The end of the power play, as you pointed out. So now three fielders out on the boundary. They are allowed four fielders on the boundary, the Barbados side. Choose. And there's one taking the outer edge, is it? They're running through for a single. We'll have to look. Yes, it did. Going to the first slip, did it carry? Uh, it didn't seem to have dropped short, and that's because Stephanie Taylor, it wasn't a flooded, flooded drive by her. She just put her back, well bowled by Aliyah uh, Ali. But that's the reason it didn't carry to the field that slip, Alyssa Scantlebury. And Aline, she will be motivated nonetheless. Yeah, of course, that should be encouraging for her. And here is Nation. Being extra cautious, and they'll, ha they'll tend to be. Dabbing that one out into the offside, not picking up a single. It's still 33 for two after 10.3 overs. Nation on eight. Stefani Taylor, three. Aline once more. And coming forward, walking that one into the onside. Is Nation not picking up a single? 
threatening thing about Aaliyah Aline is the fact that she's able to take the ball both ways. So she took the edge, the outside edge of Stephanie Taylor, and then she got that one to shape back in to Shadeen Nation. And here is Nation pushing that one, running quickly for a single. They had to hurry and hurry they did. And we spoke about communication and we spoke about Shadeen Nation <laughs> exactly. always wanting to turn the strike over. A pretty tight single in the end, but all is well that ends well, I guess. <laughs> and here we have the batters on this occasion. Say, hey, better communication. So it's all happening here at Warner Park. Barbados having lost the toss and they're fielding. And it's Aline again from the media center end. That one a little wide, drifting away. Looking at it cautiously go by Stephanie Taylor as it brings up the end of the 11th over. Jamaica 32 for 34 for 2 after 11. Nation 9 from 19. Stephanie Taylor 3 from 8. Alia Allen, she's had 2 overs, 6 runs, 1 wicket. And we're now seeing a change from the southern end or the low Zach Road end. Yes, Shamila Connell completed her spell of five overs for 13 runs. No wicket, but it was a very miserly initial spell. Really good bowling. She asked lots of questions. But now we see the introduction of spin for the first time today. And it's going to be the re spin of Keila Elliott. No surprises here. She does trouble the Jamaica batters in particular. And she's always asked questions of Stephanie Taylor. Even with all her experience, Stephanie Taylor struggles to play against Keila Elliott when she gets it right. And here's one perhaps a loose, no? a little high. Playing down to the whitish mid on region. Picking up a trotting truth for a single as it were. Three fielders on the boundary for the start of this over. Long on, deep square leg, and a sweeper on the offside. Slip still in waiting. Kayla Elliott, re spinner. She is capable of bowling a very little googly as well. So they'll be wary of that, the Jamaica Bahars. That one turning away is again, yes, yes, no, no. <laughs> And by, by the time Nation was almost halfway down the track, being sent back. A very, very lively player, as you mentioned, trying to always turn the singles over. And that one giving a little more room. And this time it's a single, playing into the mid off region. And still picking, trying to get into the groove is Elliot. Yeah, that one was pretty well bowled and equally well played by Stefani Taylor. And it was very well run, a well judged single. And that's more of what you would expect or you would want if you're supporting Jamaica. And here is Nation chipping down, playing it into the mid on region, picking up a single. She's now 11 from 21. Taylor, who is into strike, 4 from 10. 37 from 2, 11 point. 11.4 overs bold so far. Scoring at a run rate of 3.17. Not the healthiest. And one. that one played full. Picking up a single again. Encouragement coming from the skipper knight. Keep going. And that one brings on the back foot and she punches it out, coming into a dropping a little, perhaps leg, a little outside leg. And it's the end of the over. First over for Keila Elliott. Two dots, four runs coming from it. An opener, loosener, whatever you would call it. And it's always challenging for the wrist spinners. When they're on, they're really on, but when they're off, they're really, really bad. <laughs> yeah. 
some or at least many say it is the hardest art in cricket. We see so many wrist spinners struggle with their lengths in particular. It wasn't a bad over, in my opinion, by Keila Elliott. She did her a bit full on a few occasions, but you take that as opposed to a long hop. Exactly. And it's going to be Aline continuing. Just the two of us picking up a wicket. Interestingly, the slip has been taken out. Even though in Aline's previous over, she did take the outside edge of Stefani Taylor. A very interesting move and dabbed into the, the offside. And again, Nation almost halfway down the track, <laughs> <laughs> even before Taylor was off the mark. Which is really a good way to approach it, but one would still need to be cautious. And I find today a lot of cricketers, they turn twos into ones. And that's Coming exactly forward. what you want. So you quit single again by these two. Basically the same ball, same shot. But this time, Taylor, she probably decided, well, we should have probably sprinted through for that the first time, but we're going to get it work. And they're nonetheless going to have a little chat about that. A quick word, let's keep it tight. Communication. Yeah, good saw fans by Stephanie Taylor, though. She does notice that the fielder at Batward Point, Keila Elliott, is on the circle. And there is a big gap there with the fielder on the cover boundary. Experiencing experience coming in again, and that one a little wider. Three balls have been bowled, no harm done. And Jamaica would want to see this pair stay and build an inning. And it's the perfect situation for a player like Stefani Taylor. <laughs> and this one, pulling it, goes up. Will it drop? Ooh, a brilliant attempt there by Connell. They're coming through for single. They'll have to hurry. And there's a loud appeal. And the finger of the umpire the board goes up. A lot happening on that ball on that occasion. What a recovery by Shamelia Connell. Sprinting in from the boundary, attempting to take that catch. She dived, but look at the way. Well, it was Alyssa Scanterbury, forgive me, very alert, helping Shamelia Connell there. And a good throw into it, keeper Kaiser Knight. And it finds Shadeen Nation short. We did mention a chance of a run out coming. And this time, the Barbados team is able to capitalize and they get their third wicket. Jamaica losing the third at 39. So 39 for three now, Jamaica, after winning the toss and electing to bat. And that is what they didn't want. We've been speaking about it, yes. Perhaps we saw it coming. As we say here in Sink, it's maybe goat mode <laughs> with the predictions. Commentator is cursed, they call it. <laughs> that again. And uh, nonetheless, Barbados will be happy. They don't mind how the wickets come once they keep coming. And a very big blow for the Jamaica team. Hesha the Nation seemed quite settled at the crease, and she would have come into this tournament very confident after her stint in Australia getting most runs for the team that she represented. So they would have expected a lot from her. Unfortunately, she goes to the Renault route. And it brings Natasha McLean to the crease. And if it, there's one thing we can expect is that the scoring rate will increase as long as Natasha McLean is here. She is one who likes to strike at quite a hefty straight rate. And she will be looking to score and put some pressure on the Barbados side. And there's still another experienced peer here. And uh, what do you think might be going through Taylor's head at the moment? Well, she definitely won't want another run out. <laughs> but she knows that someone has to stay here and build a partnership. She'll be disappointed that they've already lost three wickets, 40 for three, after winning the toss and choosing to bat. So they need a foundation now, the Jamaica side. And these two can do it. They're very capable of doing it. And she'll be asking Natasha McLean to stay with her. And that one signaled a dead ball by the umpire. So it wouldn't count as one in the over. Yeah, you see the slip, the slip being reemployed with the new batter coming to the crease. Alyssa Scanterbury, very fine there at that for a slip position. 
Aline again. That one goes through. Is it coming off the pad? They run one. Race is going down to the boundary. He wouldn't get there. They amble through for the second Five. one. And it does come off the pad. Signal length by is by the umpires now. The umpire now. And uh, 42 for three, 12.5 overs. No doubt Barbados the better of the two teams. A little more confident at this stage. Yeah, especially after they lost the toss. So they're in a very good position, the Barbados team. They'll ho be hoping to make further in the roads. Aline again, Matin trying to whip that one off the legs. Not making contact, an appeal going up. And the umpire signals the end of the over, 42 for three. At the end of over number 13. And perhaps a mo more composure now coming back into, even before the wicket, the Barbados team, and we were speaking about it. If you're going to carry the frustration, you're going to lose focus. But they seem to have gotten over that hum, and they would have settled down, started their concentration, and a brilliant piece of work there with the run out just now. Yeah, good fielding by Shemilia Connell initially with the effort coming off of the boundary, but then by Alyssa Scantlebury. Well aware that the Bahers were trying to cross for their second run. Oh, Coming forward, there's an appeal. Perhaps a bit of bat on it. Maybe dropping a little out, uh, outside the leg stump. Well, Bobby, you were spinner. Kila Elliott did mention that she causes trouble to Stefani Taylor. That one pitching outside leg and then turning into crashing into the pads. But because it pitched outside leg, it cannot be given. LBW. She will be encouraged nonetheless. And that one on the stumps coming forward a bit is Taylor playing it into the midwicket region. No harm done. I just wonder if perhaps there's a chance to put some more pressure on the Jamaica side by bringing that figure out along on into the circle. I was thinking about that for the leg spinner. Not seemingly very comfortable is Taylor. She's there still. But she doesn't seem quite in command. Yeah, it's the way she starts her innings, Stephanie Taylor. She takes some time before she gets going. And that one is a full. She goes heaping it. It's going to be six. Yes, it is being signaled by the umpire. That one full. We've seen a few full ones from Elliot. And I could imagine, as they say, nation's eyes opening wide. A nice, juicy full thought. Yeah, Taylor in fact, and it's the first T maximum Taylor, yes. of the innings. A chance to score and she capitalizes. And I'm sure she's welcoming that and hoping for more. We were just harping on about that long on. Perhaps that's the reason Casey Knight has decided to put the long on in place. Just giving the leg spinner some support. That one outside the leg stump. She plays it into actually getting the boundary there through the mid wicket. Yeah, Didn't seem the timing was perfect, but a bit, a bit of power on, on it. Yeah, the fielder in the deep wasabi calendar is very square on the boundary. She's not at deep mid wicket, she's at deep square, surprisingly. So there was no chance for her to get around there. But overcompensation by Keila El Elliott, full toss initially, and then she drives it down. Fielder being adjusted now, so wasabi calendar just going a bit straighter on the boundary. And here's Elliot again, that one full, playing again through the mid-wicket, the same result, four runs. I saw some adjustments, I thought she was still in the, the boundary field, go to, a little more to the left, but that wasn't, even she did go, but not quite enough. And she'll have to tighten up on that. And then the ball being signaled by the umpire, so this is a free hit. Too high on that occasion, Frankie to Elliot. So the second free hit to the Jamaica team and to Stephanie Taylor. And they'll be hoping that she can capitalize on this one. Relax, 15 runs from the last three deliveries, six, four, four, and in the ball. Here's Elliot again, a little flatter, and she plays it through the mid wicket region. They're running one, whipping that one back in as the fielder, not before the batters were able to gain their ground. And it is the end of the over, 56 for three. After 14. Minutes. 
and these two will have to bat, bat sensibly, bat long, and of course, keep the scoreboard ticking over to give Jamaica a very good chance of winning this game. A lot of rivalry between these two in any form of any sport, <laughs> actually. Cricket, football, what do you have it? Men cricket, female cricket. Both countries being extremely competitive. Yeah, that's why it's always an exciting game whenever these two meet. Aline, bring in, bring in Taylor forward. Yeah, that's exactly the line that her captain will be asking her to bowl, Aliyah Aline. She does have four fielders on the leg side. And they'll be hoping to target the stumps, target Stephanie Taylor's pads. That's always the plan whenever you're bowling to Stephanie Taylor. She's very good through the offside. And Taylor coming that one. And you, we've been talking about the first slip and removed for her. And that one going through would have been straight down the, the throat, as we say here. <laughs> but instead, it was straight to the boundary. Four runs. Yeah, still feeling for the ball a bit. Stephanie Taylor, and you just see her hands follow the ball on that occasion once more. But again, no slip in place. Perhaps because the ball is a bit older now and maybe it's not doing too much. Maybe also because the plan is to bowl a lot straighter. But eventually, Stephanie Taylor is able to get another boundary. So she's raced to 20 of 19 deliveries. And we were just talking about how slow she starts. And here is she pushing that one back down to the fielder, to the bowler. And uh, having a chance, as it were, ball keeping low, dropping before it gets in, get into the first slip, first slip removed and a boundary going, a boundary going through there. But cricket are a very beautiful game of the mind. And trying to flick this one into the leg side and she runs through for a very quick single. Yeah, I see that running by Natasha McLean. She's not known for, her, known for her running between the wickets, but very good call. And she was alert to that. That one trickled off the pad of Stephanie Taylor, like by being shown by the umpire. But really good running by Natasha McLean. And that could be encouraging signs for the Jamaica side. If she's alert so early, it could be worrying for Barbados. I exactly, and especially with her power. So once everything starts to, to mesh, Slip back in place now with Natasha McLean on straight. She's just facing two deliveries, McLean. She hasn't scored a run as yet. And going outside, trying to whip that square, not making contact. Giving herself a little room on that occasion. At this rate. The projected score for the Jamaica team is 200. They're scoring at four runs and over. And if they do get to that 200 mark, remember, they get a bonus, bonus point. point. Yeah, exactly. And she's coming across, standing tall, playing it squarish on the offside. No harm done. It's the end of the over. It looks as though it's going to be a water break, the first water break, and a welcome water break, I'm sure. Very hot conditions here at Warner Park, and I'm sure all on the field, especially fielders, will be happy that they can get a break, get a drink, and perhaps regroup. Jamaica winning the toss and batting. Warner Park considered to be a batsman paradise, in this case, a, a batter's paradise. And uh, Jamaica, 56 for three, Perhaps thinking they should have had a few more runs and they should have lost a few wickets. But at this stage, perhaps Barbados may be the better, more comfortable of the two teams. Having lost a little focus in all of you because of a, an appeal for a wonderful attempt of a catch didn't go their way. And we saw them recovering with a beautiful piece of work, anticipation and run out. And the Jamaica, these two will have to bat, bat long, and at the same time keep the scoreboard ticking over with round up with the boundaries. Yeah, 
at the end of 15 overs. We're seeing 14 on screen, but it's 15 overs gone. Jamaica 56 for three. We are back from the water break. 60 for the loss of three after 15 overs. Jamaica winning the toss and batting. Yeah, Barbados, they'll be quite happy with the position that they're in. They did show signs of frustration, but they have three wickets after losing the toss. So pretty good start. And that's mainly up to the steady bowling of Alison Garden and Shamelia Connell. Those two opened the bowling for the Barbados side. Then Aliyah Ali was able to come in and get a wicket in her first over. Kila Elliott is the fourth bowler used for the Barbados side. Last over was quite expensive. She struggled with her length. And Stephanie Taylor was able to capitalize. And it's going to be Elliott continuing. And that one. Wondering perhaps how she would have played. That in the end being cautious. No harm done. And it's no doubt she would have been thinking a bit during the water break. And that one is a little fuller. It strokes beautifully to the extra cover. A lovely diving save by the fielder there. Limiting the batters to just the one run. Had it beaten her, perhaps it could have been interesting. It may have gotten close to the boundary. It may have passed, but only one getting... Being the, the batters getting from that delivery. Yeah, that one was beautifully driven along the ground to the left of the fielder at mid off. But a good diving save by Alison Garden. And Elliot seems not to have quite settled this yet. The fuller balls. And that one a little flatter, a little faster. Being pulled into the onside. The fielder from back with a square runs around to her left. And actually, it's a no ball again. And Elliot, she has been somewhat troubled by that. She has had a few no balls so far. And it's going to be a free hit. Signal now by umpire Laborde. The Elliot will try again. A little fuller. And that one is driven straight down into a whitish mid on a little fumble on the board on the boundary but the batter's coming through safely for two runs as i know say welcome to carlisle welcome back carlisle that is thank you very much troy taps that one into the offside. Elliot seemingly not to have to have settled as quick as she would have liked Carlisle, if she settled at all. Here she is, a little fuller, slower, driving that one to the offside, and my lovely stroke, caressing it, really, and getting four beautiful runs. And then she's looking ball along her, and then he'll put you. No power whatsoever. Caressing that one. Come, 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 Mills. Come, 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 
So the extra cover four runs for a beautiful looking run, Scalin. Beautiful shot, very well played. She was right to the pitch of the delivery, over it, and just found the gap nicely. Troy, we have President Shallow, and he'll be joining me at the end of the over. We'll have a nice little chat about women's cricket and about West Indies cricket. And here's Elliot in that one. Appeal, and actually she's bored, is she? No. Okay. I Came from the side pad. Okay, I wondered what happened. She started walking towards the, the, the player's pavilion, perhaps trying to regain her composure. There was an appeal, but cricketers these days have a tendency to appeal for almost everything. And the batters are having a little discussion. McLean encouraging nation, hey, we have to do this. It's the end of the over, step out. As I welcome President Shallow to the microphones and to St. Kitts. And in the meantime, we're trying to get our scores coordinated. We're seeing 70 for the loss of three on the scoreboard. We're seeing a different score on the monitor in front of us. So we'll try to get that sorted. As I say, a very pleasant good morning, President Shallow. How are you doing? Good morning, Carlo. Um, thanks for the warm greetings and welcome. Always a pleasure being here in St. Kitts and Nevis, all my favorite places in the world. Good to hear that. I have to get you across to Nevis as well. I, I, was, I was hoping that maybe we could sneak in a few games over there. <laughs> that might have afforded me the opportunity this Here time around. But Aline, delivery which is played back on the onside, no runs. Brilliant news for the ladies. $20,000 cash prize for the winners this year? It's a start. It's a start. Um, I'm hoping that it in incentivizes a few players, um, senior players from not necessarily venturing out to different leagues, but staying home and making this tournament quite competitive. Delivery, which is driven in the air, down to the field that cover, goes between her and the fielder from backward point, and they'll get a single. And uh, so that will push the score on to 71 for the loss of three Barbados. Not just a cash prize, a winner-take-all, 10000 to the, the runner-up this year. But more important for me is that from October of 2024, six females from each of the franchises will get contracts. That, that's a, a, a great um, stride, I would say, in our cricket. Um, advancement for women's cricket, West Indies cricket, cricket on a whole. Um, it, it certainly will encourage more females to be involved in the sport and playing probably, you know, be beyond age 30 or so. Here is a delivery which is stroked into the offside by Stefani Taylor. They'll get a single and that will push the score on to 72 for the loss of three wickets. And she goes on to 33, does Taylor. Yes, and there's obviously a developmental component. Of, um, of, of the increases because we want our players to be able to focus on cricket, not having to be worried about employment and, and all the other distractions. Um, so we wanted them to be able to get a monthly remuneration. Delivery stroke back down the track on the onside. They won't score as it's shadowed nicely by the fielder coming across from mid on. And the score will remain on 72 for the loss of three wickets. Aline has picked up one for 14. She's in a fifth over. Stefani Taylor is, in fact, on 22. So the scores are being corrected as we move along. Here is a delivery to McLean. And for this delivery, she's defending into the offside, finds extra cover, no runs. And so an excellent start, but the news gets even better because by 2027, 10 players franchise will be contracted excellent i wish we could fast forward to to to, to that um to that year but uh, you know a lot of work went into this uh, with weeper west indies players association waverly hines and his team aline to bowl a delivery to stroke firmly into the offside wide of the field at mid-off and across the boundary for four runs 
And so that's four good-looking runs to McLean. And, of course, they will know by, uh, the Jamaica team who won the toss and decided to bat first that when they get to 200, if they do so, they will pick up a bonus point and will pick up a second bonus point when they get to 220. And so negotiations between Weeper and the Cricket West Indies and this agreement is good for four years. It is. Um, so what we did was agree to incremental increase over the years. Um, um, I think everyone found that this is um, quite favorable, especially to the players. Um, it is sustainable as well from a Cricket West Indies perspective, which was very important. And we believe that it would encourage our players to, to, you know, to develop and have the best players available for West Indies um, over the next four years and hopefully beyond. So it was a remarkable um, achievement across for both organizations, um, Cricket West Indies and Weeper. And I think the players are, you know, by and large, quite happy about um, what we have established. We've also seen an increase in fees for players, both ladies and, and, and men. Absolutely, and, and officials as well, because we believe um, umpiring and match referee and so on these are very component aspects of the games of the game as well and we had to incentivize them as um you know too so i'll tell you after i'll just expound on after this ball combo batch is the new bowler and we'll be bowling a delivery to stefani taylor which is pulled into the onside but there is protection at mid wicket and so they'll only have a single yes carlos so previously we we had in the men's tournaments we had the, the officials getting paid significantly higher than the, for the women's tournament. What we said that we need the best officials in these tournaments as well. And so we increased the remuneration for them. Comba batch to McLean and she's defending nicely. Back to the bowler, no runs. Yeah, and why that is so important? I mean, we know one decision in cricket, Handy Field could affect a player for their um, career, player's career. Um, a bad LBW or Ball of missing an opportunity for wicket. Captain Knight has brought in a slip, and here is McLean using a feet, driving down to long off. Fielder comes off the boundary, and they'll have a single. And so, what we wanted it was to make the female tournaments just as attractive as the men's tournaments, so that we have the best officials available. And we were quite happy to have you know achieved that as well. Here is a delivery which is going back to cutting beautifully into the offside, down square of the wicket for four. And Taylor didn't make a mistake on that one. And uh, so four more runs to Jamaica. And uh, we see even more correction to Stefani Taylor's score. They'll get it right soon. It was showing me 22 a moment ago. Now it has gone back to 20. And uh, we'll just wait. They'll get it right. The scoreboard is still showing Stefani Taylor on 38. Now, protection goes in on the offside as the sweeper goes down three quarters of the way to the cover boundary. Comba Batch is bowling from the Lozak Road end and bowls to Stefani Taylor. This is short and pulled handsomely into the onside. Will bounce once and go across the backward square leg boundary for four. And so this has not been a good over so far by Cumberbatch. Pull down short and Taylor is too good a player to miss out on that. And so four more runs to her. And the score on the scoreboard... We'll give you that in just a minute. Here's a delivery which is punching to the offside. Um, it eludes the field at extra cover. They get a single as long off runs across to her left. And uh, so one delivery left in the over. It's an expensive one. None for eight. Well, that's still showing Elliot on my, on my monitor. And it's definitely not her. It's the end of the over. And... Uh, I'm going to have to take send Troy Mills next door. He's not with us. He has gone. But we'll get the correct score for you in just a little while. And then it gets even more exciting, President Shallow, because by 2027, there will be parity. And, and, and I think that is ideal in, in cricket and sports. And, you know, Cricket West Indies 
certainly uh, you know we are a champion for women's in, um, involvement and participation in, in sports and where in cricket we have a direct influence we plan to play our part so we are quite excited about the prospects of that and again it's just to reward people on merit um, if the, the women are making the same sacrifices as men same short career so ideally we want to be able to to remunerate them equally you know and, and have that equity across the board so fantastic achievement from our part and we're quite uh, happy for the players and the players themselves i'm sure will be very happy absolutely they have they have responded well um, i'm hoping to see that on the field of play during the, these two tournaments in Tinkets and, and nevis as well and i think internationally you, you, you would have seen some improved performances already elliot has been switched around to the media center end this delivery is played down to long on brings the field off the boundary and stephanie taylor gets a single and uh, that takes her on to 44 and the score is 98 for the loss of three wickets jamaica they won the toss and decided to bat here's a delivery which is short punch firmly down on the onside finds the field on the long on boundary and maclean gets a single takes the score into 99 for the loss of three elliot switched around to the media center end and goes up to bowl now to taylor who is playing this one nicely into the gap on the offside between the fielder at backward point and uh, cover gets a single and the score moves to 99 jamaica 99 for the loss of three wickets mclean settles over her bat and elliot gives this one good flight bounce on it too it's played away into the offside brings the sweeper off the cover boundary and they'll get a single and so jamaica brings up the 100 projected score on our board is saying suggesting 207 they're currently scoring at 4.13 here is elliot delivery which is loose played into the onside there's a, a fielder down there on the backward square leg boundary and so taylor will get one more run to take her on to 46 and the score to 101 for the loss of three wickets elliot bowls a delivery which is well flighted and driven back down the track partially is stopped by the bowler on a follow through and it's the end of the over then so it's a uh, 102 for the loss of three wickets and we have president shallow with us three three games happening around the country there is one at uh, connery and another at st paul's and we're hoping to get all of these done by the middle of the month so we can get into the t20 blaze yeah um, it's important that we get both formats playing um give the ladies some some exposure um completely different type of cricket and, and so on and, and it is i'm sure that they're going to capitalize on it i'm quite excited about the young players the number of young players in this tournament is is, is um, an indication that the future of women's cricket in the west needs is quite bright um i'm quite optimistic that with them and, and um with the participation in this tournament by the end of both the 50 overs and the t20 we're going to have some improved players Cumberbatch is bowling to McLean, who is swinging it into the onside goes down forward of square for four good looking runs and so Jamaica, they have upped their scoring rate recently. Uh, short delivery. And there was no protection on the backward square leg boundary. Now we see a fielder going out. So there will be one at backward square and one at mid wicket protecting those boundaries. Other point I have to make here the Cricket West Indies coaching staff, I'll come back to that after this. Cumberbatch is bowling to McLean, who is driving firmly and goes past the bowler and they'll get a run. So she moves on to 15, does McLean. And the score has now gone on to... Well, I'm sure that if I follow the scoreboard, eventually by the end of the day, they'll drive me crazy because they have walked the score back to 98. 
Something is happening, but we'll get it sorted out eventually. What I can tell you is that the school board is showing Stephanie Taylor, who is on strike on 46. And it's Cumberbatch from the Lozak Road end who is bowling to Taylor. And for this delivery, she gets a full one, drives it firmly, and it's knocked down by the fielder at extra cover. They'll get a single. She moves to 47. President Shallow, in, in an effort to up the scoring, there is a bonus point when you get to 200. Yeah, Mike, Miles, Miles Bascom and, and his technical team, Graham West and, and the others. The delivery turned into the onside by McLean. And she gets run number 16. Yeah, they, 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 they have um, formulated a, a very good um, sort of um, bonus system across across all our original tournaments, both male and female. Cumberbatch once more, balls to Taylor, gets a half trucker and plays it splendidly into the offside, down to the cover boundary for four. It was short and she was behind it and placed it sweetly. And uh, not only gets four runs, but brings up her half century as well as she moves on to 51. I tell you what, Carla, um, on the actual cricketer and Stefani, for the last year, it's probably best ever I've seen Stefani. And you would think that you know, people thought that she was actually slowing down. But it's remarkable that she has bounced back so well after her injury and looking as good as ever. Here is Cumberbatch to bowl to Taylor, and uh, it's outside the line of the off stump. She allows it to go through, end of the over, and at the end of the over, uh, Stefani Taylor is on 51, McLean is on 16, and uh, the score, the total has disappeared from the scoreboard. I think they are trying to get me, well, it's now showing 104, so thank you very much. And so bright sunshine here at Warner Park, and uh, we have President uh, Shallow of yeah. Cricket and West Indies with us. And, and Carla, I mean, just to put things into perspective when it comes to the increases, right? I mean, when you look at a player like Stefani, who is a, a legend in her own right, right? She was certainly good on, you know, history as one of our best players, female players. And, you know, over the years, she would have played probably time she, she, by the time she ends her career, she would have played 15 years of international cricket day about. Right, and you want persons like her and others to come to be remunerated that they could live comfortably after they retire. Right, and so that is why it is quite important that you know we, we remunerate these players in the short, you know, cricket career that they're going to play because 50 years is relatively short for, for you know for professional. Correct. And 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 so we want to incentivize not only the current players but the future players. When uh, when the the young girls, and I'm quite happy to see some young girls in the in the stand looking at the cricket, that they would know that this is actually a career. They can get a career out of playing cricket. Change of bowling from this end. Bruce, it is, who starts with a wide, and the score will move to 105. We're not seeing Haley Matthew in the tournament uh, yet. She's away on IPL duties, I understand. But what a fantastic year she has had. Brilliant. Um, uh, I mean, uh, total class. Um, brilliant player. Here is a delivery which is bringing Macklin forward. And they knocked it down. Two fielders were caught in. Two batters were caught in the middle of the pitch. It was a yes, no, will we, won't we? And fortunately for them, the ball bubbled out of the hands of the fielder who had made such a brilliant save. And eventually they got through for a single. But that could have been disaster for Jamaica. 105 it is on the scoreboard for the loss of three wickets. And the Taylor, who is on 51, comes up to take strike. Matthews has continued to grow from strength to strength. And uh, we're looking for more players from the West Indies female team to step up and support her. Here is a delivery from Bruce, which is played off the outer portion of the bat, down to third man. They'll get a single. And... Uh, that will take the score now up to 106 yeah. and uh, 52 is Stephanie Taylor. And, and I'm quite um, elated for 
Haley in, in the last 12 months or so she has been having. She, she's a fantastic leader as well. And I'm sure she serves as a role model for, for probably all of our players, or our female players, and even some of our male cricketers as well. Here's a delivery which McLean is playing at, missing. It goes through for the keeper, and there is no chance of a run. Of course, West Indies hosting the 2024 T20 World Cup, and that's coming up in a hurry. That's in June. It's an incredible opportunity for the region, the entire region. Um, I said not only the six host countries in the Caribbean, but the entire Caribbean is going to benefit from the World Cup. Here's a drill delivery which is drilled firmly straight back down the track for four. Good shot there by McLean. And it was in the slot. She came forward and drove it firmly. And uh, it went just a little bit to the left of the bowler, but hit firmly. And no chance of her catching that at all. And so the score moves to 110. And it's 21 to McLean. There are 29 overs left after this one. McLean is getting a good delivery this time. Plays it out to extra cover. And there is no chance of a run. So Bruce... He's doing duties from this the media center end. Of course, the United States of America co-hosting with the West Indies. They're, they're hosting, I think, 16 matches across three states. Here is Bruce to, to bowl again, played into the offside, finds extra cover, and they won't score. Yeah, I think with the World Cup, um, and it is well documented that the... The opportunity to unlock, you know, tremendous resources, um, revenue for for the region, for for West Indies cricket, you know, it it is it's something that we all have to capitalize on. We have to optimize this opportunity as much as possible. Um, apart from the projected um, profits that we anticipate, just the legacy projects and programs that we are going to benefit from. In, you know, certainly when you see the investment taking place across the region for infrastructure, you know, not only the, 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 the playing venues, but the training venues as well. So in each of the six countries, we're going to have three first-class facilities, right? Because you have two training facilities plus the playing facility. So we have so players, both male and female, are going to be enjoying these improvements over the coming years following the World Cup and their legacy programs where we have to ensure that young children get to experience this fantastic event across the Caribbean and hopefully they are inspired to go on and become international cricketers. So tremendous benefits all around Carlisle. That's good news for the West Indies. Gordon has been brought back from the Lozac Road end and this delivery is turned away to the onside and there is no chance of a run. Taylor is on 52, McLean is on 21. Good partnership between these two. And the Barbados will be looking to stem the flow of runs. Alison Gordon, from the far end, comes up to bowl to Stephanie Taylor, who is going back, punching into the onside. Fielder from forward of square chases to her left, dives over it. They get two runs. And so 54 is the score for Stephanie Taylor. Captain Casey and Knight. She's having a change in field again. Bringing the fielder from backward square to mid wicket. And sending the fielder who was at mid wicket down to forward of square. So Gordon has been good for Barbados so far. He's bowling. She's changed ends. He's bowling from the Lozak Road end. And for this delivery, she's turning it into the onside. That's clever batting by Stephanie Taylor. Just came forward and, and worked it into the onside, forward of square, and picked up a single to take her on now to 55. And continue to bat well after the all early loss of some wickets. Jamaica. Gordon. Comes up now and bowls to McLean, who is driving in the air through the hands of the fielder at mid-wicket. And they'll get a single. She, was, she made a good effort there, diving away to her right. 
difficult it was struck firmly. Uh, she took some of the pace off it. And so the score seems like we are back with the score now, 115 for three. Here is a delivery which is short outside the off stump and Taylor is missing out as she played over it. Um, still have to check the individual scores because there is a difference between what I'm seeing on my screen and what I'm seeing on the scoreboard. Here is Gordon once more comes up to bowl a delivery which is defended nicely. Back on the onside, fielded by Gordon. And so that's a good over by her. And uh, at the end of that, she has picked up one for 17 from her five overs. And uh, so we'll give you the scores which I'm seeing on my monitor. And uh, hope that we get those corrected on the big scoreboard down at Square Leg. On the monitor, the score says it's 115 for the loss of three. And... Uh, That, I can tell you, will definitely be wrong because we have bowled more than 22 overs. So, let's wait and see what comes up on the scoreboard. Here is a delivery which is punched firmly back down the track. There's a fielder at long off. And so, McLean will get a single. And uh, that will take her on to 35. And I'll go with what I'm seeing on my monitor. 35 to Natasha McLean. Stefani Taylor has been corrected to 41. And here is she playing into the offside is Taylor. And uh, she won't get a run. So Bruce is in her second over. Projected score at this rate, 5.19, is showing 260. Taylor, 41 from 44, and McLean is 35 from 28. Here is Bruce to bowl to Taylor who is playing it down to the fielder coming off the third man boundary and she'll have a single to take on to 42 it's 117 for three and that's Jamaica having won the toss and decided to bat I suspect these, the individual scores are incorrect there Carla because I know Stephanie raised a bat for 50 a while ago that is correct that is why I'll I'm waiting patiently for one of my other commentators to come so we can send them next door to the scorers as the delivery is played into the offside by McLean. Uh, direct hit scored by the fielder there at extra cover, but Taylor was very safely in. Score is 118 for three. I think um, Stefan is uh, shaping up and be looking to get uh, the first 100 of this tournament. She's looking as good as I've ever seen her look. Absolutely. And, you know, it'll be quite um, a way to start the tournament and I'm sure set the standard for the other batters in the tournament to, to follow and they themselves will want to, to come out scoring quite, quite, quite big as well. So Taylor settles over her bat and the delivery which is a little bit straight getting into the pads and she's looking to swing it down to the vacant mid-wicket position. Misses completely. And the score remains on 118 for the loss of two rickets. Current partnership is on 78. So that's a good recovery by Jamaica. They won the toss and decided to bat. And uh, showing a projected score of 259. Taylor seems to be suffering some little bit of discomfort. Has taken off her helmet. I think something probably um, in her eye or something. Something yeah, probably flew something into her eye. eye yeah. Which gives us a, an opportunity to further discuss the T20 World Cup. The finals uh, will be in Barbados. Will be in Barbados. Um, semi-finals in, in Guyana and Trinidad and Tobago. And the rest of the tournament um, in the region played across Antigua and Barbuda, St. Vincent, Grenadine, St. Lucia. And I think I'm missing one, maybe. 
is it St. Lucia, Barbados, or Barbados as well, Guyana. So six countries in the in the Caribbean. Um, quite exciting times. Um, plans are progressing well. Uh, we had some interesting meetings over the last few weeks. Um, the, the the government across the, the, the Caribbean, they too are very invested in this tournament. I had what was a fruitful exchange with the heads of government across the, the region at the CARICOM heads of government meeting last week. And, and that was, you know, where both parties, well, from the government side and CARICOM side, where we, sorry, from the Cricket Western side and the government side, we are all, you know, pledged to have that collaborative effort going forward as we have been enjoying so far in preparation of the World Cup. Um, you would have probably observed or learned in the media that Trinidad and Tobago, their Prime Minister, Honorable Keith Rowley, Dr. Keith Rowley, he is going to host a cricket symposium in Trinidad and Tobago. I think that is supposed to be on the on April 19th and 20th. And so that is going to be a special moment where, you know, stakeholders across the Caribbean, you know, in, in one venue just discussing cricket you know, over two days. That is something to be excited Fantastic. about, Carla. Fantastic. Bruce will continue from this the media center end after that brief break. And uh, she's going in to bowl to Stephanie Taylor. And for this delivery, it's down the leg side, called and signaled wide. So it's 119 for the loss of three. Taylor is on 42 from 46. And it's the CG United Women's Super 50. Here is Bruce to bowl to Taylor, who is playing this one down to the vacant fine leg position for four. Again drifted into the legs, and Taylor, with all of her experience, yeah. knew she just had to get some bat on that, and swung it away down to the deep fine leg position and picked up four runs. And uh, so she continues to grow, Stephanie Taylor. She's on 46. Uh, McLean is on 36. And it's 123 for three. 23 overs have been completed. And uh, so the partnership is an important one here for Jamaica. It continues to grow and grow. We'll be seeing Gordon, who will be bowling from the far end. And so cricket very much on the agenda. Uh, St. Kitts, of course, will see even more cricket after the Super 50s because it will be the 2020 Blaze. Here is Gordon, and uh, she's bowling a delivery which is hitting the air, coming from the leading edge. McLean was trying to turn it into the onside. He took the leading edge, went up in the air, and Gordon said, mine, mine. And she took her, a catch, so she will be out bold and caught McLean, and Barbados has the breakthrough that they have been looking for. Yeah, in, in addition to, to this cricket, um, obviously St. Kitts and, and Nevis hosting the entire um, women's tournament, both the Super 50 and then the T20 Blaze. Um, recently, there were a few matches as well in the West Indies Championship, which is our first class championship. Quite a, a lot of cricket being played here. Um, I, 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 I could tell you that um, there there are a few discussions taking place as well to have cricket later on this year here also international cricket that is and that is of course in addition to cpl correct so we bring here. so a lot of cricket in in st kitts and nevis this year chanel henry has come out to replace mclean and uh, so it's 123 for four now 23 overs and one ball Having been bowled so far, Alison Gordon has picked up a second wicket. She's 2 for 17 from 5.1 overs. And she comes up to bowl to Henry, who is back and punching. And they'll have a single now because it was knocked down by the fielder from extra cover. 
and uh, so they have gone through for a single Henry's off the mark and it's 124 for the loss of four and, and Carla just to add I mean slightly off the field I mean tourism is such a massive part of cricket for our region I mean when you look at this you know you're sitting in the Comanche boot and you look out and you see the ocean you see the cruise ship and so I mean it does get <laughs> It doesn't get much more beautiful than this, isn't it? Across the entire world. And, and I mean, it's things like this why, why people love coming to our region to experience cricket, especially international cricket. Definitely. And those tourists who are here, we'll see Gordon coming up to bowl to Taylor. And it's wide, uh, left alone, and just wide enough not to be called. The guidelines, of course. Stefani Taylor decided no, she wouldn't play at that. Gordon is a, a clever bowler. Bowls to Taylor and this one, she takes the pace off it. It's drifting leg side and she's playing it firmly down to the fielder coming off the long on boundary and she'll get a single to move to 47 Taylor. 125 for four, we in over number 24 know that there will be people throughout the region following these matches. Barbados are the defending champions. And here is Gordon to bowl to Henry. And she's driving this one into the offside. The fielder is coming off the cover boundary. She'll get a single, does Henry. And that will move her on to two. And it's 126 for four. Gordon bowls to Taylor and Taylor is driving firmly and uh, knocked down by the bowler she doesn't hold on though and so Taylor will get get run number 48 and it's the end of the over 24 gone and it's 127 for the loss of four 24 overs have been completed 26 more to go We're seeing a pair of female umpires. So you're not just upgrading the players, but the umpires as well, giving opportunities to the females. Well, absolutely. That is critical. Um, we, we're looking to grow the game in a holistic way and show that, you know, you'll see we now have probably more female commentators than ever also. And, and that, is, that is very important that our females see opportunities in cricket, you know, beyond the cricket, the, the cricket playing days. And what that does is help people to start planning for the transition from, from unfeel, you know, to, and showing them that there's life after playing cricket. And so it helps them mentally to prepare for that. So when they come into the end of the career, they could still perform at the very best because they are not distracted with what they're going to do after. And so on. we have seen so many cricketers, you know, who, who fell into that sort of um, situation, just, just can't transition from playing. And so we have to afford them the opportunity to do other aspects of the game to, to participate and get involved and in, in all fairness so far the, the the female umpires not only this year but previously have been really 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 good elliot with her wrist spin bowls the delivery which is played down to mid wicket and uh, there is no run so stefani taylor she is on 48 and uh, for this delivery, she's checked driving that down to extra cover. Good delivery, pulled her wide, but she played it nicely. And the score remains on 127 for four. We're in the 25th over. And Taylor is on 48 from 52. And here is a delivery which is dragged short and just played away into the gap on the offside. Brings the point across to her right to field. And Taylor will move to 49. It's 128 for four. So 128 for four. Elliot is none for 34, and she's in a fifth over. And just to elaborate on, on the officiating and women's involvement, um, you, you recall last year, Jacqueline Williams from Jamaica, she made history when she became the first um, female umpire from the West needs to stand in a men's T20 international match. So that, that is incredible and certainly inspiring for many others. Elliot 
Ball's a delivery to Henry, which she's playing to extra cover. And she doesn't score. So she's on two runs, Henry. And uh, Taylor is on 49, 128 for four in the 25th over. Here is Elliot. And for this delivery, it's played into the onside. There's a fielder chasing from the mid-wicket boundary. And they'll just have a single. So Henry will move to three. And uh, it's 129 for four. Carla, you know this ground better than most of us. What you think is a good target for Jamaica to defend? Eh? Because they must have a, a figure in mind that they're looking to achieve. Well, <laughs> I'll tell you that the last time these two teams met, Barbados went in excess of 300. Oh. And that's last year. Delivery played into the offside by Stephanie Taylor yes. to bring up a half century. She's 50 from 54, Stephanie Taylor. Good knock. So the last time these two teams played, I can tell you I had the score here this morning and at the start of the day's play, I made sure to tell the audience that Barbados made 300, in excess of 300, and Jamaica only got to 113 for nine. So. Yes, um, so. and I'm sure Stefani Taylor, she featured in that game as well? Or? She did. So she would definitely have that on her mind. I'll be thinking of a big knock this morning to ensure that her team's, you know, her team gets to close to 300 at least. Gordon continues from the far end to bowl to Taylor, drifting into her pads, and she's trying to work it leg side. Misses out, and they won't score. Keshona Knight got 144 in that game. Tremendous talent, both, both sisters, Knights. Um, there's young Holder as well, who plays for the under-19 team, uh, who has played. Some, so I think she played her international, at the international level as well for the senior team. Gordon, balls to Taylor, who is defending down the track on the onside. Will bring Long on off the boundary, and she'll get a single, her 51st run. And it's 131 for four. The selector on Brown, John, she also highlighted to me young Kamabash, who is only about 16 years old. So she's a you know, very good promise. Here is a delivery which is driven firmly back down the track. Gordon gets a right hand to it but can't stop it. And so she'll get a single. So Jamaica at this point, they certainly will be thinking that they're nowhere close to the target that they want. And Absolutely. they'll be looking to, to battle these overs and, and, and put a good score that they could defend later on. It'll be an interesting finish this afternoon. Gordon, two for 23 before this. Bowls the delivery, which is played down to extra cover. And there is no run. So your question as to how many, Jamaica will tell you as many as we can get. <laughs> but certainly in excess of 250. I think that would be, you know, scoreboard pressure as well. That would help. Here is a delivery, which is played into the offside, into the gap between the fielder at point and the fielder at extra cover. Brings cover off the boundary. And uh, so Taylor gets a run, to, and uh, that will move her on now to 52. And Henry, who is in four, comes up to take strike. Gordon has been good for Barbados, two for 24. And for this Please. delivery, it's on the stumps, played down the track on the onside. And again, long on comes off the boundary, they'll get a single. And so the score at the end of that over, 134 for four, 26 overs have been completed. Stephanie Taylor is on 52, and uh, with her is Henry, who is on, on five. What, what has impressed me? Since I've been observing the cricket this morning, is the the players looking quite fit, Carla? They're looking even how you see them moving between the wickets, Stefani and, and now Henry, and previously the other batters, and then even the the feelers, they all look quite fit, and that is 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 some level of improvement as well. Maybe inspired again by the the different improvements taking place off the field. I hope. Um, I know coming into this tournament, all the teams had to go through a battery of tests, fitness tests. Uh, you know, it, it shows that, you know, the system is being professionalized when it comes to, to, to female cricket. 
we know that there's an element of fitness in the men's system already, whether it's the franchise system or international players. So it's good to see us being incorporated in the female um, game as well. Elliot bowls the delivery, which is bringing Henry forward. And it's played out to extra cover. No runs. None for 36. In her sixth over is Elliot. And Henry has just a while ago come to the crease. And she's going back, punching into the offside. There's a fielder coming off the cover boundary, so they'll just have a single. And so she'll move to six, Chanel Henry. And Stephanie Taylor is on 52. She comes in down to take strike. 135 for four. Scoring at a rate of 5.13 runs per over. A fielder comes from the onside and goes down to short third man. And here is a full toss which is played in the air. Knocked down by the fielder on the boundary. Knocked back into play. And so they'll get a second run. And that's Two runs from a no ball. No ball for height above the waist. And the fielder on the boundary did extremely well to knock it back into play because that was headed for six. Yeah, it's a great thing that you know she, she taught well on her feet because she could have tried to catch the ball and gone over in the boundary. And even though she took the catch, it would have been a no ball. Here is Elliot with a free hit, hit in the air, down to the fielder coming off the boundary, down at mid wicket. And uh, so she'll get a single. Taylor takes her up to 55, and it's 139 for four. So Elliot has not had it her way this morning. She's none for 41, and she's only halfway through her sixth over. Bowls now to Henry, and uh, this one is given generous flight, hit in the air. And uh, the field at extra cover was perhaps just a little bit too close. It seemed to reach her on the full, but she wasn't able to hold on to it. And that's the kind of luck that Elliot will want. And it went down to the boundary and four runs to Henry. She moves to 10, 143 for four in the 27th over. Here is Elliot. To bowl to Henry, who's driving firmly back over the head of the bowler. And this one will go down to the fielder who chases across yeah. from long on, and they'll get a single. You know, Carla, there's something special about leg spinners, right? <laughs> that, you know, they, 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 they go for some runs, but it always makes the game interesting. Always. The game is always interesting once a leg spinner is on the ball. Elliot to bowl to Taylor, who is cutting at this one, goes through for the keeper to take. 144 for four at the end of the 27th over. And uh, we can tell you that Henry is on 11. Stephanie Taylor is on 55. Also interesting is, is that the, the run rate, and at the, I know at the international level, she indeed the head coach. He be observing his international players. You know, not only them scoring runs, in the case of Stefani Taylor and the others, but how they score the runs. So it's, it's good to see that Stefani is right up there with the hot strike rate. He'll be absorbing that. He'll be noticed, you know, others are rotating the strike well. And these are the kind of things that they will be talking about, setting standards as, as the international players. Gordon continues from the Lozak Road end, and this one is punched down to the fielder coming off the long off boundary. And they'll get a single. And uh, so. Henry goes on to 11. Stefani Taylor, who is on 55, comes up to take strike. I'll ask you about ticketing and how that process is going for the T20 World Cup. Because our fans will want to know that the, the tickets are secured. Here is Gordon. And Taylor is again playing down to long off. Brings the field off the single. I'm quite off happy. the boundary, just a single. I'm quite happy you asked about that, Carla, because um, I know that majority tickets went on sale online. And in the region, yes, we purchase a lot of items online and we, we have. Gordon to bowl to Henry, who is spanking this one down to the vacant extra cover boundary. The fielder is at cover on the boundary. This one has dropped in short. And she placed it beautifully to pick up four runs, Henry. Well, 
150 has come up for Jamaica. 150 for four. Henry is on 16 from 12. And Gordon, who is two for 31 in her eighth over, continues to bowl from the Lozac Road end. And comes up now to bowl to Henry, who is getting a good delivery, plays it to the fielder at extra cover. She has to make ground to her left, does so nicely, but it allows the opportunity for a single. And so Henry goes on to 17, 56 to Taylor, 151 for four, win over number 28. Yes, and, and so what I was saying, Carl, is though that there's a comfort of shopping online, there's still not really a strong culture of doing our most of our businesses online. Here is Gordon, and Taylor is playing at the delivery, which she drags back onto her pads, then it lobs it away into the offside. Uh, that's a very significant yeah. point. People will buy clothes and goods online and spend vast sums of money, but they don't trust the system to buy tickets, and this is unfortunate. Well, and it's not so much not trusting the system, I'll tell you after this delivery. Here's a delivery which is defended on the onside. But, but and it, it, no it, runs, end of the over. And uh, at the end of it, 151 for 4, 28 gone. So it is more case, Kyle, where to attend events we are last minute people <laughs> correct we, we, we and so we believe we could and the, because the, the the countries the islands are small um in Ghana case country you know where we could just turn up a few minutes before the game and go and get a physical ticket and we are just accustomed to that and we are quite comfortable with that and so that's our culture currently and what we have to do and we have discussed it in fact that was one of the items discussed at the heads of government meeting last week in Guyana at the CARICOM's heads of government meeting where we say that we have to make provision for those cricket fans and lovers who want to go to an office and purchase the ticket and that is going to be put in place we expect that to come on board by the end of March so locals are going to get an opportunity to purchase their tickets um, from, a, from a physical office um, what we still encourage them to do if they want to be extremely safe Delivery, which is given some flight, hit in the air, high, hard, and handsome by Henry, over the head of the fielder down uh, on the long on boundary, and she has brought up a six. That's a that's a beautiful shot. So what we're saying, if, if if fans want to be be safe and 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 get those ideal seats in the stands, they want to actually purchase them online. Um, but if not, if on a on unable to do so, then there's the option of purchasing physically as well. Delivery, played away into the offside, no runs. But I'm, I'm hoping that people in the region will buy their tickets in advance because those traveling supporters have already purchased. Here's a delivery which is well flighted, played away into extra cover. No runs, 157 for four. And you're absolutely right, Carla, in that what we have seen so far, the uptake, the uptake of tickets has been tremendous. You know, there are some games already sold out, and this, right. this, this is not the semi-final and the final yet. So some preliminary games are already sold out in the Caribbean. Here is Elliot, bowls a delivery which is taken on the full by Henry and driven firmly straight down the fielder at long on, moves to her left and collects just beneath our position. She goes on to 24, Henry, and the score is 158 for four. Stefani Taylor is in 56. So what we have is the, the group stage. We have, you know, we still have a number of tickets, but we urge people to purchase, if possible, online. Delivery, which is wide and played down to the fielder coming off the cover boundary. And uh, Taylor will get another run to take on to 57. It's 159 for four. Yes, and we, we want, obviously, to see, especially at those West News games, to see a lot of locals. Here's a delivery, which is bringing the batter forward, and she plays it down again to the fielder coming off the cover boundary. End of the over, 160 for four, 29 overs completed. And, you know, there, there are quite a lot of traveling fans. Uh, we normally see where whenever we host England, for example, the Bami Army, thousands of them come across. Mm -hmm. And you could only imagine what it is going to be like for World Cup. And so the uptake has been pretty good thus far. Um, we, we still have to 
um, put out our hospitality. We have just put out the, uh, the regular tickets so far. But um, within the next, say, I think, four weeks, you're going to see the hospitality um, options are out. And we expect those to go pretty quickly also. And, and it's encouraging for the tournament. It shows the, the level of interest from from our, our fans. And it, I, 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 I mean, it promises at this stage to be a magnificent World Cup event. Um, we, we, we all, we all believe all the persons involved in the planning and execution so far, ICC, CWI, and the government. We believe this is going to be the biggest World Cup ever. And you know, the, the fact it is because it's, it's the most team ever mm -hmm. to be in a cricket World Cup, twenty teams. But in terms of the, the planning, the budget. And everything going into this tournament, it is going to be a wonderful spectacle. And everything so far is on schedule? It is. I think in some cases, a couple of the countries, you have maybe a, a week or two delay with the renovations taking place. But no sort of alarm. There's great confidence that they are going to be done well in advance of the tournament. Um, you know, there's a couple of countries who are upgrading. I mean, all the countries are upgrading their facilities. You know, but to a di different level, um, different degree of improvement. So we have some changing the the lights, some doing major renovation to the players' pavilion, and and all this. The the pitches are being relayed, and I mean it's it's not only exciting for the actual tournament, but for for other 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 um, bilateral series after for original tournaments, both at the the, the senior and the junior level just to be able for our players to be to have that level of exposure on first class training facilities you know so it, it is really a great investment and we are quite appreciative of the governments for coming on board and collaborating in this in this 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 way you know it's, it's something that i think the region is certainly going to benefit from cricket is going to benefit from it um and that is why i'm, I'm quite also I'm happy with the response that we have gotten internationally as well because that tourism component is critical also and to have thousands of visitors to the region over the, the, the few weeks in June, that I think would be remarkable as well. So a, a great opportunity for the entire Caribbean as I said earlier and we are looking forward to executing a wonderful World Cup. Well, thank you very much, President Shallow. Before you leave, I'm going to ask you about the academy because we have seen the introduction of the academy into the regional uh, first-class setup, and I'm sure that you are pleased with some very encouraging signs that we are seeing from them. But we'll get to that as we resume after the break. And uh, Jamaica, 160 for four, 29 overs completed. And uh, here is Gordon, bowling a delivery to Henry. She plays it on the onside, and there is no run. So the academy into the setup, yes. and the A teams making tours again. Interesting to have our A team. I think that this is a uh, very important already. So the academy, which we started for for over two years now, well, we started I think around after, after the pandemic for sure. Gordon bowls to Henry. And she's tugging this one from the inner portion of the bat down to mid-wicket, no runs. Yes, yeah, started 2020 to 2023. And what we thought at the time, and, and still it's showing to be um, quite, quite fruitful, is capturing the under-23 players especially. Here is Gordon, and Henry's getting a wide delivery. Plays it down into the offside. There's a sweeper on the cover boundary, so they'll only have one. And the score will move to 161 for four. We're in the 30th over. Henry is on 26 from 21. Stefani Taylor is on 57 from 65. For, for a number of years, we, we identified a deficiency in our system after you come from under 19 and you have to await your turn to make a national team. It's, it's difficult. Here's a delivery which is bringing Taylor forward. And she plays it back down the track for the bowler to feel on her follow through. And, and so we believe that capturing these players in an academy setting, emerging team, you know, it will, it will help them to improve while they make their territorial team. And we have seen the benefit of that. In fact, you would recall, Carlisle, that when they played that Hedley and Week series, they actually dominated you know, against those professionals who are in the franchise system. And so it, it shows that, you know, the investment in these young cricketers 
um, it's certainly um, a great development um, component for them uh, while they await selection into the West Indies senior teams. Gordon with the last delivery of a ninth over. It's played away into the offside, finds cover coming off the boundary, and so a single. And the Taylor with that single has moved on to 58. Jamaica losing wickets at 10, 24, 40. And uh, the last wicket going down with the score on 123. And so Gordon has now completed nine overs and has picked up two for 34. It will be, it will be a continuation we'll see here from Elliot. And she will be bowling to Stefani Taylor. We have the pleasure of the president of Cricket West Indies, Dr. Shallow. And uh, here is Elliot to bowl to Taylor. Gets a good delivery. She just drops it away on the onside. And very alert running there. Henry called Taylor through very quickly. And they got a single. That's yeah. well run. Yeah. And Carol, you know, so we have the, 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 the male, young males, and we have the young female. At any point you travel to Antigua at the Coolidge Cricket Ground now, you will see one of our young teams in training. Sometimes both at the same time. And that is fantastic. We have a lot of plan for that facility as well. Here is a delivery which is played in the air, but bouncing going down to the fielder coming off the long on boundary. Yeah. And uh, so that single will take Taylor now onto, it's in fact uh, Henry onto 27, 164 for four. The intention is to transform the CCG into a high performance center that could facilitate all our development players. Here's Elliot bowling a delivery which is swept firmly and beautifully down to backward square for four by Stefani Taylor. And uh, so. There's also no ball. No ball signaled as well, so that's four runs to well. Stefani Taylor. She goes on to 63. A free hit being signaled. So Stefani Taylor is on 63. Jamaica 169 for four, win the 31st over. And so Elliot, none for 62. She's in her eighth over. Here is Elliot with the free hit delivery. And this one is swung down to the fielder coming off the mid-wicket boundary. They'll have a single. She'll move to 64 Taylor from 70 deliveries. And it's 170 for four. Halfway through the over. And Elliot is bowling now from the media center end. And goes up to bowl to Henry, who is playing this one into the offside. And a little bit of a misfield there by the fielder at extra cover on the circle. And so it allows Henry to get another run. She moves to 28. And it's now 171 for the loss of four. Stefani Taylor, who is on 64, comes back into strike. And has Elliot to bowl to her. And for this delivery shot, played into the offside. And Taylor will feel she has missed out there. Again, one, two, uh. 170 for four. 171 for four, actually. Here is Elliot to bowl to Stefani Taylor. And for this delivery, it's given generous flight and played down to the fielder coming off the long off boundary. They'll get a single. And so Stefani Taylor at the end of the over keeps strike. And she's on 64, 171 for four. Yeah, yeah. So you were telling me about the good things happening at the Coolidge Cricket Center. Yes, yes. Um, it's it's, it's a, another great opportunity for West Indies Cricket. Um, again, the intention is to build out that facility into a high performance center, which we expect um, once complete. Would, you know, it, it is certainly going to help us develop and foster the development of, of those upcoming cricketers. Um, so exciting times all around for West Indies cricket, Carlisle. Um, we, we, 
this is by no means an effort of one or two individuals but it has been a collaborative effort you know by all our shareholders our stakeholders including governments some um, directors on territorial boards um players you know all other agencies like weeper and we you know and, and so we just have to keep working together and i think that with those efforts we are going to achieve you know a tremendous amount of, of success um consistently over the next few years jamaica 172 for four we in over number 32 and it's the final over for gordon who is bringing the batter forward and taylor plays it down to mid wicket when last i peeped on my computer checking the score over in st paul's guyana was 67 for five i figure that that is a score which needs to be updated here is gordon and bowls a short delivery played down to the fielder coming off the long on boundary they'll get a single and so taylor will move on to 66 unless there's rain there which is will be shocking with the sky that we are seeing here <laughs> so yeah i i know they're monitoring from next door so troy mills will step next door and peep on the on the screen that is playing the leewards game and give us an updated score as the delivery is played into the offside gordon has been good for barbados she has picked up two for 35 and two deliveries left in a spell and so she has been one of the bright spots so her pick up a, a five for here last year she comes up to bowl now to taylor who is punching to the fielder down at mid off and there is no run partnership between these two is 50. it's 173 for four one ball left in the 32nd over as Gordon comes up to bowl to Stefani Taylor and she's turning it to the onside. Can't score. End of a good spell by Alison Gordon. Two for 35. And so I'll tell you that in the game Leewards against Guyana, it's 125 for seven. Mm -hmm. And the Leewards before this have not won a game. They're still searching for their first win. But they had a very intensive, productive camp in Nevis. They played two warm-up games against the three warm-up games against the Winwards, and uh, they were able to win the T20 game that was played here at Warner Park in St Kitts. And uh, they lost the two 35-over games. But they have come into this tournament better prepared. And that's great for the tournament. And you have all six teams being competitive. That's exactly what you want. And we, we, we suspect that that is going to um, produce, help us produce better international cricketers, which we are all hoping to get out of this tournament and, and also the T20 tournament at the back end of March. Elliot, none for 65. Balls a delivery which is short and pull down, challenging run for the fielder, diving away down that forward of square. It beats her into the boundary for four. But another short delivery by Elliot. And uh, Stefani Taylor will not miss those. Uh, so she has picked up another four. She goes on to 70. It's 177 for four. We're in over number 33. And Taylor has looked good. She showed the initial sort in leading from the front as a senior player in the tournament. Here is a delivery which is given good flight. Angled away down to short third man. And Henry was immediately saying no. 177 for four in over number 33 elliot the bowler from the media center end none for 69 in a ninth over here is she given giving this one good flight played away into the onside mid wicket comes off the boundary and so taylor will get her 71st run 178 for four i'm really happy to see how taylor is going you know not too long ago she had a, what was a, a career threatening injury and to see her back in the park looking fit as ever, batting, you know, in, in, in as classy as ever as well. That is really encouraging. I'm, I'm really excited for her and hoping, you know, she could be playing for us for another few years. At the International Henry level. bowls a delivery which is short and cut away into the offside. Cover comes off the boundary. They'll get a single. She'll move to 29 and Jamaica winning the toss and batting a 179 for four. 
win the 33rd over. Elliot, two deliveries left in her ninth over. Bowling from the media center end, and this delivery is driven nicely into the offside. That's well placed. Beautiful shot by Taylor. They'll only get a couple of runs, and it goes down close to the extra cover boundary. But well, that's delightfully played by Stefani Taylor. She gets another two, 173, 181 for four, beg your pardon. Stefani Taylor is in 73. Elliot bowls from over the wicket, and this one is short, pulled into the onside. There's a fielder coming from the backward square position, knocks it down for mid wicket, who ran to give her assistance to collect. And so it's the end of the over. And with those two runs, the score moves on to 183 for four, 17 overs left. We say thank you very much to President Shallow, who was able to give us some very useful information this morning, updated us on the T20 World Cup, which is coming up, plus the 40 regional tournament. We know he's a very busy man, so we are thankful that he was able to spend so much time with us. I'm sure you're going to take a peep at the other games as well. I am. Thanks thank a lot. Thank you very God much, God. President Shallow. All right. Take care. All the best. So it's 183 for four. Last week it fell with the score on 123. And so Troy Biff Mills comes back into his position. And I'm sure that he is very much a sponge like fellow Troy. You would have soaked up all of that information. And uh, we see a change in bowling. Shamika Connell comes back from the far end. And for this delivery, it's short, played into the offside. They'll get a single. And uh, so Henry seems to have a little bit of an injury. She seems to be limping a little bit there. But she has picked up her 30th run. And Jamaica, 184 for four. Connell, in her five overs before this, none for 13. And so she has, she has accounted for herself well in terms of a bowling. No wickets yet, but she has not been conceding runs. There'll always be the argument, Carla, what is the better bowling? Bowling tight or picking up wickets? Wickets are important. Helps to slow the, the batting down, but if you can bowl your 10 overs for 10 runs, I'll also take that. <laughs> Here is Connell to bowl to Taylor, gets a short delivery, and uh, toe ends it down to mid-wicket. And she'll get a single to take on to 76, 185 for four. And so Jamaica recovered nicely. Remember that they lost three wickets early, and then they had two important partnerships. 10 for one, 24 for two, 40 for three, 123 for four. Delivery, which is trying to play into the offside, and uh, the keeper goes up in an appeal. The umpire says not out, and uh, the keeper is there. Seems to be a little bit frustrated, perhaps. Troy, as an umpire, you, the players have to learn that nowadays you have match referees. Exactly. And even when you think that uh, something has gone against you, you have to pull yourself together very quickly and don't lose money. I indeed. Here is Connell to bowl a delivery which is played away into the offside to the left of the fielder at backward point who dives and knocks it down well. But they won't be able to prevent a single. And so the score will move to 186 for four in the 34th over. Henry is on 31. A couple of things I'll put to you. In just a little bit, um, Troy, as an umpire. So I want you to pull out your umpire's hat, knowing that I'll be asking you some umpiring questions. Right. Here's the delivery play that went to the offside. And the first of the questions, Troy, I do a little bit of umpiring myself. Mm -hmm. I passed the exam in 1990 and went into management <laughs> instead. <laughs> Sun was less hot. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> So I'll ask you a couple of questions from this game. Here is Shamika Connell. 
And the ball is delivered to Taylor, which is played away into the offside. They'll get a single. And uh, now they'll get an extra because the ball was thrown errantly and went past the keeper and into the onside. And uh, so another run. And in tennis, you call those unforced errors. <laughs> and so at the end of the over, 188 for four. And uh, Stefani Taylor is in 78. Henry is on 31. And we have completed 34 overs. But the first of the questions to you. The appeal which was turned down earlier in the game. The, catch the ball rested in the hands of the keeper. Mm -hmm. And perhaps in frustration, see, threw it away. Doesn't the ball become dead when it rests in the hands of the keeper? Should those have been two runs credited to the score? She was not let, looking for a run out. Let me start this way. If the bowler bowls the ball and it goes through to the keeper, and if you're off your crease, the bowler then try. though the ball is rested in the keeper's gloves, you're off your crease, he or she, in this case, she will try to run you out. In this instance, so the she ball was is not, not looking dead. for a run out. Mm. That's a very interesting question. But that, and the, the good thing about it, um, the umpire's coach for the West Indies, Cricket Umpires Association, Peter Nero, test umpire from Trinidad and Tobago, he is here with us in, at Warner Park. Bruce is back into the attack, and this one is driven down to long on. And uh, she comes off the boundary. And so it will be a single to Henry to take on to 32, 189 for four. And so we'll explore that with umpire Nero. Because as, as an amateur umpire myself, I just thought when the event happened that the ball had become rested in the gloves of the keeper. She was not looking for a run out. So... I was wondering whether or not those runs should have been credited. But we'll ask umpire Nero. There was an appeal. There was an appeal. And the appeal was, the, was not upheld. Exactly. And it was sometime after that that the ball was thrown. Based not looking for a run out. Based on that, I, would believe, I believe that it should have been a dead ball after that point. The umpires considered that though there was appeal, the ball was still live during an appeal. I just stayed in the That's back and question. made the observation. Here is Bruce bowling a delivery which is wide of the off stump. When I say wide, just a little bit wide <laughs> of the batter, not, not wide, wide enough to be called. And it went through for the keeper to take no runs. 189 for four. Jamaica will bring up a bonus batting point when they get to 200, if they get there. Here is Bruce to bowl a delivery to Taylor, played into the offside, down to long off, and they'll get a single. 190 for the loss of four. Taylor moves on to 79. And the second question that I'll ask you, we had an appeal for a catch, and the ball was played to the left of the fielder at mid-wicket which is to the far left of the umpire at square leg, should have been within sight of the presiding umpire. But yet still, she consulted the umpire at square leg, who ought not to have had a good, as good a view as the presiding umpire. And then when she came back to the stumps, it was not out. I, I'm just a little bit curious about that. And I like to be educated, so I ask a senior umpire. The umpire with the, the better view, obviously, whether you're presiding or not, will be the one to give an indication. And in this instance, it was the presiding, presiding umpire. umpire. Well, so was there we, a need to consult Square Leg? Maybe it depends on the, the angle. I'm not certain. We, you did mention that. It would be to nice if left. you want to see the, rep, the replay. <laughs> <laughs> Again, because the trajectory is important. And I know in football, when the proximity is not, angle is very important. And... Uh, who may have had the better angle because remember the player was diving for diving forward uh, to the left so the that's a very good point and unfortunately there wasn't the review system but it is suggesting this the standing presiding umpire should have had that call Connell in a seventh over play uh, bowls delivery which is played down to extra cover 
and they won't score. She has been very good, very economical, none for 18 before this. And uh, she has completed six overs. Jamaica, 191 for four. Remember, they were 40 for, for three, 123 for four. Here's a delivery down the leg si side, called wide. And the score will move on to 192 for four. Chanel Henry is on 33. She's on strike. Stephanie Taylor is on 79. Here is Connell. Bowling now to Henry. Who plays it down to mid-wicket and chases away very quickly for a single. That's well run. Very much indeed and... Taylor was at the wicket when we had that one out. And as Shakira would have indicated, Taylor, she's a very spicy player. She's always looking to turn a dot ball into a single. 193 for four. Connell is bowling from the Lozak Road end. And she's bowling to Stefani Taylor, who is on 79 from her 87 deliveries. And she's swinging this one into the onside over the head of the fielder at a short fine leg and down across the boundary for four. Just drifted slightly in length uh, and it was helped on its way by Stephanie Taylor. She moves to 83. Jamaica, 197 for four within three runs of a, a first batting uh, bonus point. Connell has been good outside the off stump or on the line of the off stump. She, whenever she has drifted towards leg, she has given up a few. Here is Connell once more. And again, it's short. And this time, Taylor misses out because she tucks it directly to the fielder at short fine leg. And so she remains an 83 from 88. Stefani Taylor, 197 for four. Win over number 36. Connell, none for 24. In her seventh over. Last wicket fell with the score on 123. Connell from the Lozak Road end, and she's playing this one into the offside. This Taylor calls for the single and gets it too. She moves to 84, 198 for four. A very good comeback by the Jamaicans 10 for one, 24 for two, 40 for three. And we had an 83-1 partnership, taking them to 123 for four. And they're now bordering with 200. Slow delivery, and she plays around it, uh, does Henry. But this one was drifting down the leg side, umpire signals the leg by, 199 for four. Uh, the completion of over number 36. And uh, so Henry yeah. is on 34, and Taylor is on 84. And remember the last time these two teams met, Jamaica were only able to get to 113. It's now 199 for four, Jamaica. They won the toss and quickly said, we'll have a bat. And uh, they have batted, they have recovered well, 10 for one, 24 for two, 40 for three. 123 for four, and it's now 199 for four. So 76 runs between these two, and that's following a partnership which was 83. And so the partnerships for wickets number four and five have been good, Troy. And as we were saying, that is where the experience of the players, both, well, the players come in. A uh, sorry, it was not Nation. Nation would have gone a little earlier. It would have been McLean. I think it was. Bruce is bowling from the media center end. It's pit. Played him to mid-wicket. And there are no runs. So we've just seen the one spinner so far, Troy. Surprise you? Somewhat, Yes. And she has had not had quite a, a, re a really good run. Problems with no balls. Bruce bowls the delivery down the leg side. It's called and signaled wide. And uh, the keeper does very well to take it. Uh, brings up the 200 for J Jamaica. 
And the bonus and point? One bonus point, and in another 20 runs, they'll get another bonus point. So Bruce, from the media center end, bowls to Henry, who is defending. And there is no run. None for 18 from three, Bruce. Stephanie Taylor is on 84. She's a non-striker. The striker is Chanel Henry, who is on 34. And here is Bruce to bowl to Henry once more. Short and punch into the offside. There is protection coming off the cover boundary. And so they'll just have a single. And uh, so the Jamaican score will roll over to 201. A very good fight back, winning the toss and the batting. And at 43 for three, no doubt the skipper would have been wondering had they made the right choice. Bruce bowls to Taylor. And this one is a pitch down the leg side, comes from the pad, rolls close to the boundary down at fine leg. They get two. And uh, the umpire now turns and signals leg buys. And so... Two more runs to Jamaica. And they really want to start turning on the pressure. Yes, some 12 point. Twelve plus overs to go. Bruce is bowling to Taylor. Again, it's pitched down the leg side. Again, it's called wide. Lovely take as well. Great take. The keeper has beautiful hands. Yes. Moves early, moves well. And she has very good hands. Quick eyes, quick feet. Quick interpretation by the brain. Effective. A quick take. Lovely. Bruce once more. And for this delivery, bringing the batter forward. Taylor can't score. And so Jamaica have rebounded well. This is with some very good partnerships. And there's still a slight st stiffish breeze blowing from east to west. Bruce bowls delivery which is played into the offside to extra cover and uh, there is no run. And the umpires are checking to determine if it's the end of the over. There were two wides in the over. And being comfortable that only five legitimate balls have been bowled to Carlisle. Bruce bowls to Taylor. And she's again called wide. That's three in the over so far, all down the leg side. And that's a little bit naughty there by Bruce. Indeed. But the Jamaicans, they won't argue. They'll take the ones however they may come. So here is Bruce trying to complete the over. And for this delivery, it's short and played away into the offside. Finds the fielder coming off the boundary. And so it's now the end of the over. And so Bruce, three wides in the over. The question is, would that last ball have been a wide? So do you take the single or do you play the wide and get the extra ball? I take the wide, I get an extra ball, and you frustrate the bowler a little exactly, bit Exactly, and that extra ball could be a four. Absolutely. In this case, it was one to bring up the end of the over. 206 it is. For four.
and it is, is it Elliot being brought back from the Los and there's a loud of appeal, first ball success, caught behind, a little bit of bubbling by the keeper, but again, they'll take the wicket no matter how. It was not the best delivery either. It was a delivery which was, as we look at it on the replay once again, pitch outside the leg stump, and if she had left it alone, that would have been called and signaled wide. But she swept at it, came from the back of the bat, up in the air, caught by uh, the keeper. And so Stephanie Taylor has to go. And she was within sight of 100. Fifth wicket goes down for Jamaica. And very disappointing, pointed, rightfully should be Taylor. One, the way she got out from that type of ball. And we just men mentioned the ball before leaving the wide. And two... She would have wanted to really carry on her Jamaican tote a little, little further. And she, of course, get, get the 100. Not in that order necessarily, but she should still be proud. She would have brought her team from a very, very tough position. She would have been there when there was the run out at 40 for three. And uh, Jamaica Barbados will be smiling. A little bit of luck going for them. A little late in the evening. Picking up their, their fifth wicket. And the keeper, Captain Casey Knight. A fortress wicket, I will say. But a wicket is a wicket nonetheless. She will be happy. No one will complain. And it's 206 for 5 by our recollection here. And that one, Carlyle, going through this new battle pulling. They'll get to it, comes down to the third man boundary. That'll be two buys. And Elliot, she hasn't had total control since she has started bowling. Drifting wide, full tosses, a few no balls, and that one again, perhaps. A very full ball and Henry seems to be limping and the Jamaican and it is a no ball for the high ball and they pick up a single and it's also a free hit oh pardon me it's, it's a leg a free hit but it is a leg by one leg by off the no ball a free hit above waist height it's gonna be Elliot again So it's 209 for the loss of five. Jamaica, after winning the toss and batting, Elliot from the Lozak Road end and getting on the back foot and Henry and she punches that one through the covers, four runs, and she doesn't even bother to run. Such was the power in that shot. Lovely four runs. That takes her... Up to 39, is it, from 40 deliveries? Match referee, everybody. And she retains the strike. Four out already, Sags. And uh, Tequila. the voice of Kesia Knight indicating they are already four out for this power play. And here's Henry. She's lofting, missing out on that one. It just bubbles into a silly point position. The keeper runs behind the stump. And Henry perhaps mad with herself for not getting greater contact onto that one. And Elliot, is that going to be a no ball again? And it's played high, hard. And it does go over the boundary for six. And it is six runs being signaled, and again a no ball. High pitch above the waist. And Henry. A four and the six last balls, and here she is. Pulling that one, one bounce down into the mid on region. She only gets a single. 
some fast here, sorry. And uh, I think I did more for straightening the market as a change in the field. And Elliot again. A little flat at that one, also popping up on white, Selena White, the new batter. And it brings up the end of the over. Troy, we're, we're still having some challenges with the scoring. And uh, so we apologize for not being able to give you the updated scores from our monitor because they're still trying to make some corrections, tell us what's happening, and we hope that that will be sorted out very soon. Big scoreboard away at Square Leg is, is saying that the score is 218. What we can tell you in that over the, the first ball was a wicket. We had a two buys, one no ball, four, a six no ball, and a one. And it's now going to be Bruce again to continue from the media center end. And here is Henry going eerily. And the fielder here at the mid on, the long off, long on boundary, running across to her life, left, making a diving effort. Was close, but not close enough. A little late. And one ball into the boundary for four. Another boundary for Henry. And again, we apologize for not being able to bring this score. Scoreboard is now telling us 223 for five. And that brings up Henry's 50 according to the scoreboard. And here she is pulling back with a square, getting another four. And Henry in nick of form, looking good, looking confident. And I dare say she's limping. So obviously the Barbados team will be having a little bit of concern. And Chanel Henry, she's 54, now from 45 balls. And Abigail Bryce, actually, she's yet to score. And it's going to be Price again, defending that one nicely into the onside. Eight runs from three balls. She'll be very comfortable with that. She wouldn't want to do anything rash at the moment. Under no pressure, so to speak. Eight runs per over on any day. A very good one rate. Turning that one into the onside. The mid wicket, a little slow, a little late in getting to her right to stop that. And a single to Henry. She goes up to 55 from 47 balls, 228 for five. And we, we, uh, we're now seeing the score back on our monitor, 228 for five. So I'll step next to one, find out what score was made by Stephanie Taylor. Projected score being 295, current run rate of 5.9. And it's going to be Bryce into bowl to. Sorry, that's Bruce into bowl to Bryce. 102 by Stephanie Taylor. Unfortunately, our scorers didn't have this information for us. And so we couldn't call it. And Bruce into Bryce. Down the leg side, wide, nicely taken again by the keeper. Signal, call and signal wide by the umpire. And Kesey Knight, she's looking very quick and nimble. And very good down the leg side. There's a short turn, man, a backward point. And guiding that one into the onside. Picking up one 
on another day that may have been two but Henry she is basically limping so maybe carry she's carrying an injury of some sort what we're not certain was she 100% fit that probably could have been two the ball went very slowly and here she is going airily, airily again which he had enough to kill it the boundary no and it is dropped that should have been a Sita Carlisle dropped, picking up one in the process. And then the Barbados furious with themselves. Yeah, that one went to hand. And uh, you expect those catches to be taken. She was off balance and found herself wrong footed. And so she floated it and missed an opportunity there. 231 for five, scoring at 5.9, two and over. And. Uh, Bruce, none for 35 from her five. You're seeing a projected score of, of 290 odd? 296. Abigail, she's one from Abigail Price. She's one from three. And Chanel Henry, 56 from 48. And it will be Henry facing Najani Cumberbatch. She has bowled two overs, 21 runs. And this is a wide force ball. She, as we say colloquially, she hasn't touched the pad as yet, meaning she hasn't picked up a wicket. Out and that one bouncing twice. Did it yes been signal on the ball now? Bouncing twice before it got to the bowler, to the batter. And so Cumberbatch not getting it right. A white first ball. A no ball, second ball. Third ball going airily Chanel. Is it gonna be caught? How? The fielder there at the deep would make it boundary, preferring it to bounce and come to her as opposed to chasing and perhaps making a catch of it. Free hit. It's, and it's, oh yes, forgive me, I forgot it's a free hit, Carlisle. That's why she preferred to save the four. So no harm done to, to the batter, 234 it is for five. And here is Bryce getting back, pulling it to the mid-wicket. She'll only get one. And the Jamaicans score ambles on to 235 for five after 39.2. Winning the toss and batting, a current run rate of 5.97 runs. And here is Henry getting back, pulling that one again through the mid deep mid wicket, and there's a misfield Carlisle four runs. Yep. What should have been one turned into four? Howell. Howell, the fielder. And the, Jama the Barbados perhaps losing concentration, perhaps thinking about long lunch, <laughs> having a drop catch the over before, and now giving away three runs. They will have to tighten up because it's very easy for this Jamaican score to push towards 250 to 300. And playing that one through the mid-off region who runs around picks up doesn't prevent the two runs and abigail price she goes to four chanel henry on 63 from 52 balls he scored 241 for five Outside the Austin, going to that one is Henry, playing it square. The amble through for a single. And the Henry definitely in some discomfort as, as she bends over on her back, or her bat. The score ambles on 242 for five. And here is Bryce going airily. Will she be out caught? The fielder coming in deep. Mid wicket and she takes the catch. And we have seen the six wicket for the Jamaicans going down. Mm -hmm. 
Bryce trying to clear the field, not in control of the shot, Carlisle. She got under it, but she hit it up. And uh, she hit it high, but not long. And so the sixth wicket has gone down. It's 242 for six, 40 overs completed. Uh, they have picked up the second bonus um, point. And uh, we, we're still, we're seeing from the West Indies official site that Stephanie Taylor made 102. And so we, that is how we are calling it. The scorers are going to have their work to do. During, um, lunch, during yes. the lunch and hour to sort all of that out. But we would want them to make sure that we are really professional today because we call what we see on the screen. At the end of 40 overs, 242 for six. It's now Waysom. Naisha Waysom, she's in to join Chanel Henry, who is on 64 from 53 balls. And flicking on that one off the pads. Backward down to the fine leg region. Picking up one Henry. Where some thinking about a second, but Henry not really interested. Elia Alin. Being brought back into the tap from the media center end. Back down the track is where some playing it. Yet to get off the mark, having faced just the one ball. Her partner, Chanel Henry. She has played a lovely inning so far, 65 from 54 balls. And there's a load of appeal umpire not interested. The ball bubbles down towards the boundary, and it crosses the boundary. Actually struck on the pad, was waysome. Actually got, she got a... And they jumped to that, Carlyle. No signal means that it's, it touched the bat. Yes. Ah, the umpire is signaling chain now, signaling leg buys. Mm. So she's yet to get off the mark, is waysome. And the Jamaican scored 247 for six after 40.3 overs. This is a 50 over affair. And it's Ali once more. Shot outside the off stump. Flashing and that at that is way some not connecting. Missing out on it. Perhaps she's thinking she should have had at least two between the backward point and the short third man in place. But not connecting. She looks up and she sees Aline is on her way again. Coming forward, guiding one, that one. Some may say off the outer edge, down to the short third man. No harm done. And again, play, not moving the feet, rehearsing the shot after, which would have probably been the better thing to do. 247 for six, nine overs to go. 
and we are seeing a projected score here in excess of 300. Um, but six wickets are down and uh, Chanel Henry who is in 65 doesn't appear to be a hundred percent mobile. Exactly. So is it a case that she's going to play for the boundaries which she has been doing a very good job at? We've seen her running some ones and a, a two here and there sparingly. She wouldn't want to force the injury, aggravate it, and cause her to be out for any, any period. In the old days, she, she would have had a runner. Exactly, in the old days. And cricket, the laws of cricket have been changing throughout. And that one, is it going to be... No ball? Yes. Yes. And Elliot. Now that's Cumberbatch. A full pitched above the waist. And here is Henry going aerially again. And that one, one bounce into the boundary. Six runs. Six actually. And we figured she, two things, she'll want to get on with it and not being 100% fit. It was a half tracker though. A exactly. Short ball. That one flat and fast. She goes eerily back over the bowler's head. And another six again. Skipper Key see a knight behind Stumps. Not too happy with that. And she runs down to have a quiet word with Cumberbatch. They could ill afford giving away these runs coming on to the end of the inning. She played it well. She it did. It was another short ball turning into her slightly. She went back, gave herself some room and hit it straight. It's a tough shot. Two sixty for six. And uh, we're in the forty second over. And Jamaica really coming back well into this game at 1.40 for three. Here's Cumberbatch outside the off stump. Getting back is Henry. Punches that four. one through the extra cover. Four runs. So she has gone 6-6-4 six, six, in the over so far. Very effortless. Very expensive over. 15 runs coming from it. The first delivery being a no ball. A six, six, and a four. And that propels Henry onto 81. No doubt she'll be thinking about a century here. She has the time. Comes forward. She won't be pulled into any indiscretion. 15 runs from any over on any day. That's very good scoring. 17 in this one so far. And here she's going aerial again, just wide of the field down there in the long on, on the long on boundary, and she picks up four runs. And uh, Cumberbatch not having a very good time. Three point five overs, fifty three runs coming off of her. She has picked up a wicket. And playing that one down the track is Henry. They amble through for a single. It brings up the end of the over. 269 for six. Wickets going at 10, 24, 40, 123. And the fifth wicket went on what score, Troy? 206. 206. And then 242 for six. It's now 269 for six. 42 overs have been completed. And uh, this is definitely a much superior batting performance to what we saw from Jamaica the last time they played here. And it's going to be Aline to continue from the media center end. Bowling to weigh some. She plays it back down the track. Having faced some six balls now, she's yet to get off the mark. 
and she won't mind. With Henry punching the ball all over the park, fours and sixes, she doesn't mind playing a spectator, keeping that end tight. Here's some rehearsing the shot. That one coming off the inner edge onto the pad. She isn't any, any, any rush to get off the mark. But she probably should be looking a single to get Henry on strike. Henry is 86 from 63 and has batted well. She has a, a bit of an injury, but she has batted well. Having heard you, she plucks that one down to the long, on, long off region. She picks up a single. She gets off the mark. Henry now comes in to strike. Henry on 87 from 64. Would she get to the century? In this over. And here she is playing that one square. Into the backward point, not picking up a single. She realizes they have 7.2 overs left. 44 deliveries. Forward defensive. Not getting a single day again. Is way some. Two seventy for six. Would they get to three hundred, Carlisle, Jamaica? Forward defensive is way some. Just the one run in that over. At the end of over number 43, 270 for six. It's a good score. Of course, they'll, they'll want to get a few more on that. Arlene uh, has picked up one for 20 from her seven overs. And so in the midst of what has been some um, chaos for some of the bowlers, she has bowled really well. Definitely. Connell has had a 7 for 29, 7 overs. 5 out, 5 out. Sags. Alison, 2 for 35 from her 10 overs. Alison Garden. And it's Shanika Bruce. Down the leg side and turning it around the corner is Henry picking up four runs. Bad delivery um, was on the legs and so she just needed to help it around way outside the leg stump and she helped it around smartly and uh, picked up and picked up uh, a good looking four runs. Partnership is on 32. And uh, basically, <laughs> one of the batters has scored most of the <laughs> runs. 32 from 30 balls. And here is Henry playing it square. Not as square as she would have liked. It goes to the feeler sweeping on the covers. Top of boundary picks up a single. 275 for six it is. Henry, she goes on to 92. Right. Reesom comes forward, hit them, hit them, plays hit them, hit them. it. Soft hands into the onside. She picks up a single. And more importantly, she gives the strike to Henry. 92 is Henry from 56, 66 balls.
and that's going to be a wide down the leg side. Henry, she looks up, realizes the field is ready. And it's boost from the loser code end. One. Standing straight, pushing it back down the onside for a single is Henry. Two seventy eight for six, Jamaica, Henry, ninety three from sixty seven. No ball, and the batsman they sprint through for a single. And Henry was the one calling for that. It's going to be a free hit. Henry, she knows she's close to a ton. And loving that one, loving at that one is Henry. Missing lock, stock, and barrel. It goes to for four leg by four buys, pardon me. Trying to heave that straight over the bowler's head, missing that completely. Beating the keeper. Going all the way down to the boundary. Just below us here at the media center end. Four buys. The partnership is now worth 51 from 25 from 35 balls. And she's bowled all over the place. Is Henry very disappointingly she walks back to the pavilion looking for the 100, not being able to go get there. Carlisle a very disappointing in the end. Slow delivery. Right up there, York length, and she played right over it. And uh, so she comes back for 93, but 93 well played runs. Jamaica 293 for 7. 44 was completed. And uh, well in sight of that 300 score. Chanel Henry, 93 from 67 balls. And she was looking very comfortable indeed, not under any pressure, but perhaps losing a bit of concentration, notwithstanding it was a very good ball from Bruce. We are now going to see the commencement of the 45th over, and the projected score has jumped up to 334. And it's now Bruce with some playing inside all around that. Ball goes to the keeper. As I welcome Miss Shakira Selman back into join me and a single. Is way some. She goes up to two from her eleven balls. Three actually. And it brings Nicole Campbell into strike, who's taking a middle guard. Three thirty four. The projected score set for the Jamaicans and there's a loud appeal one ball LBW a beautiful delivery by Aline yeah she's both very good areas all day earlier Aline and again asking questions targeting distance and this one crashes into the front pad of Nicole Campbell 
and she goes LBW without troubling the scores. It's a a lovely golden it. duck. Jamaica now 285 for 8. So Barbados have a chance of bowling the Jamaican side out. It is a mammoth total already. But perhaps Barbados could gain some momentum before going into the break should they dismiss the Jamaica girls. And they would really like to do that. And uh, Jamaica, 10 for 1, 24 for 2, 40 for 3. Wondering if they had made the right choice to bat for us. But then they recovered 123 for 4, 206 for 5, 246 for 6, 293 for 7. And now they're 285 for, forgive me, 285 for 8. And it's now Vanessa Watts who will join Waysom. Waysom 3 from 12. 285 for, for 8. The projected score 320. But of course, the Barbadians would have other ideas about that. And it's a dead ball. Perhaps missing her run up. Yeah, Barbados would be very disappointed if the Jamaica side is able to get up past 300. And I say that because you can see the other batters aren't necessarily able to score at the same rate that Chanel Henry and Stephanie Taylor were able to score at. Coming forward, taking the inner edge, they went through for a single. And Aline, she looks very comfortable. Running up a beautiful ball that would have gotten Nicole. Yeah, all day Ali Allen has been able to just get majority of her deliveries to shape back into the right handers. Of course, there are no left handers in this lineup for Jamaica. She's been able to target those paths. You can see she has miserly figures of two for 22, almost completing her eighth over. Coming forward is Waysom. They'll have to try and sneak some singles here and there. Of course, they don't have to play anything rash. 286, a decent score by any means. They love to get to 300. Barbados, on the other hand, they will have completely different ideas. And driving is Waysom to the short cover position sent back and uh, it's the end of the over 286 for 8 the Jamaicans after being in some trouble earlier and recovering quite nicely yeah and that's an over from Aliyah Ali just two runs and a wicket from the 45th over it's a very good bowling by Ali unfortunately she hasn't gotten the support from too many of the other bowlers. Alison Gardner completed her quota, 10 overs, 2 for 33. She was good as well. Shamelia Connell back into the attack. She's been very good. Also, she hasn't gotten, gotten the wickets yet. But she's been excellent. So that is Shamelia Connell who's coming back. She has had 27 overs, 25 runs. And the trying to loft that one out of the park is Vanessa Watts. Not making contact. Coming off the inside edge going down to a short fine leg. No run. Yeah, quite a brave decision by Connell to have long off out of the circle and long on mid on in and as I say that they're about to change it. We tend to think tail enders are more likely to hit you over long on than long mm -hmm. off. And there's an appeal for LBW. That one perhaps 
dropping a little outside the, the leg stump. Answered in the negative by umpire Labard. Projected score rate dropping to 316. And here she's going lofting again. Is what? Stepping wide of her crease. And that ball goes between her and the stumps. Yeah, very good bowling by Shamilia Connell. Yorker length on two occasions. And she isn't giving her the room to free her arms. That's exactly what Vanessa Watts is waiting for. And it's calling a girl from the Lozak Wood end. And she's bowled all over the place. Is what's trying to get things on. Stepping down the track and trying to knock her out of the park, perhaps. Yeah, and it seems to be that leg cutter from Connell. A slower delivery. Totally out for St. Vanessa Watts, who goes for the wall cross hole across the lane. She isn't able to make contact. And her stumps go flying. So it is the first wicket for Shamelia Connell. A well-deserved wicket, we can say as well. Vanessa Watts has to go 286 for 9 now, Jamaica. And she deserved that. She has been bowling well all day. 7.4 overs, 25 runs, and just picking up her first wicket. She has really been containing things. She's been excellent with the ball. She's led from the front. Shamilia Connell, that opening burst was really good. She bowled five overs in that opening spell. She's bowled, this is her third spell of the inning so far. I think, though, Barbados will be disappointed if they dismiss Jamaica and Connell does not bowl her full quarter. And she's now into the new battle, comes forward, pushes it into the cover region, picks up a single. is Wilmot. Yeah, okay, one Wilmot known for her bowling. But she's defending that one pretty nicely and she's able to get all straight immediately. Very good form indeed. Standing straight up is where some pushes it out into the cover. Not interested in a single. Chanel Henry, 93 from 69 balls. Stephanie Stefani Taylor, 85 from 94. And it's the end of the over, 287 for 9. Over number 46. Lovely sunshine here in Warner Park, at Warner Park. The breeze continues to blow stiffish from the east to the west. From the bird rock section down to the sandy point section. And it's going to be Aline to continue. And she will be bowling to... What? To Wilmot. So Aline into her ninth over, two for 22 so far. And she'll be hoping that she can clean the Jamaican tail up here. So one wicket remaining. A tail end the shot, allowing that one to go to the keeper. <laughs> just after we just <laughs> spoke about the way she defended the first ball. I indeed. And there are times you rely on the tail enders to actually pull you to whether to save a draw, a squeeze a few runs to get a, a victory. Two feet together, punching at that one outside the off stump, not making contact. Yeah, of course, us tail enders have big parts <laughs> to play. You know how often the batters, or at least the top part of batters, fall apart, and then they're depending on us tail enders. <laughs> exactly. Jamaica will just be hoping she can get back on ball and rotate the straight at the very least. She did get back onto that ball at that time, punching it down to 
the mid-off region, but not able to pick up a single. So that's three dot balls in the over so far. And at this stage, Jamaica definitely wouldn't really prefer maiden overs. And she goes slashing outside the, the off stump, plays it over extra cover. They run one, they're coming back for two. Quite comfortably in the end. Yeah, nowhere near where Kate Wilmot wanted to hit that one. It seemed to be aiming through the leg side. Ended up hitting it over the field at extra cover. But two runs nonetheless, and she'll be happy for that. Finally, some runs in this over. Exactly. Aline, now, Aline turns at her mark. And pops it up. Is Wilmot easy catch to the mid-off region? Eileen picking up a th her third wicket, bringing an end to the Jamaican innings. Two hundred and eighty-nine all out from forty-six point four overs. Aline, lovely figures, 8.5 overs, 3 wickets, 24 runs. And she has really bowled well. Yeah, she's been excellent. Came in first change earlier, Aline. She got a wicket from her in her first over. You remember she dismissed Kenisha Ferron in her first over. Unfortunately for Barbados, she was not utilized for her full quota. But 3 for 24 from 8.5 overs. Read excellent figures for Aliyah Aline. And Barbados side needing 290 from 50 overs. Jamaica side dismissed for 289 in 46.5 after winning the toss and electing to bat. Led by Stephanie Taylor and Chanel Henry, who both got half centuries. And it was also good knocks from Shadeen Nation and Natasha McLean. So what would be the Barbados strategy going into their, their inning? Well, they can take some pride from the way they started with the ball, but I think they can learn also from the Jamaican side, the way they were able to rebuild their innings. They recovered quite well. You did mention Jamaica was 40 for 3 in a spot of border, but then they were able to consolidate and rebuild the innings in the middle. So maybe the Barbados Bahers can do that as well. Spend some time at the crease, and then it gets easier. We saw how much easier it looked for Stephanie Taylor in particular, who started quite slowly. She was one from about 16 deliveries. And in no time, she was 20 from 19. So they'll expect that from the Bahers, and they will rely very heavily on the senior Bahers. The senior Bahers for Jamaica, they stepped up. They led the way with the bat, and Barbados will need the likes of Kaisian Knight, Kaishona Knight, Aliyah Aline in particular, to do the same with bat in hand. Warner Park being known for as a batting paradise, as it were, the pitch has played true throughout the innings, no surprises, and... Uh, application basically respect for the balls yeah and credit must be given to the ground staff there was cricket here before the tournament start but it has been an excellent pitch it's been very good for Bahrain we've seen no demons in the pitch so Barbados shouldn't be too dejected I know they'll be disappointed that Jamaica was able to get up to 289 especially after the start that Barbados had with the ball but if you apply yourself spend some time at the crease show patience this target is chaseable. Definitely it is and uh, application that will be needed and we saw Jamaica in some trouble recovering beautifully and once you, you, you play respect each ball then you shouldn't have a problem. We're going to be breaking now and we're going to lunch and we're going to be back in about half an hour so please join us here from Warner Park. Jamaica being all out 289 from 46.5 overs.
Good afternoon and welcome back to Warner Park in St. Kitts, where Jamaica winning the toss and electing to bat first were dismissed for 289 in 46.5 overs. It means Barbados women will need 290 and they're allotted 50 overs if they're going to take the first game in this competition. Jamaican women coming on to the field, led by Stephanie Taylor, who was excellent with the bat, scored a half century in her first outing for the season. Also, Chanel Henry complimented her well, got to 90-odd striking, a very healthy strike rate. And they were able to get their team up. A recovery total of 289 all out after being 40 for three and then 123 for four. It will take some getting if the Barbados ladies are going to chase this total down, but it has been an excellent behind wicket. The two batters straight into the crease. Kaisia Knight, captain of the Barbados team this year, accompanied by a Sabi calendar. Remember, it is a Barbados side without Haley Matthews and Shakira Salmon this year. So pretty depleted and lots of inexperience in this side. The Jamaica side, on the other hand, boosted by Chanel Henry. She would have missed the tournament last year due to an injury. And what a way to come back and make an announcement. Letting the entire region know she is back. And it looks to be a much stronger Jamaica side. It will be. We some to start with ball in hand. Importantly, Jamaica would have secured two bonus points. So the bonus point system introduced in this year's tournament. They would have gotten those two bonus points for accumulating more than 220 runs. One slip, waiting. We some into Kaisi and Knight. Play the win to the offside. Finds the fielder there at extra cover. And there is no run. We're still sorting out the scores. We've been told that it is 290. And so Barbados will require 291. Kaisi and Knight is facing and Waysom is bowling a short delivery which is pulled into the onside emphatically and it bounces just inside the boundary and across the boundary for four runs. So off the mark with a four, good shot. Badly lined by Nishan Waysom. It is a free hit as all the fielders are in the circle on the light side. Short delivery and it's helped in front of square by Kaisi and Knight. It's a good way to get off the mark. And they're chasing a huge total, Barbados. No fielder protecting the deep backward square. Comes up now and bowls a delivery, which is played into the offside. And they'll have a single. It was knocked down by the fielder at cover. And then retrieved and saw a run to take the square. Then I was told no, she made 94. And so the scorers next door have confirmed that she was short of 100. They'll give us the corrections in just a while. But the right hander now comes on strike. Right, I'm over to you. Yeah, that's Calendar. Yeah, Sabi Calendar, she would have represented the West Indies on the 19 team in that inaugural on the 19 World Cup that was played in South Africa last year. And Waysom is bowling a full pitch delivery and it's blocked back to the bowler and there are no runs. So good afternoon to you wherever you are tuned in and listening. CG United 50 over tournament has started in St. Kitts and we know that Guyana were bowled out. All three teams that batted first were bowled out, in fact. 
Here's a delivery which is pushing the batsman back. She defends away in the offside. And there is no run. Yeah, this is a new opening pair for the Barbados side. Last year, Haley Matthews would have been the one accompanying Kaisia Knight. She also was the one who led the Barbados side to that victory last year. Remember, Barbados are the defending champions of this CG United Women's Super 50 Cup. With some with the last delivery of uh, over, and it's played away into the offside. Brings up the end of the over, from which we've seen some five runs scored. And we can tell you that Trinidad and Tobago were bowled out for 185 in the 49th over. And the Windward Islands are 15 for no loss. That is the game which is being played at Connery. And uh, in the game over in St. Paul's, Guyana were bowled out for 138 in the 37th over. And the Leewards are 27 for the loss of two wickets. Bat here at one apart. It will be Chanel Henry, who was outstanding with the bat. She scored 93 from 67 deliveries. It was a blistering knock where she hit many boundaries and maximums. She is going to be accompanying Nishian Waysom with the ball from the northern end. She will be bowling around the wicket to the left handed Kaisia Knight. Two fielders in the deep or deep square leg and deep fine. None of the teams that batted first in round one batted their full allotment of 50 overs. As Henry from around the wicket to bowl to Casey and Knight, good delivery. And she's playing it away to the offside. And the cover moves to her right. They get a single. And so it's six for no loss. We're in the second over. Barbados chasing 291 to win. Yeah, good start from Henry, but equally well played by Kaisia Knight. A bit of shape into the left-hander. Chanel Henry is well known for bowling. Quite big old swingers to the right-hander. It remains one slip in waiting, though. Deep cover and deep third. As she comes up now to bowl to Calendar. And uh, this is a delivery which is withdrawing the bat, allows it to go through to the keeper. So, six for no loss. Chanel Henry made 94 when she batted. Well, she's on the other side now. She's bowling. Turns at the far end and comes up from the Lozak Road end now to bowl to Calendar, who is playing this one and the beaten goes through to the keeper and no runs. Yeah, that's the beauty from Chanel Henry once again. The wind is assisting her blowing from right to left of screen. We did mention she's very potent at bowling that outswinger to right handers. She often troubles the outside edge of the right handed batters. That's why I'm so surprised to only see one slip, especially when it's the youngster, Sabi Calendar, only opening in this competition for the first time. And again, she's playing, and once more she's beaten. And uh, the only action is that the umpire holds up an arm and signals to her partner that there are two balls left in the over. And I, I see why you are asking for a second slip. Yeah, normally at the international level, you will see two slips in waiting when Chanel Henry is bowling, especially if she's bowling with a new ball. So I'm surprised that she's bowling to a youngster and there's only one slip. Henry comes up to bowl to Calendar and she's getting this off the outer portion of the bat. They hesitate for a single. Throw comes in and if that had hit, it would have been trouble for Barbados because Calendar was slow off the mark. And eventually she got there because the throw didn't hit the stump. Seven for no loss. Yeah, very casual running by a Sabi calendar. She should have been hustling. It's almost as though she underestimated the ability of Captain Stefani Taylor. And had that hit, she would have been gone. 
Henry goes around the wicket to bowl to Casey and Knight. And she's behind it, plays it well, away into the offside, brings up the end of over number two. Barbados are seven for no loss. There we have the match summary so far. Jamaica women, 289 all low as of now. Chanel Henry, 93 from just 69 deliveries. Stephanie Taylor also got to her century. Barbados women, seven without loss after two overs. Required rate up at 5.9 and over. Slip comes out now. So no slip for Nisha and Wayson. Shooter comes to sharp me wicket. And she's bowling to Calendar. And again she's beaten. Coming forward, pushing at this one and beaten on the outside edge. And it went through to the keeper. She has a, a very, very pronounced across the movement, across the pitch movement as the bowler delivers. Yeah, that pre step is taking her way outside off stump. And perhaps that's the reason she's playing at delivery. She perhaps will be advised to leave so early on in her innings. Good observation. Here is Waysom once more. And this time she's back. Plays it down to extra cover. And there is no run. Interesting again that they decide to persist without that slip. Waysom did have a slip in her first over when she was pulling out the right hander. She has none now. Waysom bowls a delivery which is called dead ball because the wind which uh, Selman told you about has blown the heart of the umpire <laughs> off and so the bowler was just about to enter her delivery stride and the umpire quickly called and signaled dead ball. And that would have certainly distracted the batter, a sabi calendar. And deciding to walk away before Wayson was able to release the ball. Seven for no loss. We're in over number three. And here is Wayson bowling the delivery, which is pulled into the onside. And uh, it's fielded down at long leg, who has a good, strong, powerful throw back into the keeper. And the score pushes on to eight as Calendar moves on to two from her ten deliveries. Casey in eight is on six, and she comes up to take strike. Looks as though Vanessa Watts is going to return to slip for the right for the left handed Kaisia Knight. Yeah. So want to be careful with the lane she bowls to Kaisia. Who is getting a delivery outside the off stump, going further away. And she flashes at it, misses it, and it goes through for the keeper to take. And so you reflect on this game, some 15 wide sent down by the Barbados team, alongside nine no balls. And some of the bowlers, in particular, Elliot was expensive. Here's Waitsome, bowls it short on the legs, turned around the corner, finds the fielder at short, fine leg, who has a throw at the stumps, nicely backed up in the, in the offside. And so there is a run, and the score moves on to nine. Players out there are very active, and the stump mics are also very sensitive. <laughs> We're picking up a lot, a lot of chatter, some of which I'm not sure that the players want us to hear. And I'm sure that the management team will remind them that the mic's alive. Way some. One delivery left in over and is bowling to Calendar. And for this delivery, she's again hanging about way outside the off stump. It goes through for the end of the over, nine for no loss. Very good observation. Perhaps the movement across is asking her, causing her to play a delivery which she might well leave alone. 
You know, she continues to flirt with danger as Abby Canada whenever the ball is pitched up outside of stump. Just two runs from that two runs from that way some over. So nine without loss after three overs, the Barbados side. Henry will continue from the far end. Already has a big half century to her name. And the turns and will come from the Lozak Road end and bowl tonight who is driving at this one misses it goes between the bat and the stumps and a good take by the keeper but my word that couldn't have been too far away yeah we continue to mention the amount of movement Chana Henry gets of course she is going to swing the ball in to the left handers but well, that's an excellent take diving to her right Rashida Williams and taking it in the warm mitt the big mitt Really good to you. Good cricket by the Jamaica side so far. Henry again goes past the stumps and this delivery is bringing Knight forward. Explores the possibility of a single. But Henry was closing out that very quickly. And the score remains a nine for no loss. Yeah, she is a very good athlete, Janelle Henry. She's really good with ball. She was excellent today with bat in hand and she's an excellent fielder. True definition of an all rounder. West Indian fans will be hoping that she can realize her true potential at the highest level. Here is she bowling a delivery which is outside the line of the off stump, swinging in, and uh, the keeper Williams moves to her right and takes, and there is no run. She is going to assist three. Heavily pop off safe field, Chanel Henry. She does have protection in the leg side. The two fielders in the deep are at square leg and fine leg. Here is Henry and she's bringing the batter forward. And it comes from the outer portion of the bat down to slip where it is very well stopped. Nine for no loss. And again we see an opportunity perhaps not carrying to the slip fielder. We saw it a few times when Barbados was bowling. And now we see it for the Jamaica side. Partly because it's not a, flood, a full blooded drive by the batter. But perhaps the field that slip could be encouraged to come a bit closer. Henry once more. Bowls to Casey at night. She's wrapped on the pad. Loud shout. The finger goes up. She's out LBW. And Henry has picked up her first wicket. Delivery which seem to have touched down perhaps in line with the off stump and coming back in with the arm and trapped her going back the shout went up out lbw barbados have lost their first wicket casey and knight has gone and they're nine for one and that's a brilliant piece of bowling by chanel henry she just took the outside edge of casey and knight's bat and then she was able to get the follow-up delivery to come back into the left hand in knight sharply and the captain of the Barbados side has to go. Barbados lose their first at nine. Within the fourth over. It brings to the crease. Night Johnny coming back. Another West Indies on the 19 player who would have taken part in that World Cup played last year in South Africa. So two youngsters at the crease now for the Barbados side. And two right handers. I'm sure Chanel Henry will be licking her lips. And uh, still just the one slip. She is coming from over the wicket to the right-handed batter. And they remind you that Jamaica lost their first wicket with the score on 10. And at one point, they were 24 for 2, 40 for 3, and made it up to 290. So Cumberbatch is on strike. And uh, is facing up to the experience of Henry and for this delivery it's outside the off stump she's fishing at it misses the bat goes through for the keeper to take end of a maiden wicket over and at the end of it 
Barbados, they are nine for one, four overs completed. And there's a look back at that delivery from Chanel Henry. And they all went up in unison to Jamaica side. Perhaps would have been crashing into the right stump of Casey and Knight. Good bowling, showing her experience, Henry. And uh, you said it right. She would be absolutely licking the lips and looking for more wickets. But it's Waitsum who will be bowling uh, to Calendar. And uh, from the media center end, she goes away from us. And this delivery is full outside the off stump, partially fielded by the fielder there at point. And uh, they get a single. And so Calendar will move on to three, and they score to ten for one. That single brings Nigeria come watch and straight. The first time she'll be facing up to Nai Nishan Wesom. Batch having a look around the field, and we'll see that there are two fielders out on the onside. Here is a delivery which is short, and she's playing it nicely down to the vacant third man position for four. Short and had the width and guided it nicely down to the boundary to pick up a good looking four runs. Yeah, nice deft touch by Young. Come about, and um, it's a good way to get off the mark that may give her some confidence. Remember, third man was in the circle for that delivery, that is now being changed as we see. Turn the field art third man being sent immediately back to the boundary. Look at the weirdness, boy. Come about, perhaps a bit of a mistake from the and the Jamaican team. New batsman batters in, and uh, the slips are vacant. No, they have put a uh, player in the slips. Wait some it is, who is bowling to Cumberbatch, who is on four. And for this delivery, it's short. She's standing up to her full height, plays it out into the offside. And uh, cover is in the way. They don't score. Yeah, now that our slip has been re-employed, it means the shot which got Cumberbatch off the mark is a lot more high risk. It was a low risk shot because there was no slip employed. Wait some it is. Goes away from us and bowls to Cumberbatch. And she's playing this one down to the field, coming off the third man boundary. And they'll get a single. It overthrows the keeper, but it's backed up nicely in the onside. And so just a single run. And uh, so Cumberbatch has moved on to five. And it's 15 for one. And we in over number five. Casey and Knight, the batter to go. Two deliveries left in the over. And the way some it is to bowl a delivery which is wide, called and signaled. And uh, so the score goes on to 16 for one. Barbados require another 276 runs to win. And it will be an uphill battle, battle for this Barbados side after having lost their captain pretty early for just seven runs. If you score nine, it is an opportunity for these youngsters to raise their hands. She's again playing and missing is Calendar. And uh, so the score remains 16 for one. One delivery left in the over. She does come a long way across the stumps. And having covered the stumps, she's still hanging a bat outside the off stump. I'm sure that's something that the coaches will work on with her. Here's a delivery which she's trying to play into the onside. Might have taught something. No, it didn't. And here comes the signal for wide. And so 17 for one. Second wide of the over so far. Makes it eight runs from this. 
the third over from Waysom. She'll want to close out the over. And for this delivery, it's short, pulled into the onside, straight to the field at mid wicket. End of the over. 18 for the loss of one. Five overs completed. And uh, Casey Knight is the batter to go for seven. Combo batches on five. Calendar is on three. Henry will continue from the far end. Barbados, 17 for one. Henry, bowls a delivery which is beating the batter on the off stump and uh, did that take the outside edge from the reaction of Chanel Henry? You have to think it did. It did, but it, it went did. down. Played it with soft hands and it went down and bounced in front of the keeper who recovered nicely. It was caught on the crease on that occasion by Johnny Kamabach. It was a pitched up delivery and she perhaps would have been advised to come forward. Here's another delivery which is slower and is bringing her forward solidly into line. She plays it well. And uh, so Henry has picked up one for two. She's in the third over. Yeah, coming back. She just still seems to be hanging back, though. She could commit a bit more onto that front foot. The plan by Chanel Henry is clear. She's looking to pitch up the ball and take the outside edge or catch her on the crease and get her LB. She is going to be bowling a lot fuller. And for this delivery, it's fuller. It's guided down to third man, brings the field off the boundary. And uh, they'll have a single, so the score will move on to 18 for one. And uh, Cumberbatch has picked up a sixth run. Calendar is on three. Something is, is happening to our score. I'll tell you about that later. This delivery is played away into the offside. And there is no run. Two deliveries left in the over. 18 for one. Henry has picked up one for three. Barbados need another 272 runs. Well, they told me that the score was, two, was 290. So they'll correct that eventually. Here is Henry from the far end. And bowling a delivery, which is again bringing the batsman, playing at it outside the off stump. Misses. And it goes through for the keeper. And Henry is there wondering, what else can she do to get an edge? Yeah, the problem for the Barbados batters are they're all playing the initial line of the delivery and not accounting for the fact that Chanel Henry is getting the ball to shape away. They're not able to get close enough to the pitch of the delivery. They're better off trying to hit her through the covers a bit squarer. They're trying to hit her too straight down the ground. Here is Henry once more. Shorter delivery, which is played down to extra cover to bring up the end of the over. Six overs gone, 18 for one Barbados in reply to 290 made by Jamaica. Some will bowl, will start a fourth over. And she goes away from us now. And this delivery is played from the inner portion of the bat away on the onside. Mid wicket runs in and picks up. And so it's 18 for one.
Kwesom again from over the wicket. Bowls a full pitch delivery. And this one comes from the outer half of the bat. Goes down to third man. They'll get a single. And uh, that will take the score to 19 for one. And Kwesom none for 16. And she's in a fourth over. Calendar is on three. She's on strike. One slip as with some balls and for this delivery she's pulling uh, his calendar goes down to the field coming off the fine leg boundary they'll get a single and that will take the score to 20 for the loss of one yeah sabi calendar just helping out one down to the field or out fine leg Yes, I'm just getting too straight on that occasion. Looks as though there's going to be a change in feel. Stephanie Taylor looks to be positioning herself at gully. And that's because of the number of deliveries. Like Johnny Kamabach is running to the fielder at third man. The last one would have caught her outside edge whilst attempting a drive. And she's edging to the left of the field at slip and uh, gets a single. Often you wonder when you see first slip in slip and a half position. And this one, she was wide at slip and she was caught in. It went to the left. She got a hand to it and she wasn't able to hold on. And so Cumberbatch has picked up an eighth run yeah, and it's 21 for one. She seemed to be beaten for pace on that occasion, the slip fielder. Her reaction was a bit slower than the ball actually came. This one is called and signaled wide. And so the score pushes on to 22 for one. Win over number seven. Yeah, you have to think that was a chance going to begging. It did go close enough to Vanessa Watts at slip. Weigh some once more. And for this delivery, she's bringing the batter forward. Loud shout goes up. And she does make a pronounced move, the move across or off stump. And so, not out the call. And uh, the fielders were moving around, but our system says the delivery is left. Probably struck outside the line of the off stump, and she was playing a shot. I remind our viewers, if a batter is playing a shot and they're struck outside our stump, they cannot be given out, or they should not be given out. Here's with some a short delivery, and she does like this pull shot, does uh, Calendar. Saw it pitch shot, didn't look to see it wasn't uh, making good height, and she played all over it. End of, of the over though, and it's 22 for the loss of one after seven overs. Current run rate for the Barbados team. Just above three runs and over. That required run rate continues to climb. They now require 268 runs from 258 deliveries. At just above six runs and over. Henry will start her fourth over. And has picked up one for three so far. Now we'll see two slips in place. Yeah, they've been encouraged by the number of outside edges from the Johnny Comerbatch. So good move by Captain Stefani Taylor. And for this delivery, she's driving, not moving her feet. And uh, she's beating it, goes through for the keeper to take. And you can just see once more. Rick Kamabach is looking to hit that delivery from Chanel Henry. She's trying to drive the ball to mid-off as opposed to extra cover and to the left of extra cover. Henry with the score 22 for 1. Ball's a delivery which is played away into the offside. There's a sweeper coming off the cover boundary and so they'll have a single and uh, takes the score now on to 23 for the loss of one. 
Yeah, I'm much more comfortable when the ball is back pitch and the Johnny come about because of how she's hanging back in her crease. Two sticks remain for a Sabi calendar. And for this delivery from Henry, it's shorter and she's leaving it alone. It goes through for the keeper to take. Well played by Callender. Well left on that occasion. Realizing it was much too wide to require a shot from her. Henry bowls once again. And this is a very good delivery. Right in the block hole and defended away on the onside. And uh, they won't score. So it's 23 for one. We're in the eighth over. Two deliveries remaining. For Chanel Henry to complete four overs. She's just gone for four runs and she's accounted for the wicket. Here's a delivery which is pitched wide of the off stump and allowed to go through for the keeper to take. And uh, so one delivery left in the over. Henry is one for four. Barbados are 23 for one. They're looking to score uh, now at a run weight in excess of six. Requiring 267 from 255 balls. Current run rate has slipped below three. As Henry comes up and for this delivery, she's going back calendar, plays it away in the offside, end of the over. And at the end of it, the score is 23 for one. Run rate continues to drop. Gone below three runs and over. No, the Barbados say 2.88 and over they're scoring up. 23 for one at the end of eight overs. Needing a further 267 runs. And we are going to see our first bowling change for the Jamaica side. It looks like Kate Wilmot coming from the southern end, replacing Nisha and Waysom. As we follow the other games over at Connery, Trinidad and Tobago 185. And the Windward Islands in reply, 38 for 1. In St. Paul's, Guyana women, I'm seeing that the score has now changed to 143. And the Leewards in reply are 58 for 3. So Wilmot will be bowling from this the media center end. One wicket down for Barbados. They're 23 for one. <coughs> Jamaica. They are making sure that the field is set exactly where they want it. Somebody was crossing the side screen. And Wilmot will bowl to Cumberbatch. And for this delivery, it's short and she's playing at it. It goes through for the keeper to take. So we saw exaggerated foot movement from Asabi Calendar. And now we're seeing very little from Nijani Cumberbatch trying to punch that one through the offside. But she doesn't get back and across behind the delivery. Surprised to see that gully fielder being taken out. Wilmot to bowl to Cumberbatch and she's back and defending away in the offside. The bowl uh, knocks it down and they follow through and the extra cover will tidy up. So the CG United Super 50 for ladies is very much on the way here in St. Kitts. And reminding you that the cash prize this year 
20,000 US dollars to the winner, 10,000 to the runner up. And in the 2020 Blaze, 10,000 to the winner, 5,000 to the runner up. Most runs, most wickets, most dismissals, 1,000 each. Here is Wilmot, and for this delivery, Cumberbatch is driving into the offside. And the fielder there at point goes diving away to her left. Cannot prevent the single. And so the score moves on to 24 for the loss of one. Brings Calendar into strike. She's on four. And the combo batch is on 10. Four from 24 is Calendar. And Wilmot it is who turns beneath us. And it goes away to bowl now to combo batch. And for this delivery, she's getting a good one in the block hole, defended away in the onside. And the keeper is very quickly up from behind the stumps, and they won't score. I have to ask you, Carol, were you a bowler? Sort of. Not much. <laughs> <laughs> Not much of a bowler. The reason I'm asking is I think you were very lenient on the bowler just now. It looked to be a long half volley, but because Asabi Calendar is stuck on the crease, she plays it as though it was a Yorker. Maybe Kate, Kate Wilmot, knowing her, she was her teammate at some point. And that's a shot that she's looking for. <laughs> Always looking to pull. And it goes away into the onside, down to forward of square, brings the fielder from the boundary, and she'll get a single. So it seems as if she's position, positioning for that pull shot most of the times. It's 25 for 1. Cumberbatch comes up on strike. Calendar is on 5 from 26. Combo batch is on 10 from 15. Wilmot it is, who goes away to bowl to combo batch. And it's a short delivery played in the air. If Golly had been there, that would have been a gift. And it went down to third man. They'll get a single. And uh, so at the end of the over then... It's now showing 26 for the loss of one wicket. That would have been an easy catch for Golly. Yeah, and I'm sure Stephanie Taylor will be disappointed that she herself came from that Golly region. We've seen so many runs scored by Najani Kamabach in that region. It's worth keeping that Golly in, especially when you score 289 runs. Very correct. Here comes the voice of Troy Mills. Gonna have another change in bowling. It will be Vanessa Watts coming from the far end. So first introduction of spin. So far in this innings, we all know what Vanessa Watts can do and what she has done at this level. She's dominated this level for a number of years. And she will be coming with her off breaks. Boney was a, with a fairly new ball replacing Chanel Henry who got four overs and got one for four runs. A very good spell indeed by Henry as I say good afternoon once more. Little white outside the off stump trying to slide that one perhaps between backward point and gully not connecting the ball going through to the keeper. And one straight on the stumps. Coming forward. A nice way to start by what? Six fielders on the offside for the off spinner, Vanessa Watts. And those of you who are viewing are perhaps wondering why so many fielders on the offside. But it's because she is born with a, with a fairly new ball. That ball is obviously only four overs old. Remember, two balls are used in this version of the game. Here she comes again, Watts, playing that one through the extra cover. They run through. Not the best of throws, but they get a single. And the score goes on to... 
27. 27 for one. <coughs> Just to finish my point, she's also not known for spinning the ball too much for Nessa Watts. Very often she runs the ball on, on with the arm. She gets lots of wickets, caught her slip. And then she's bowling to right-handers. One run so far from the over. And the lovely over there, just yielding the one run. Kalanda pushes that one out into the cover region. At the end of the 10th over, 27 for one, Jamaica in search of 290 for victory. You now have a build up of students in the crowd. It's good to see these youngsters, young boys and girls looking on and learning about this sport. Especially excited to see the young girls and hopefully we will see a number of them in a few years playing for the Leeward Island side. I think with Josiah Claxton getting into the West Indies on the 19th setup and playing for the Leewards, that will lend itself some encouragement to the young females. Yeah, Claxton herself, a very bright spark. She would have represented West Indies in that inaugural on the 19th tournament. She also got a chance in the CPL for the winning Royals team, Barbados Royals. And she's impressed lots of people around the region. A very good head on her shoulder is Jazara. But it's all about Wilmot now. She'll be bowling to Cumberbatch. Coming forward is Cumberbatch. Playing that one down into the mid on region. And uh, they're not looking to, I believe, turn the ball here and they pick up a single now and then, which is important. Yeah, they have to. They have to start rotating it straight. It's quite a healthy t score they're chasing. And every time they're not able to get this 6.63, which the require rate is at right now, that rate will continue to climb. They're only scoring at 2.61. And that's why it's quite surprising to me that Barbados decided to send two youngsters at the crease as opposed to sending a more experienced batter, maybe the likes of Aliyah Anin or Kaishana Knight. A very good idea. These two have played in the under 90 setup, and Wilmot hasn't seen that up. In And uh, that is Cumberbatch. And perhaps a little inexperience, especially at this level, showing. Yeah, perhaps that's where you would want to see an experienced player accompanying one of these youngsters. Anyhow, it is an opportunity for these youngsters. This is the future of West Indies cricket, not just Barbados cricket, but West Indies cricket. So it is an opportunity for these youngsters. They'll have to put up their hand and say, yes, I'm here, I'm present, and I'm ready to take on the task. And either way, they will learn from experiences as such. And they could only get the experience by being exposed to it, by playing the matches. A lovely shot, a little eerily. Going through the covers, they're going to get one. They should get two. It rolls out to the boundary. It's being stopped just inside they thought initially of a third. It wasn't there. They settled for the two. The only two runs off the over. And it takes the score 29 for the loss of one wicket. After 11 overs. Very slow going here. If you were looking at the screen just now, you see the adjustment has been made. Stephanie Taylor actually made 97 runs from 100 deliveries. So she just fell three shy of a century. Batting at a crucial time. Jamaica 40 for three at one stage. Then 123 for four. So very good comeback in the middle there. And right now Barbados will need to get it going from the top. It's Vanessa Watts once more. 
Just the one over and the one run. And beating the edge as it were, removing the bales quickly is the keeper. And quite a few balls have, have been beating the edge here. Shakira. Yeah, we've seen many deliveries beating the outside edge of both batters or taking the outside edge of Nigeria like, coming back in particular. Coming forward. Getting it into the onside. Not interested in a single. Is Calendar. And Canada has to play each ball on its merit and not play what's for an all spinner. And we're not seeing too much movement either. Trying to come down or anything. Somewhat stationary in the crease. And that's going to put a little more pressure on them. Coming forward. Again, beating the edge. Keeper collects cleanly. And I'm not certain Jamaica would be too unhappy with what is happening. Well, they shouldn't be. 29 for one, almost at the end of the 12th over. What feels to her own bowling, which is pushed down the track. A maiden over. 29 for 1, Barbados in search of 290 for victory. And the second maiden sent down by the Jamaican side so far. Chanel Henry's second over was a wicked maiden. And now Vanessa walks. She's bowling maiden her second over. She's bowled two overs for just one run. And you like to see, you want to see the Bahers. Trying to at least rotate the straight. The Sabi Canada is 5 from 34 deliveries. Come back 14 from 26. About in her run there. Is Wilmot. As she is now starting the 13th over. Punching that one out into the covers is Cumberbatch. And they'll need to find a way to rotate the strike, pick up some singles here and there. Yeah, they have to come up with a plan to rotate the strike. Perhaps soft hands, try to hit it over the top, something. And that's the outside edge once more and <laughs> into the boundary. How many times have we seen Nijani Kamabach score via an outside edge down to that third man boundary? And Jamaica continuing with just that one Solitary slip. Solitary slip. And whether it's a full slip, slip and a half, as Carlisle was saying a little earlier, <coughs> perhaps they need to think about a slip for at least in the next couple of overs. A second slip, that is. Yeah, I think enough runs are on the board that you can attack a bit yeah, more. Exactly. One slip, a third man, a backward point cover, extra cover, mid off, mid on. Slate has gone a lot wider now. She seems to be in and around third slip, two and a half. Guiding that one square on the offside. But earlier in the match, there was a, a chance to the left of the slip and a half, as it were. Yeah, it's worth putting two slips. Exactly. Jamaica, they've widened the gap between the keeper and the slip fielder, who is in two and a half slips going to third. Kate Wilmot. Coming forward, asking for the single, getting it. A well judged, a well judged single in the end. Now Johnny coming back to where that captain Stephanie Taylor was perhaps on the circle, and that was well played. Saw fans, they have to try something different. I exactly because the field fielders are generally on the circle. 
soft hands, quick communication, quick running. Either way, there just needs to be some sort of intent to score. 34 for one after 12.4. Allowing that one to go through is Calendar. The last over was a maiden. The one before five dot balls. Five dot balls, the tenth over, three, five. So quite a few dot balls in the last five overs are there about. Yeah, current partnership, 25 from 54 deliveries. Coming back, scoring 19 of those runs. To her favorite position. <laughs> <laughs> Air release from the slips. <laughs> Forward defensive. Perhaps even playing an, a little wrist movement, turning it off into the onside. That may have produced a single, but it's the end of the over nonetheless. After 13 overs, 34 for one. Barbados in search of 290 for victory. They need 256 runs in 222 balls. Still gettable, especially with nine wickets in hand. Yeah, especially with Kaishana Knight in waiting. Remember, she was the highest run scorer last year. Last she season. scored 144 against this Jamaica side last year. Mm. And she got most runs in that competition. And there's been lots of talk around this Barbados side, missing Haley Matthews. But remember, Kaishana Knight did score most runs last year in the 50-over competition. Kaishana Knight got most runs in the T20 Blaze. So there is hope still for the Barbados side, but they need to get a move on. None there, none there. And what? She continues to tighten the screws with yet another dot ball. Kumbabach getting up on the toes, punching that one to the mid on region. Wouldn't get anyone. And the Kumbabach remains at 19 from 32. Defense looking good. Still no run. Driving that one through the covers. We'll get one comfortably. And the Jamaicans wouldn't really mind that. There is a saying, one, one full basket. <laughs> <laughs> but on this occasion, I think he'll need quite a few four, fours and sixes as well. Come match on to 20 from 34 deliveries. But she needs more support from her partner. Savvy Canada. Five from now 37 deliveries. Looks like it's going to be a change of angle for the final delivery of this the 14th over. Watts deciding to go around the wicket. Hence the field that slate has gone a bit to her right. It's another dot delivery to end the over. So just one from that over. One this over, five the last. I made me four, two the one before, one, three, one. And the Jamaicans would be very comfortable, yes? They wouldn't mind getting a wicket or two, but with these batters not really challenging this score, they don't mind. At some point, perhaps, we'll see... Or maybe at the water break, the message, hey, you need to turn over the strike. You need to start picking it up a bit. If you get 216 singles from the 216 balls remaining, we won't win the game. And that one outside the off stump. Cumberbatch trying to get it, perhaps squeeze off the wicket. And Wilmot is satisfied that there isn't anyone from that delivery. delivery. Oh, 
No one there. And Leeward leading 143 for win. For a win, they are 60 for the loss of three wickets after 27.3 overs. And the Trinidad and Tobago, they made 185 in 48.2. Winwards, they are 39 for four after 11.2 overs. Well, that last delivery, there should have been a single there. The ball was played into the on-site. There's no fielder at Square Lake. Good fielder, and there's a chance for a run out. Oh, Ooh. the bowler misses it. And Canada is able to get back safely, but good fielding. By Chidi Nation at cover. Yes. And the chances are if it was a clean pick up there, if it was collected cleanly, yeah, it, it may have been that run out. Would have been close, certainly. Would have been close. We did mm. see a run out when the Jamaicans were behind. In fact, it was Shadin Nation herself exactly. who was run out. <laughs> And going, trying to hammer that one, not making good contact, was Cumberbatch. Getting it down to a widest extra cover position, but not picking up anyone. 35 for one. 2.39, the current run, 2.39 runs per over, the current run rate. 255 more runs needed in 221 balls. 212 in fact. 212 balls. Quite a long way to go. And again, that one beating the outside edge. And but that one seemed to have gone under the bat. It was well pitched up. But and somehow these batters, they're not seeming, and you made the point earlier, they're play, probably paying for the one particular turn. Yeah, we've spoken about intent to score, mindset and planning. And they need to come up with a way to score and get these bowlers off their rhythm. And this is where a more experienced batter at the crease would have helped. And that's another maiden over. Campbell, I'm getting the impression She's realizing that there needs to be a little greater urgency. You see her trying to force a single. Yeah, perhaps feeling the pressure of no runs being scored from the next, the next end. 20 or 40 deliveries. You did see her try to score in that last over. Like Johnny Kamabach, perhaps overhitting a few of the deliveries. Losing her shape on a few occasions as well. For this type of cricket, five runs from 38 deliveries. Not, it doesn't look good on your resume, really. Well, that's all she can catch up. After she's faced so many deliveries, she has to go on and she has to catch up. And it's going to be what's one more. Staying around the wicket. She's going to be bowling to Kalenda. She's bowling to Kalenda. Vanessa Watts has bowled 17 dot deliveries already. And just <coughs> 19 balls. Just gone for two runs. And that one eerily over the covers going out to the boundary. Would it be the feet? Yes. And this is the first boundary of the, in the inning. No, it's actually, the first by a Sabi calendar. Yes, it's actually the first in a long time. Four <laughs> runs nonetheless for the, the Barbadians. Yeah, well played by calendar. And we did say just now, let's hope she can catch up. Partnership goes on to 30 from 69 deliveries. And she's used the angle very well. Now forcing Vanessa Watts to go back over the wicket. That one basically just on center about. Playing it into the inside was Kalenda. Nine from 41. 20 from 40 is Cumberbatch. And this one she plays and it's gonna be four. And that a very easy, nice timing, not a lot of power. Just playing it, caressing it, one would say, and picking up a nice boundary there. Yeah, perhaps a change of mindset. 
from Asabi Canada and you see her being applauded by her partner, Najani Kamabach, telling her that's what you're capable of and to back herself. So that's two boundaries in that over and now she's into double figures, Canada. 13 from 42 deliveries. We did say she has to make the most of this opportunity and catch up. And it equals the best over by the Bajans. The fifth over, they would have had nine, nine one, eight ones from the over. A four, two singles, and two wides. But they'll need many more like this to actually stand the chance of winning this match. And she cuts that one. She beats the backward point, picking up one only the sweeper from the boundary comes around smartly to her left, collects, brings up the end of the over. That takes us to drinks break. So at the end of 16 overs, Barbuda swimming 44 for one, chasing 289 runs. Require rate up at 7.25 and over. They will need a further 246 runs from 204 legal deliveries. Come about 20 from 40 deliveries. Asabi Canada, her partner, 14 from 44 deliveries. Lee was there up against it again against Guyana. They are 74 for six after 31.2. And uh, Win was there also up against it versus Trinidad and Tobago, 56 for five. Win was needing 186 to win in all of 50 overs. Lee was needing 143 to win. We are now resuming here at Warner Park after the water break. And uh, Barbados, after 16 overs, they are 44 for the loss of one wicket. The loss of wickets, that is a good thing. The runs, perhaps not the best thing. Scoring at a run rate of 2.75, needing to get to 289 for victory. It's going to be Wilmot to continue from the media center end. <coughs> uh, this seems to be still the slip and a half, as it were. As I welcome Carlyle Powell. Good afternoon, Troy. I'm not certain why Jamaica have been so reluctant to put us and keep a second catcher. 
uh, persisted with just the one slip. And so many balls have been played through the gully and the slips area in the air. And again, beating the outside edge as we have seen so many times this afternoon, Carlisle. Because she plays with both her feet together. And even though she makes a pronounced movement across the crease, she still hangs the bat out. It is felt that once cricketers are exposed to dancing, that might help them when they're batting. Do you subscribe to that thinking? Again, that one going through to the keeper. A little wider this time. I've known a number of very good batsmen who can't dance to save their <laughs> lives. And conversely, very good dancers probably can't play cricket to save Absolutely their lives. Absolutely correct. <laughs> And that one goes airily, not in control of it. And it, it's a ball on court. Perhaps giving away her wicked day on that occasion. Too easy. Gale. Too easy. And i tell you why. Because the moment she sees something short, she sets herself to pull. Line, length, it doesn't matter. Once she sees it pitch short, she's setting to pull. And that's a delivery which was not there for the kind of shot that she played. And so having gotten in 14 from 47, she needed to, to make use of, of the time that she had spent at the crease. But the second wicket goes down for Barbados, and it's 44 for the loss of two. And uh, Jamaica, they'll be happy as they're picking up wickets. And uh, the Barbados, but then it may be a blessing in disguise for Barbados. Because they may be able to pick up the tempo And the Cumberbatch, she's still there, 20 from 40. Wilmot picking up her first wicket. As it's now Aline who's gone in to join her, joining Cumberbatch. Falling well behind the run rate now. Asking rate has gone to 7.38 per over. Barbados still need another 246 runs to win this game. And flashing outside the off stump. Is that Aline? And Troy, we still haven't seen uh, Jamaica put in another close catcher. Um, in the slips area. I, we've seen quite a bit of it when Barbados was feeling as well. I don't know if it's a new strategy in cricket, one that I'm not seeing the, the prudence in as yet. And there's an appeal, that one. Taking her on the pad. No harm done. It's 44 for two. understand that the wickets are tumbling in the other games. Winwards, when I last heard, they were five down, and the Leewards were seven down. And so, apart from the first inning here, when we saw a pair of 90s from Henry and Taylor, the rest of the batting to date has not come to the fore. And no doubt, the, in the other games, well, all three teams batting first, they were bowled out well within their 50 overs, which would have been a positive sign for the fielding team. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not seeing bowling power plays, I'm seeing batting power plays. You know, so the, the teams that have done so well to bowl out the oppositions, maybe the, the coaches are saying, well, wickets are tumbling anyway. <laughs> so we'll incentivize the batting portion of it.
and we see the change at the loser code end. Nicole Campbell. Left arm and she's going to strike first ball and it's dropped. It's put down. Too easy. Doesn't get any easier than that, Carla. <laughs> Went to her on the full. She reached in. It was a shortest delivery which she played a nothing shot to really. And it went to the fielder there at extra cover. And she fluffed an easy chance. Nicole. And that one taken off the edge. Quick single being had. By Cumberbatch. And Nicole would have really been glad to get that wicket. Remember she was out one ball. Mm -hmm. So for a first ball in the a bowling, should have basically felt comfortable. Vanessa Watts, the, the fielder who offended on that occasion. And this is something that we have to improve on, really, if we're to improve the ladies' game. Outside the leg stump, pulling it around while trying to really smack it, not timing it well. But picking up a single, nonetheless, was Aline. Cumberbatch, she's there. She's 21 from 42. And Shakira and myself, we wondered what was the thinking in having two youngsters at the crease as opposed to a youngster and a more experienced player. I don't know if maybe you could pick some prudence from that, Carlisle. Oh yeah, especially when you're chasing a big target. I would suppose that you want people at the crease with some experience who would be able to not just rotate the strike but to dictate the pace of the response. As once the scoring rate gets over seven, then you know you need some boundaries. 22 for one at the end of seven overs. Punching that one back down the track is Cumberbatch at the end of seven. 18 overs, 44 for two. So scoring 22 runs in the last 10 overs are they about. And Cumberbatch realizing she needs to get on with it. Trying to give herself some room, trying to pull that into the inside, but not connecting properly. And the over ends at 46 for the loss of two. Three extras um, so far in the inning. Uh, 46 for the loss of two wickets. Uh, scoring the way they're doing right now, Barbados, will not get the job done. They're currently scoring at 2.56 runs and over and looking at 7.53 runs from here on in to win this game. I tell you what, Troy, if Barbados are to win this game, which is some very exciting batting, <laughs> And this seems Changing to be a bowling. bowling. Stephanie Taylor. And although she might she would like to quicken up this this victory. Picking up a few wickets to end the the match, end it early, but of course the Barbados batters will have different ideas. Taylor going woofing and there's an appeal for stomping. And umpire Laborde not at all interested in that. Well, it didn't seem as if she left a crease as you look at it once again. And the foot did move. Is it back? Is it back? Let's see the square on, Troy. <laughs> Unless it was in the air, it seemed to be have to have been in the crease. If it was in the air, that's a different kettle of fish. No, it seemed to have been firmly grounded. Trying to dab that one. Wide of the backward point feeler, not connecting. Do you think we should be using reviews at this level, Carlisle? 
it's expensive. I'm, I'm sure it's all about the, the cost of the additional cameras. But yeah, that would be useful. Perhaps, and uh, the good thing is, as the president would have said, the increase in the prize monies for for this and the T20 blaze, 20,000, it is and 10,000 respectively. And perhaps, maybe trying to buy a wicket on that occasion, Taylor, a gentle, slow, highish looping, which sometimes are troublesome to batters. And the skipper tailoring to Ali in once more. Dabs that one down to the third man region. Fire the slips. Would she get a boundary? Yes, she does. Played it well. Indeed. Knowing there was a slip, knowing it was a little fine, she guided it to the right of the slip. And we've seen quite a few boundaries through the slips today. 50 comes up, Troy. 50 for two in the 19th over, requiring another 240 runs. Short third man goes in. Trying to sweep that one and getting it through. Gonna get four easy runs. Looking good. Sweeping that one backward of square. A lovely boundary there. And that takes it up to 54 for two at the end of the 19th over. She just got a little bit too straight on that one, Stephanie Taylor. And uh, so four good-looking runs um, to carry the score to 54 for the loss of two. 19 overs completed, 31 to go. And uh, Barbados are scoring at a rate of 2.84. Still requires 7.61. And they need another 236 runs to win this game. Aline, she has a run of ball nine. And come a batch. Come on, Nicole. Big bowler. And it's Nicole again. A little indecision there, but picking up a single nonetheless. Fifty-five. Scoring at a run rate of 2.87, needing 7.62 runs per over were they to taste victory, Barbados. And the mountain seems to be climbing higher and higher. Playing it straight back, there's a fielder running around from mid off and a beautiful catch. A lovely catch there, Carlyle. It was. She Covering had to make. Grounds. Yeah, she had to make a lot of distance across to go right down at long off, and it was not a particularly good delivery either. But hitting the ear firmly, the fielder had to make good ground and took a really good catch. And so Aline has gone. Barbados lose wicket number three. Still 235 runs behind. That is 55 for the loss of. Of three after nineteen point three overs. Ali nine from nine. And uh, pushing Barbados further on the fence, the Jamaicans. And Aline, Aline, the more experienced of the two batters. Although they're thinking, well, they're getting closer to victory. And I'm not certain how many pundits at this stage may bet against that. And it's Campbell picking up her first wicket. Not contributing to the batting, getting a one ball duck. 
but making amends with her bowling. It's the successful Nicole Campbell with her left arm spinners. Yes, Nicole. Yes, Nicole. Yes, Nicole. Yes, Nicole. Just keep it simple. Just keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep the instructions it. from the keeper to the keep bowler. It simple, keep it simple. Come on. And that's all she has to do. It's the attrition holder. Then your batter who's facing you know, coming forward looking good is shoulder. Keep it simple, keep it simple. Come on. Big ball on it. Big ball. And Big the, the game trotting along. Baller, not at the quickest of paces, Carlisle. And perhaps the Jamaicans are saying that hey, we don't have the pressure, so and that one, is it gonna be signal on the ball? Yes it is. High above the waist. And it is the first no ball of the eve the inning. We have had three wides so far. Me feel nice, Nicky. Me feel nice. Feel nice, Nick. Me feel nice. Wide. Not wide enough to be called a wide. Mm, the batter probably brought it into play, Troy. And we've seen what probably would have been a wide getting a wicket earlier and too often we've seen that a ball which probably would have been called a wide batters going at it connecting and getting just the one and this is a nice shot playing it square on the onset the offside picking up a single brings up the end of the over 57 for three Barbados after 20 overs. And the run rate continues to rise. Required run rate. It's now at 7.77. As Barbados still require another 280, 233 runs in 180 balls. And so the gap between those two is growing. And, and certainly would be of concern to the Barbados team. Cumberbatch is on 22 from 46. Holder is on one from five. And the successful Taylor. Well, the unsuccessful, that is. She has had the over. This is her second over, playing it square. Lovely timing. They'll get one. Would they be able to really cut this asking weight and bring the game into an area where they could really say, we have a very good chance, an easier chance of getting this victory. Come batch 22 from 46 faces Taylor. And Barbados team will have to work to really have a better chance of winning this game. Driving is Cumberbatch. Not being able to beat is that McLean at the mid-off position. And there is a chance and it is taken at first slip Carlisle. 
going slashing outside the off stump, the slip feeler moving smartly and easily to her left, plucking that one out of the air. Beautiful bowling. She gave it a little bit more flight, but tossed it wider. You know, full and wider, she went for the drive, and it peeled off the outer portion of the bat and threw to the fielder at slip, who took a good catch to her left. And so wicket number four goes down for Barbados. It's 50, 58 for the loss of four, and we're in over number 21. They're still behind by 232 runs, and that mountain is getting higher and higher to climb. Indeed. And they'll really have a lot of work to do the remaining batters. They will have a lot of work to do. 58 for 4. And when we look at it, remember, Jamaica were 40 for 3. They went on to be 123 for 4. So there's no symmetry about this, the bat in here. Kishona Knight has come to the, the crease. And in the corresponding fixture last year, she made 144. Barbados would love to get those runs uh, today. she's not going to take any chances. Yes, they need ones. I'm trying to slap that one square on the offside. The left-hander not getting good control of it. And the over ends at 58 for four. Two Practically new batters at the crease. Uh, Taylor has picked up one for nine from her two overs. Barbados still 232 runs adrift. Uh, Kaishona Knight is on not. Holder is on two. And they're just scoring at 2.76 runs per over. Requiring 232 more runs to win. And uh, the asking rate is, has now pushed to eight. That's holder trying to whip that one in the offside, not making good contact and not being able to pick up a single. In that one, textbook style in the V, but not being able to beat the mid on. Getting back and playing that one eerily, dropping a bit short of the cover fielder. And they will really have to do something to get the score ticking over. Pulling that one around. It's going down to the fine leg region. They're going to run one, and she has to hustle two for two. <laughs> and there's an appeal and the umpire gives her out, run out. Very good glove work by the keeper. The throw came in on the bounce, it came fast, and the keeper got it in her hands. As we look at the reply, we play once more. Picked it up, had the throw on the way in a hurry. Oh, she seems to have been a good distance out. Wouldn't have had to refer that to the third umpire. Another wicket goes down for Barbados. And uh, still 232 runs behind. And uh, run rate required is 8.14 and growing all the time. It's 59 for 5 Barbados. What a difference a year makes. <laughs> Definitely.
21.4 overs. Jamaicans would have been 206 for five. So a lot of trouble Barbados sinking into. And Scatterbury will now join Knight. And these two will really have to come up with an extra special partnership to basically bring Barbados back into this game. We know cricket is a game of glorious uncertainties. We won't ever know what the next ball holds. But per it, perhaps I'm thinking Carlisle will take something extra special for Barbados to make a contest of this game. But stranger things have happened in cricket. Nicole pulling Canter Canterbury forward. Plays it dead. It's the end of the 22nd over. 59 for 5. And uh, who would think that? I mean, you look at the last time these teams met, and they keep saying that uh, Kishona Knight, she got 144. Barbados are struggling. They made 300 plus the last time, right here at Warner Park. And this time it was Jamaica who almost got to 300. Different day. different year and of course different everything else except the two teams still a good one apart surface though very much so always felt to be a bat in paradise and I was in a conversation a few weeks ago some persons, as many as they may say, there isn't any life, any kick in the Warner Park tracks. That wasn't the case for Andy Roberts. Yes, Lovely bit of field in there to her left. At point, preventing a single. Knight. Just the five balls she has faced so far. And that wide by the, the umpire right, please. Well, I, I tell you something. The umpire has signaled wide, but that came from the back. But I think she signaled a little too early. It was going down the leg stump. And I thought that, yes, the batter played it. She changed the signal. She, she changed the signal. Okay. We missed that. And came that from is, the bat. That is good umpiring, though it was an error in the first instance to have the ovular fortitude to correct it. But it should not have taken the batter to say that it came from the bat. Yes, I, I thought it was played. 63 for And that's a catch, is it? Yes, a beautiful piece of work there in the first slip. Carlisle. Again. Tell again. Mm, yeah, temptingly flighted outside the line of the off stump. And there was Knight not really getting across to it, flashing at it. It took the edge. And a good diving catch by the field at first slip, which means that <laughs> six wickets are down now for Barbados. But I, I still have a question for you, though. Uh, why is it that uh, in a team like this with the youngsters that Kishona Knight who made 144 last time around came in so late? That's a very good question. I'm not so only thinking in the Barbados camp. Instead of having the two youngsters, Kalenda and Combo Batch, 
who was it last year would have played on the 19 cricket. First time both of them playing at this level. I am thinking it would have been more prudent to have a Kishon or even a Aline, a more seasoned cricketer, especially Kishon. Huh? With her runs making capability. Sixty three now for six. And the Barbados team really, really, really up against it. Twenty three overs gone. question now would be how long can they last as opposed to could they get these runs 227 runs needed in 162 balls and all of 27 overs to face and it's the left-hander Nicole 3.1 overs, 14 dot balls, 6 runs, 1 wicket. Very good bowling by the young lady who got a 1 ball in her inning. Slapping that 1 to the mid-on region. Picking up a single. As I say, welcome back to Shakira. Thanks, Troy. Barbados, 64 for six. And it will take a miracle if they're going to get the remaining 226 runs. Kayla Elliott to the crease now after that dismissal of Kaishona Knight. Brilliant catch and slip by Vanessa Watts. Good bowling wants more from Stefani Taylor. She put down one earlier. She picked up one from the right hander similarly. And now for the left hander. And that one should be signaled and the ball is high. Play down into the fine leg region. They're getting one, they're coming back for two. It wouldn't get to the boundary. There comes the no ball signal now from the umpire. A free hit being signaled. We've seen a number of no balls from the spinners today, both sides. We saw a few from Keila Elliott when she was bowling, from Nijani Kamabach, and now from Nicole Campbell. There is a free hit and an opportunity for Elliott to get some fluency into this innings that just started. Chipping down and goes overhead. She's going to get at least one, and that's all she'll actually have. Chipping down the track, not getting it, timing it properly, the ball perhaps also hitting a little high up. Getting a single, and the Barbados will need much more than singles to take them home. That one just seemed to have taken the outside of the pad, or at least that's what the umpire believes. Indeed. So another dot delivery. And there have been way too many dots so far in this Barbados innings. As is another one here. It brings up the end of the 24th over. 68 for 6. Barbados. And in a lot of trouble. Yeah, six bowlers used by Stefani Taylor. Nisha, Nisha and Waysom and Chanel Henry opened the bowling. Henry was excellent, four overs, one for four. Kate Wilmot was also the other pacer who was utilized. She was able to get a wicket as well. Since then, we've seen the spin of Nessa Watts, Nicole Campbell, and Stefani Taylor. Stefani Taylor has two for 13 from three overs. So sharing the word low, Stefani Taylor. And so far, her bowlers have come to the party, and they have back to what the batters were able to do. The question is, would 
they be able to take that into the balance of the tournament and were they able to do that we may see them coming out victorious at the end but it's very early days yet this is just the first round of matches yeah much early to decide a winner or to write off any team but they will take some confidence from this game and they will move on to the next game should they win this one expecting to dominate the tournament remember Jamaica women would have won this competition a number of times 99 for 5 Winwood Islands needing 186 to win against Trinidad and Tobago that match is happening at Connery and Leewards seem to have lost that match Gaia making 142 in 36.3 and Leewards 86 all out in 36.5 That one coming off the edge to the right of the first slip, going down into the third man. They'll get two. Not thinking of a third. And Elliot, she goes up to five from eight. End of the over, 70 for six. After 25 overs, not a good position, position indeed, but anything can happen in the 25 overs. Strong partnerships coming on the back end. How likely is that? That's a different kettle of fish. Yeah, you would think it's very unlikely seeing that the senior batters in this Barbados side have already been dismissed. But I keep talking about opportunities. Alyssa Scantleberry, Scantleberry has been around this Barbados setup for a while. So too has Keila Elliott. Albeit she's always played more as a wrist spinner. But it's an opportunity for them. Even if they're not able to get their side over the line. Spend some time at the crease. And build some confidence as they build for the remainder of the tournament. And as we mentioned earlier, too often in cricket, we've seen the tailenders, as they're called, being asked to step up and save a match, win a match. There'll be an argument that some, <laughs> there was always the argument here in sync, it's if West Indies needed a bye to win with Courtney Walsh facing. <laughs> 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 that would never happen, in my view. The most attractive looking lever alone <laughs> of the ball I've ever seen. Perhaps in everyone's <laughs> view. <laughs> uh, style and grace. And uh, I think he, at one point, I know he had a record of the most not outs. But in at number 11, <laughs> well, <laughs> you, you wouldn't expect too much difference from that. But it's now Nicole continuing from the Lozak Road end. In fact, it's Vanessa Watts who is reintroducing oh, to the yes. attack. Stephanie Taylor into slip no for the second delivery of this over. And using her bowlers some may feel well they need to cut they should continue an extra over or two. But at the same time with the condition of the game, you'll want to give your your bowlers some bowling time as well. Yeah, of course. Shot. And there's a chance. But it's over the head of Natasha McLean at Sharp May Wicket. Fortunately for Alyssa Scantleberry, that one pushed through by Vanessa Watts and rushing Scantleberry a bit. Not so much short of that. And not getting good to proper timing on it. But a single nonetheless, and they won't argue with that. Yeah, back to the point you were making, making. You can understand why Stephanie Taylor is giving all of her bowlers a chance to bowl. They're well in control of this game. So she wants to make sure each of them has a good run out and they're prepared for the other games coming up. 
Which is very good captaincy. Very good, excellent. One may have argued she could have tightened the screws with the wicket taking bowlers, but spread the joy and the love around, so <laughs> to speak, encourage them, motivate them. And at the end of the day, it's a team effort. Yeah. Fans will be happy to see even Stefani Taylor's back to bowling. That one a lot slower tossed up. <laughs> Searching for a wicket. <laughs> <laughs> Vanessa Watts <laughs> asking to be hit. <laughs> but it's the end of the over. Another dot delivery. Barbados 71 for six after 26 overs in pursuit of 290 for victory. A very long way off, but anything can happen. I'm not just sure it happened. It'll happen today at Warner Park in this game. But stranger things have happened during cricket matches. Taylor, four overs, 15 runs, two wickets. And she's back from the media center end. Canterbury faces. And that one goes through again. We've seen quite a few balls beating the edge. Playing down the wrong line, playing for the wrong turn. Yeah. Anyone knows Stefani Taylor? You don't play her for turn. It's to brag about how many iron balls she bowls. I'm still not convinced it's intentional, though. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the important thing is if they work. <laughs> yeah, well, this has been a good spell from her. Good our own game so far. Got to 97 before she was dismissed. Just three shy of that century. And now she has two wickets for just 15 runs into her fifth over. She's led admirably as well. Yes, she has played a captain knock, leading from the front with the bat, leading from the front with the ball. And especially after her team was some 40 for three. And that's another maiden over. 71 for six. Perhaps these batters have decided to just steady and occupy the crease and stick around as long as they could. Yeah, you have to wonder what the plan is for the Barbados team now. Do they still go after this target or do they take time to prepare for the other games? I know some will argue if you're chasing, you have to get bowled out. You have mm -hmm. to keep chasing the runs. You know how, much, how many runs you have to score. And there could be another argument. You might need another... 20, 30 runs to win at this stage, 10, 15 even. And these are the batters you'll expect to get in that aggressive state of mind. And run rate is also going to be important in this tournament. <laughs> and chipping down, playing it square. Will she get home? She has to hurry. There's a valiant attempt and she doesn't make it. Perhaps a little suicidal. Yes, it was to the right of the fielder. And umpire, the umpired square leg had no hesitation at all. A nice diving effort. But too short. And Barbados, they are sinking deeper into trouble. Yeah, that pretty much sums up the day Barbados has had so far. It should have been an easy single. Hit to the right of Natasha McLean, moving from short and wicket. And one would think it should have been an easy single. But the intent just never seemed to be there for the Barbados batters after they lost their captain, Kaisia Knight. It's another run out, the second run out. Scanderbury dismissed for two from 15 deliveries. Barbados 71 for seven. Not a very good position. And uh, going for the jugular at this stage. Seventy one for six. 
for seven. Pardon me. Slashing outside the off stump. Alison Gordon in New Bahar to decrease. She was good with ball in hand. Well, 10 overs, to two for 33 runs. And now she's being asked to do a job with the ball. And she has quite a job to do. If Barbados were to come back into contention of winning this game and again, cricket, the game of glorious uncertainties, I'm not too certain we'll see any such uncertainty here today. It'll take a few miracles in my humble view, Shakira. It will. And I think it will take lots of mistakes from the Jamaica side as well. And they have so many ones to play with. Even if that were to happen, they may very well still come out victorious. A reminder of where the match is so far. Jamaica women winning the toss against the Barbados women. And amassing a total of 289 all out. Barbados 71 for 7. Needing a further 219 runs. From 132 deliveries, Jamaica well in control of this game. And who would have really thought we would have been at a position like this? 10 for 1 Jamaica, 24 for 2, 40 for 3, 123 for 4, 206 for 5, 242 for 7, 242 for 6. Going on to make 290 all out. And it's Taylor in the attack. Yeah, it speaks to having the important it speaks to the importance of behind that. Jamaica had Chanel Henry behind at six. A very capable batter. Coming out with a ninety plus. Exactly. So there's always the question with the balance in batting. Your all the batters, your all rounders, keepers who could bat. And especially in the shortened form of the game, we see a lot of keepers opening opening the the innings. Yeah, five of the six batters, the top six batters for the Jamaica team have played for West Indies in recent times. Three are still on the West Indies team. So you couldn't ask for a stronger team than that, really. And on the flip side, Barbados would have lost two key players. Yep, so, so much has happened over the last year. Channel Henry returning to the Jamaica side, and it looks like a different side altogether. Barbados losing two key players, as you pointed out. And today, it's a display that hasn't been very encouraging. They will, however, hope that they can pick up in the next game. There's still lots of cricket to play in this tournament. It's an opportunity for the youngsters to put up their hand and make their mark. Is it going to happen in this game? It doesn't look so. Is it going to happen in this tournament? We don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But nonetheless, at least they're getting their first taste. 72 for 7. Gordon on from 5. Scant Elliott, 6 from 9. 6 from 19, in fact. 6 from 19, pardon me. Vanessa walks into her 7th over, just gone for 12 runs so far. And that one is signal a wide beating everybody lock stock and barrel coming down to the boundary they want one they'll get two and that's all they'll have and that is the fourth wide we've seen so far four wides and two no balls 
once they've been employed is still and Elliot just turns that one into the onside not really troubling the scorers Flicking that. Not being able to pass the short mid wicket in McLean. The game basically ambling along. Not much urgency, but then again with the state. And is there going to be a stomping chance? Being pulled down the wicket was Elliot. Bill put down the, the pitch, pardon me, and the keeper mopping up very easily. And Barbados losing yet another wicket. Chipping and playing down the wrong line on that occasion, Keila Elliott. Again, another by her playing for turn. She's beating on the outside half of the bat. And Barbados lose their eighth wicket. A 75. In comes Shamelia Connell. Another bowler who was good with the ball for Barbados. She didn't bowl her full quarter. Something that Barbados team will have to look at as well. She's got one wicket. And your key bowlers, you'll really want to use them, especially when they're doing well. Yeah, something I've seen a number of times with captains from the Caribbean, though. They're so often planning for the complete quota. They're planning for 50 overs. My take on it is you're looking to bowl out teams. You never want to bowl 50 overs, so you have to utilize your best bowlers, especially at the best batters from the opponents. And Chanel Henry and Stephanie Taylor were behind for a very long time before Shamilia Connell was reintroduced and before Elia Aline was reintroduced as well. So it's something they'll have to look at for the games that are coming up. You never want your best bowlers to not complete their full quota if you bowl something so close to the 50 overs. <laughs> you won't have an argument at all from me with that. I really don't like to see top bowlers not completing, but it's in T20 or the 50 over version, not completing the full quota like you said. Yeah, something I'm sure the coaches will discuss with the captain and the other senior players. So perhaps that's where the Barbados team let the game drift away. And then having two inexperienced batters, Cumberbatch and Campbell, I'm not certain that helped the cause any. Yeah, there are a number of things to be addressed before the next encounter for this Barbados team to make a side on the other hand. They've done themselves proudly so far. Chance for a run out. And there is a. in the end watching by Shamilia Connell who was at the non-strikers end so it was always Alison Gordon's call fortunately for Connell she was able to make it home where we would have seen a third run out mm. on this Barbados side and a fourth for the day which is something that you, you wouldn't really want and especially at this stage where it's not that it's a tight game The nation now introduced into the attack. The first time today. And again, still exposing the bowlers. You don't know when she's going to be called or when all of these bowlers are going to be called. So exposing them in this game. I mean, I wouldn't go so far as calling nation a bowler. Mm. <laughs> but she did take <laughs> wickets last year. <laughs> 
four, turning that round, round the corner, getting a single. Have to hurry, but they do get there. I mean, to be fair to her, she's been bragging since she returned from Australia mm -hmm. about the fact that she was able to take wickets down under. Mm -hmm. Maybe as she gets older, she's becoming an all-rounder again. She was a pace bowler initially when she was playing for West Indies. Okay. Last year, she had to take up the slot because Stephanie Taylor herself was injured. So she was asked to bowl a few overs for this Jamaica side. Mm. And she did manage to take wickets. Not with balls she will always be proud of. <laughs> but <laughs> a wicket is a wicket. That's true. <laughs> when you look at the scorebook, you're not gonna see a nice juicy lollipop. <laughs> you're gonna see caught by he bowled by LBW. <laughs> Good point. That one played back with some power, a little wide of the outstretched arm of the of nation. A single to Gordon. To Cardell. She goes to two. It brings Gordon into strike. Who's two from nine? Oh, looking beautiful in that forward defensive. <laughs> yeah, we haven't had too many questions about the defenses of the Barbados Bahers. What we've questioned is their intent to score mm. and their ability to score. And that was an intent to score, pulling it square, not connecting, bringing up the end of the over. 79 for it. Stark contrast between the two sides. Barbados 79 for eight. Stephanie Taylor was able to score in 97. <laughs> Janelle Henry got to 93. So really big difference. 285 for eight. Jamaica would have been. It's still early days in this competition. Yes, if Jamaica were to go on and win all the other matches, they'll be champions. And she's bowled all over the place. My, my, we'll have to check to find out if there was actually a hole in that bat. <laughs> well, she looked so very convincing coming forward. <laughs> yeah, she defended. Well, she attempted to defend <laughs> and looked quite confident. That took the outside half off that all stump. Again, another batter playing down the wrong line. Playing for Spain from Vanessa Watts. And we know she doesn't turn many balls. She's not trying to turn it. And with that action, it's even harder for her to turn the ball. She does have a round arm action. So she drifts the ball away from mm. right-handers. But the batters continue to play down the wrong line. And she gets her second wicket. Connell goes for just two runs. Barbados 79 for nine. And basically the fat lady, she's coming to the park. She will start singing just now. As we once more welcome Carlisle, who will be taking us to the end, which may not necessarily be very far. Uh, we're setting up for the end of game interview as well. And uh, the end seems nice. 79 for 9. And last batter is driving this down on the own side. And there is no chance of a run. So the last time these two teams met, it was a, a massive victory for Barbados. Jamaica went away and did their homework and have turned the tables. And here's a delivery from Watts, which is taking the batter on the pad. Goes away on the onside. 79 for 9, weighing over number 32. And Watts is bowling to Bruce, who is the last batter. And for this delivery, she's around the wicket. Gives it some flight, and she's defending stoutly. Sends it back down the track on the offside. So she's two for 17 from 7.4 overs is Vanessa Watts. Run rate is at 11.51. Not sure how relevant that is. <laughs> Delivery which is pushing the batter back. And this camper through for a single. She gets a single Bruce. And uh, at 
at uh, this point, 80 for 9. I'm not a betting man, but I take a dollar <laughs> on Jamaica to win. <laughs> at this stage, I'm not certain who you'll get to, <laughs> <laughs> to bet against you, Caroline. Daffa bet is being displayed on the boundary board, as well as Sidney United. She, she coming forward, driving into the offside, and uh, they get a single. And uh, so at the end of the over then, the score is 81 for 9 Barbados in search of 290 to win. 32 overs have been completed. And uh, the Jamaicans are having a whole set of fun out on the field, and well they might because they're in control of this game. Barbados need another 209 runs to win at a rate of 11.61. Large and in charge, the Jamaicans. And perhaps already thinking of early evening, a trip to the beach maybe, a soak in the pool. Hot baths in Nevis would be appealing on the off day. Short delivery, which is punching to the offside, and they won't score. Nation is the bowler, and is bowling from the media center end. And uh, this one is played into the offside again. Square of the wicket, no runs. 81 for 9 Barbados. It's a mere 209 runs away from victory. Would take Woods. a miracle to get there. Levers would have already been bowled out. Delivery outside the off stump. She's uh, playing and missing. And Leewards promising much and delivering little. Now we we notice that there's a fielder leaving the field. Seems to be the same fielder who went diving at the uh, at the a delivery in the last over and uh, so Stand. she has now left the field being replaced on the field looks like number number 25 taking a spot and uh, number 25 is Diaz Nine wickets down for Barbados, and we're in the 33rd over. As here is Nation, and she's swinging across the line, missing. It goes for the keeper, who has the bails off in a hurry, but she's safely grounded, is Alison Gordon. Here is Nation once more wide, and she's hanging the bat and then allowing it to go through for the keeper. Not anything much to get on with the game, Carlyle. <laughs> Not that it is necessary. But at this stage, the batters should really... And they're getting some overthrows here. They're going to get at least one. What's the chance of a run-out, um, Troy? Which would but have been the fourth. Yeah, but his throw wasn't good. But at this stage, batters 10 and 11. Really, there shouldn't mm -hmm. be any... <laughs> run out says it, especially when you have a mountain to get. Sorry looking scorecard. Cumberbatch top scoring is 22. And uh, so Barbados never really put in a challenge to this 290 runs made here by Jamaica. Jamaica won the toss and decided yes, we'll have a bat. And at one stage when they were struggling on, on what was it? Uh, 40, 40 for, for the loss of three wickets. Didn't look such a great decision. And then there was a partnership of 83 for the fourth wicket, which was followed again by another very good partnership as Jamaica put on a big score. Vanessa Watts will be bowling to Bruce. And uh, this delivery, she's back. There's a loud appeal. Might have been pitch outside leg. Easily. And Bruce, she's going to continue. One from five. Watts to bowl to Bruce, and she's driving, goes down to mid-off, 
and there the fielder comes off the boundary and they'll get a single and she'll get her second run and the jamaicans they're still running a course for the left and right combination picking up positions matches are played every other day and uh, here is watts delivery which is driven down to mid on and they'll get a single and that single will take the score to 85 for the loss of nine next round of matches we'll see the windwards against guyana and uh, that game will that round will also feature the leewards against jamaica and the trinidad and tobago against barbados here is watts and uh, bringing the batter forward drives it down on the offside and they can't score because long off has been brought into mid off on this occasion so 85 for nine barbados stumbling in the defense of their title Delivery which is short down the leg side, called and signal wide, and so the score moves up to 86 for 9. Quite a different showing in terms of the extras here, wides and no balls. Five wides so far, notwithstanding five deliveries that were called wide, that is. One would have gone to the, the boundary for four, if I'm not mistaken, um, or two, they got off of it. Watts giving this one some flight, and it's defended stoutly by Bruce. Jamaica needing one wicket to complete the victory. As Bruce it is who is facing up to Watts. And uh, for this delivery, it's faster, flatter, and uh, defended away on the offside. And I'm sure that Bruce must be telling herself at the end of that over. It's 34 overs completed, 86 for 9. Bruce is probably saying to herself, listen, I'll take some batting practice, at least on this occasion. The coach will not tell me come out. <laughs> it isn't often number 10 and 11 will have a chance to bat 17 overs. Mm -hmm. So why not bat? Because you do not know when they may be called upon in one of these games to score 10 runs or 15 in two overs, three overs. Nation is bowling from the media center end and it goes away from us to bowl a delivery which is short, punch into the offside. They set off for a single, yes, no, and uh, three run outs already in the inning so far. They won't want to make this four. And they would have had some anxiety when there was a chance for a run out that would have gone for the, the flight of delivery, played away into the offside, square of the wicket. And uh, there is no run. I was looking at, at the IPL teams, Carlisle, and only about five or six West Indians are involved this year. Uh, women? The males. Males. Here is a delivery from Nation, which is driven into the offside. Extra cover makes good round to her left. And knocks it down. They'll get a single. Gordon moves on to seven. And it's 87 for nine. We're in over number 35 of 50. It's the CG United uh, Super 50. And uh, honorable mention as well. And goes out to Defabet and Blue Waters. And the change in the field again for the left and right combination. Bruce is receiving a delivery from Nation, which is bringing a forward, place it back down the track on the on side, and they won't score. So Gordon is on seven. Bruce is on two. The partnership is eight. It's for the last wicket. Here's the delivery, which is chopped away into the offside. Backward point comes running in, and they won't score. So at the end of the over then, it's 87 for 9, 35 overs completed, another 15 overs to go, and uh, Cumberbatch 22, Calendar 14, Aline 9, not a lot troubling the scores this afternoon in terms of runs on the board for this Barbados team. They're behind by 203 and still need all the 203 required 
and they only have 90 balls to do it. The question really is, Carlyle, how long could they hold out for? Uh, Watts is in the last over. She has picked up two for 22 from nine. And uh, for this delivery, it's down the leg side, tickled around the corner. They'll have a single. And so that will make the score 88. And it's called and signaled wide. So an extra run, that will be 89. So Jamaica in this match picked up maximum batting points. It doesn't appear as if Barbados will get a batting point. Most certainly not. At 89, the question is, could they even reach 100? Well, that's a target. It's played into the onside. Midwicket moves smartly to her right, and there is no run. The batting points are earned when you get to 200, and when you get to 220. And if you score 4.4 runs per over when you're chasing, you can get the second batting point. Four runs per over for the first batting point. Here's a delivery which is sweeping out. Loud shout goes up. And the umpire says, no, that's not going to be out for LBW. And in terms of the bowling points, Carlisle? Probably pitched outside leg. You're asking about bowling points, but I haven't seen anything that speaks to bowling points. Here is Watts once more. And for this delivery, Bruce is playing it back down to the bowler. And they won't score. So this is now four balls in the over. And two left in the spell. Two for 24 to Vanessa Watts. He's bowling from the Lossack Road end. These teams played here in St. Kitts last year. And here's Vanessa bowling a delivery which is played down to extra cover on the bounce. And no runs. Jamaica Carlisle would probably argue about those bowling points because picked up nine wickets within 35 overs. Delivery which is more hopeful than anything else and it's defended. So no runs. 89 for nine. Partnership of 10 between these two. Nine overs and five balls delivered by what so far? And she has picked up two for 24. One ball left in the spell. And she comes up, bowls a delivery, which is bringing the batter forward, plays it away on the onside. End of a good afternoon's work by Vanessa Watts. And uh, she has picked up uh, two wickets in her spell, two for 24 from her 10 overs. And uh, that's a good afternoon's work. It's 89 for 9, 36 overs completed. And it's the players are basically just going through the motion, Carlisle, they know a victory for Jamaica is imminent. Whether it'll happen this over or the next or the next, that's just the question. So they're not really in a rush to get there. Somebody else might say, hey, the quicker we get the job done, the better it is, the longer mm -hmm. rest period we have to prepare for our, our next game or whatever. Well, they have a day off tomorrow as the nation is, is bringing Gordon forward and uh, she plays it down to mid-off and they can't score. Nation is in her fourth over, none for five before this. Very good bowling on, on, the, on, on any day in limited overs. Garden is flashing at this one outside the off stump, misses, and it goes through for the keeper to take. Here is Nation once more to bowl a delivery, which is taking the batter on the pads. Couple uh, persons on the field send up a speculative appeal. And the umpire doesn't have to respond to a delivery that was going down the leg side. <laughs> Nation once more. And for this delivery, she's coming forward and driving his garden, finds extra cover. And the score remains an 89 for 9. So perhaps. Barbados targeting at least 100. Here is a delivery given good flight wide of the stumps door, and she is missing it is Gordon. And uh, the signal goes up to say that there is one delivery left in the over. 
As here is Nation again bringing the batter forward into line, looking good, stroking it out to extra cover. And it brings up the end of the over. 37 completed, 89 for 9 Barbados. Um, searching for 290 runs to win. Easy going by both teams. And the batters, apart from the anxious moments, the possible runouts, they're still there, they're hanging in. And the form and the shape of so, um, God, Bruce, yeah, Gordon in particular, forward defensive, she's looking really nice. Change of bowling from the far end. Stefani Taylor, two for 16 from six. Comes back to bowl a seventh over. And Bruce is defending. And she won't score. And Shakira and I had a discussion about the number of bowlers used. And perhaps the thinking. Delivery, which is... Bringing the batsman forward, driving at this one, misses, misses everything. And it uh, goes through for the keeper. In my view, it's a cardinal sin not to have your best bowlers complete in full quarter. Especially when you're going so close to the 50 overs. Taylor and uh, the batter is back punching in the onside wants a single chance of a run out should be a run out yes there is a run out and oh what a calamity the batter played the delivery straight down to the field at mid on took off for a non-existent run and uh, the non-striker didn't move at all there never was a run in that and uh, she took off nonetheless did Bruce and so she goes run out. It's 89 all out Barbados. And uh, they, I'm sure, are going to sit down this evening. They're going to have a little chat about this. And they're going to try their best to decipher what went wrong. Because it's early days. It's the first game of the tournament. And certainly they will want to work on their mistakes. How do you get four run outs in an inning? In any form of cricket. And that is a cardinal especially sin. Especially one at the back end, two, when you have a mountain to climb. Mm -hmm. If you were to bat all the bat out the overs, bat close to the overs, hey, fine. But it's not that you have quite a bit of runs in a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a discussion. And besides coming between these peers, there were two, two anxious moments before Caroline. So it had to be on the cards coming. So we can tell you that the game has been completed here at Warner Park. Uh, winning the toss and batting first this morning, Jamaica. And they reached up to a score of 289 uh, before being bowled out. And we saw 94 going to Henry. And uh, what is it? 94 or 97 to Stephanie Taylor? 97. 97. From 97. Score has been corrected and corrected. And it's 97 to Stefani Taylor. And uh, then when Barbados responded, they rather limped to 89 for the loss of all of their 10 wickets. And so the last time around, there was a massive victory for Barbados. This time around, there is an even massive victory for Jamaica as Barbados have been bowled out for 89 runs. And Jamaica winning by 200 runs in this inning. Um, Troy? A lot for the Barbados team to think about. At one stage, they were in very much in control of the match, I believe. Having Jamaica on the ropes, 10 for, for 1, 22 for 2, 40 for 3. But then there were two big innings and that took the game completely away from Barbados. And notwithstanding them missing two of their key players, Shakira Selman and Haley Matthews, Perhaps a technical error, a strategic error, I may suggest, when they had two youngsters, Campbell and Cumberbatch. And perhaps that is where they bat in. They would have lost the chase because they had quite a few dot balls between them and they weren't really looking to get on much with the game. And at the back end, having four runouts. 
But the Barbados team seemed a little bit rattled in the field. Uh, they didn't get some decisions which, which they thought that they should have had. And it took them quite some time to, to settle. Recover. And while they were recovering from that, the Jamaica team were building good partnerships. And uh, as you said, took the game away from Barbados while they were batting. And it shows the quality of the Jamaican teams. Some six or so West Indian players, three of whom are still in the West Indies setup. So a lot of experience there. So on the flip side, we had Barbados losing key players. And on the other side, the Jamaicans still having the core of their team with that experience. But it still gives the opportunity, if you look at the glass half full for Barbados, it gives them the opportunity. Their youth, they're developing. Two, three years from now, it may be very well be a different kettle of fish when the combo batches and the calendars would have had two, three years, seasons off at this level under their belt. Stephanie Taylor, uh, she had an excellent inning. Paced herself nicely. Um, she and uh, Henry, Henry seemed to have been suffering from maybe cramps because she appeared to recover from that nicely and came yes. on to bowl in bowl fact and bowl, bowl well. Bowl very well indeed. And looking strong, a beautiful player. Very confident, very aggressive. And she poured her heart out there. And she came in with a 93, I, I, I think it was. Very good batting, even though she appeared to be limping through the latter part of it. But she came back and she bowled well. And uh, no doubt the Jamaicans, their tails would be on their backs, not just because they defeated Barbados, but one, because they recovered from 40 for 3. Two, they had two of their top batters getting into the 90s. Three, bowling out Bar Barbados for 89. And I think when they sit down, of course, they'll have some areas of improvement. And they dropped a few catches, perhaps not using two slips instead of the one, which is something that we believe Barbados should have looked at as well. But there are tremendous opportunities to look at for the improvement in the next games for both teams, I believe. Elliot was expensive. Yes, yes. And last year she had a moment like that, but then she really came into her own on the season. And she never did seem settled from the start. Bowling a lot of no balls, above waist height, wides. And uh, even though she had a fortress wide, uh, was it Taylor, uh, w what should have been a wide ball, playing it, popping up to the keeper, who juggled, but it was able to take it in the end. But no doubt she is going to come on. And when she comes on, she's going to be a, a force to be reckoned with. So the news here from Warner Park is that Jamaica, they have defeated the Barbados team, who are the defending champions, by 200 runs. Barbados team is better than this. So I'm sure that we're going to see some improvements during the course of the season. We'll be back with you, and uh, that will be on the 6th of, of March. And so tomorrow is a rest day. Play will, re will begin on the 6th of March, and there will be three matches in that round. Windwards versus Guyana, Leewards versus Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago versus Barbados. Until then... Carlyle Powell saying thanks. Have a good day and have a safe visit to Nevis, Carlyle, and see you back home here in St. Kitts on Wednesday. <laughs>